It's showtime. Podcasts are the best, except for when they're not. Come to think there's really just a handful that don't suck. And that's where we come in. Podcast reviews by Carl Goldberg, Commander, and Kevin. W-A-T-P 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 Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-P Who likes these podcasts? Not W-A-T-P Who makes these podcasts? That one's beyond me Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-P. W-A-T-P, everybody. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Who Are These Podcasts? The only podcast that contains more Michael Rappaport drops than it does original content. You're not charismatic. I'd like to uh, welcome our guest host today. Kevin is back. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Out there in Podcastville. You can visit us at whoarethese.com, our Facebook page, or on Twitter at whoarethesepod. Email the show, show at gmail.com. We're always looking for podcast suggestions. Also, we encourage our listeners to give us a five-star review on iTunes, but then in the comment section, you can shit all over us. I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Today, we'll be reviewing a podcast called The Stuttering John Podcast. This was a suggestion from multiple listeners who asked us to review this show. Kevin and I have both listened to it separately. We have not discussed it beforehand. So without further ado, let's get into it. Stuttering John show. What'd you think, Kevin? Uh, well, you know, Stuttering John is a guy I haven't really thought about in a lot of years. Right. Uh, being a long Stern show listener, he left a long time ago and I uh, never really quite paid attention to what he was doing. But this show, in a nutshell, is just him. It's just bad bad feelings from him like for whatever an hour and a half all right i'm gonna, just him i'm gonna set this up i want to if there's people out there who don't know why stuttering john is a thing i'm just gonna go <laughs> real quick through what that is starting off with classic stuttering john when he was on the howard stern show he was the guy who they would send off to the red carpet events and different things to interview celebrities and ask ridiculous questions one of my favorite moments of all time is this. Here's the setup. I have maybe the greatest piece of tape you'll ever hear. Oh, are we talking about the Ringo Starr press conference? Did you hear any of it? No. I've only heard what they had on the news. It was a huge press conference yesterday for Ringo Starr and Joe Walsh and stuff. And Stuttering John, I heard a majority of the press conference. And Stuttering John asked two questions, and it was real funny. Uh -huh. And I went home, and I didn't know, and none of us knew, but we rolled tape on it anyway. John got to a third question. All right, so that sounds like shit, but uh, they're talking about the fact that he was at the Ringo Starr press conference. This has to be in the late 80s, early 90s? Yeah, that would be my guess, yeah. Yeah, so this is when Stuttering John was uh, full-time with Howard Stern. You hear Jackie laughing, and this is, this is going old school. This yeah. is his greatest accomplishment, Stuttering John's greatest accomplishment of all time, talking to Ringo Starr. Yeah, all right, that's kind of a fun question. Um, what did you do with the money? What money? Are, are the money that your mom gave you for singing lessons? Oh, oh. oh this is the worst thing. Oh. <laughs> this was one of the greatest jokes of all time. Uh, so funny. So that's what Stuttering John was known for. He would go out and ask ridiculous questions. He'd go up to celebrities and say, uh, who are you and why are you famous? Which pisses people off to no end when you're a celebrity. Yeah. Eventually, though, people would recognize him. They'd know it was Stuttering John from Howard Stern, and he wasn't able to get into these uh, events. They, they wouldn't accept his press credentials. So he just became a bit character on the show that really didn't have a role on the show 
for Howard Stern, other than he was just kind of a guy in the back office who would rip on Gary or, or, you know, just bring shit up that he heard from Scott the Engineer and come into the studio and mix things up. And then, you know, obviously he was fodder for all the people on the show, but he didn't really have anything going on. We should probably qualify it that he used to stutter. That was like, well, you, you heard know, it in that reason. clip. Yes, he, he was definitely a nervous Nelly. Yeah, yeah. He was not comfortable talking to celebrities and asking them ridiculous questions. He stayed around on Howard Stern's show for a while, and then eventually he got his big break, quote unquote. Jay Leno hired him to be the announcer for The Tonight Show. I have just some quick clips just to bring us back. He did audition tapes using Scott the Engineer and Howard Stern. So, of course, they saved these tapes to, to play them later on the show. And this is uh, the, the Stern cast going back and listening to this guy's audition tapes to be an announcer for The Tonight Show. I mean, that's a, that's a ridiculous job for a stutterer. But yeah, uh, so. <laughs> he definitely did not deserve it. Listen to this. It's The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, featuring Kevin Eubanks and The Tonight Show Band. And me, I'm Stuttering John. Tonight, Jay welcomes Pamela Anderson, oh, Harrison Ford, <laughs> the music of Stained. And, oh, I f***ed it up. I didn't, have, I, didn't, I didn't want to do the same. Is that too over the top? <laughs> so, this is him auditioning for this job with Jay Leno. You heard him pronounce Pamela Anderson's name wrong. Uh, Pamela Anderson. <laughs> they, they keep playing that part over and over again, and Artie's just losing his shit. Tonight, Jay yeah. welcomes Pamela Anderson, <laughs> Harrison Ford. Every time. The music of Stained. And. Guy fing f- it up. Give me a band, Scott. <laughs> yeah, I, I already did Simon Garfunkel. You can't think of a Simon band. Simon Garfunkel. You can't think of a band. Um, so my, my favorite clip from when they were goofing on his auditions is when he tries to say Nicolas Cage. Do you remember this, Kevin? I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Well, one more clip and then we'll get into his podcast. And me, I'm Stuttering John. Tonight, Jay welcomes Nicholas Cage, <laughs> Kate Hudson, and comedian Greg Giraldo. And now, Jay Leno! Yeah, John, listen, I got your tape. Now, how did Greg uh, Giraldo get on my show? Listen, you said... You, said you can't the, say the nigger word. You said the N-word in your tape. <laughs> you said no, sorry, listen, sorry. John, I got the joke tape. That was very funny. Yeah, no, that can you do a real Maybe enough. that's what he meant by over the top. John, John, do you think you could say Nicholas? <laughs> Nig. Er. Wise. So that's better. Why don't you just go, uh, uh, and my tongue. Sound it out. Nay. <laughs> All right. So that's the, the uh, arty era of Stern when it was good. And those yes. guys uh, having some fun with that. All right. So that, that sets it up. That's who Stuttering John is. Stuttering John went to The Tonight Show. Jay Leno obviously is no longer on the show. The whole staff is gone. And John, being a talentless hack, was left with nothing to do. And now he just started a podcast where it's him talking to his iPhone for 50 minutes. And that's all it is. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a very hard listen because it's it's only there's only what six episodes so far. Yeah. And you could tell he's learning as he goes because I was looking at their like the web page for the show and they're all like named incorrectly. Right. It's not, there's no consistency at all. This one was episode four, but there was another episode that was called episode four. They have no idea what they're doing. They keep changing the name of the podcast. I think it's called the Stuttering John podcast, but I don't even know. Do you, have a, uh, do you have a clip that you want to play that maybe sums up the show for people so we can well, finally get into it? Well, you can start out, <laughs> yeah. Just start out with clip one because okay. this is like right off the bat. Like if you're going to broadcast or whatever, I'd use that in air quotes, but yeah. if you're going to talk in a microphone and make a show out of it, clear your fucking throat before you do so. Welcome to the Stuttering John podcast. <laughs> How are you, my friends? <laughs> That's the first thing he says. You could easily yeah. go back and fix that. Like, all right, it's, let me start that again. It sounds like the goldfish from Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> goldfish are, oh. <laughs> all right, Pee Wee. <laughs> all uh, right, I actually had the same clip, but I go a little bit further because I wanted to point something out. Welcome to the Stuttering John podcast. How are you, my friends? That's right, I'm trying to get on a... On a daily schedule, every Tuesday, I will I will record my podcast. 
and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Every Tuesday, he's going to record his podcast. That's not a daily schedule. That's yeah. a weekly schedule. That's, yeah, that's called weekly. Yeah. That's called weekly. Every Tuesday. <laughs> Holy shit. He's, he Every talks Tuesday, about... I'll talk about Pamela Anderson and Nicolas, <laughs> and Nicolas Cage. Cage. He, uh, he talks about... That's the other thing about this show, Kevin, is that the reason why Stuttering John was even employed by Howard is because he had a stutter. Right. He doesn't stutter. So what's the fucking point? He's just a boring person talking yeah, to his iPhone. Exactly. Um, he, ta- he starts off the show plugging the book that he's writing. Or maybe he's already written it, or I don't know. But he talks about this chapter in his book. It's about, of course, Howard Stern, because what do you want to read about from Stuttering John, not the boring people in his life, the celebrities that he knows. And I just don't think this is a good way to promote a book that you want people to buy. I was uh, doing my chapter on uh, Howie's single life. (laughs) You know, talking about when, um, about how he first found out about Howard's divorce and and then the girls he had after. There's stuff in there I'm probably going to have to take out because I'm going to get sued, but it's true. So, all right, I have this whole chapter about that that period of time when Howard was single where he was having all these girls like, oh, okay, I, I want to know who those girls were and what was going on. I'll probably have to take it all out. Uh, well, uh, okay, and then why would I buy your book? Well, exactly. What kind of selling why? point is that? <laughs> So many fucking people are writing books now. Like, he oh. talks a lot about that. Like, yes. all these, everyone's got a goddamn book coming out. Fucking Casey, fucking Armstrong, <laughs> Casey has, Armstrong a book has a book coming out. Yeah, oh. I know. I, I have some shit about that. He talks about, he's pissed at everyone. He's pissed at Artie Lang. Very pissed at Artie Lang. Yeah. He's pissed at Anthony Cumia. He's been on Anthony's show a few times. He was, he was out, I think, with Artie and Anthony. But this I thought was interesting. He's talking about how Anthony Cumia is writing a book, and he's goofing on the fact that Anthony would write a book. Anthony's right. coming out with a book, I see. Yeah, what is it called? You know, he, you know, instead of Moby Dick, just call it Dick. You know? <laughs> I mean, because it, and I don't even know. I don't know. Uh, is he that popular? I mean, I'm not saying I am, but at least I was on a national show for fucking 15 years. I mean... Isn't he just a local? I mean, wasn't he a local DJ? I, I think he might have been on two or three markets, maybe New York and Boston, maybe Philly. I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is Stuttering John saying Anthony Cumia isn't famous enough to write a book. It's Anthony from the Opie and Anthony show. It wasn't Howard and Stuttering John. He was a fucking bit character on Howard Stern show. And he goes, oh, wasn't he a local DJ who was in those three markets? He was on... XM Radio, you fucking idiot. Serious XM. <laughs> do you know what satellite radio... Do you know who gets satellite radio? Everyone. Everyone who subscribes to it. <laughs> the fuck is this guy talking about? Yeah, I don't... Oh, it, it, he, he does a lot of that um, where he kind of tries to uh, put himself kind of above... Like, he's putting down everybody, and then he's like, yeah, but I love you, I love you. And right. it, it, it's really weird to me because... At some point, and I don't know if this is just because whatever, he's from fucking Staten Island or Long Island or whatever, but he sounds like Dice. <laughs> Staten I, Island or Long Island or one of yeah. those islands. One of those fucking Jekyll islands. Jekyll Island, one of those island. islands, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but he sounds like uh, Dice. Right. You know how like he's got like, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out if he's try, if he's doing it on purpose or if that's just how he fucking talks now. Yeah. Um, but God, I got so many. I have a lot of clips. For me, I have a lot of fucking clips. You do. Um, yeah, he's got. So to play number two. This is just him, kind of. I don't know. Uh, talking more about like how people are putting him down. Okay. When you say I'd be nothing without Howard, now that may be true. I mean, he gave me my start. Okay. So so he's got he's got this thing. He needs to prove himself. His entire podcast is devoted to proving his own worth because he was hired as this dummy who stutters. That's why he's famous. And unfortunately, Jay Leno hired him for a job he wasn't qualified for, and now he's delusional. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Dude, he is so delusional. And I, I'm sure you and I have very similar clips that go through him proving to the world 
that he deserves to be famous and he's very talented. Yeah, God, God. Yeah, so if you play my track three, um, he does a lot of name dropping, which then he calls out other people for name dropping, which is fucking hilarious to <laughs> okay. me. All right. They don't know that I write jokes. I've wrote, <laughs> I've written for Jay Leno for 10 years. I've written for, you know, the, I was the head writer of the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast. Yeah, I have that one too. <laughs> I love how far that drops off. I wrote for Jay Leno. I was a writer for the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast. Like that fucking, <laughs> that went down quick. <laughs> yeah, there, I have one. I have a clip here. It's called Depression Scale. If you start, it's number 10 and, okay. and it goes through. It's really funny, like the highs to the bottom fucking lows okay. of his career. <laughs> Um, because I went through depression. You know, after you come off the Stern show, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. The Tonight Show, you know, the Criminal Jabaros, the Stephanie Miller Show, Bite Size TV, you're on all these shows, and then suddenly, like, you're not working, you get depressed. Yeah, I would bet. (laughs) I would bet you fucking crash back to earth and realize you're a nobody who has no talent. Yeah, it's got to be tough. It's the sharpest drop-off since fucking Bitcoin. It's just like... (laughs) Like right, it just fucking plummets. I want to go back real quick to uh, what he was talking about, how he was a joke writer. He throws out there that he wrote jokes for Jay Leno and Jeff Ross and the head writer for this roast. And Was there any evidence during this show, when we listened to 50 minutes of him talk, was there any evidence that he could write a joke, Kevin? Oh, no. I mean, it's, it's case in point of when he was talking about Anthony and he goes... Uh, yeah, you got to write a joke, uh, write a book, uh, just call it Moby Dick. Don't or, or don't call it Moby yeah. Dick, I'll call it Dick. It's right. Like, uh, so so that was an attempt at a joke. Here I have, this is at the very end of his show, this is his big joke in the show. And it is such a fucking hack joke. I mean, I got a tweet the other day saying, the guy, I mean, this woman was like, you're an asshole, you suck, I've always hated you. And that was from my mother. <laughs> oh, so he realized he didn't set it up right. So he had to go back. He's like, this guy's like, oh, no, no, this, this wo- okay, I got it. All right. This woman says, you suck. I hate you. And I was like, come on, mom. Right? Like that's, Everyone's done that joke. That's not a good joke. And actually, I, I want to go back to him talking about Anthony Cumia's book because he talks about what the ton of the book title is. And then he's ready to riff. He is going to crush it. What is it, fucking uh, permanently suspended? I don't know. Speed. Uh, there's so many I could do. I don't want to get him too upset, though. Epic fail. I love that he goes, oh, yeah, the name is uh, permanently suspended. Uh, so uh, it was like a chip moment. Ah, it, ah. <laughs> okay, what's the joke? What do you got? He goes, I don't want to piss him off. I got so many things I could say, but I'm not going to do it. Just just one, John. Just give us one. One yeah, joke. Give us a joke. Give us a joke that maybe is funny. You did nothing. And it's not like he didn't have time to prepare for this shit. What else is he doing in his life besides recording this podcast? He's reliving his fucking glory days. Because I, I have a few clips here where he kind of he walks back. Now he's bitching about Artie. And, like, like quite a- I'm so glad you said that, Kevin. I am I am so ready for that. That's all I have is Glory Days clips. That's what this entire show is about. He just talks about back when he was famous and people gave a shit about him. All right, what do you got? This isn't even this isn't even famous. This is just all right, play track four. This is kind of sets it up. I guess. Oh yeah, this is great. I mean, you never really know. I mean, I was getting A's in all my films at NYU, probably the most prestigious film university in America. You could, some might argue UC, UCLA, some might argue USC. But Yeah, I, I, have a, I had that clip too, and I wrote down proof that he would have made it without Howard Stern, because he's talking about the fact that people think I'm just famous because Howard Stern brought me on a stuttering job, but I was getting A's in college. Like, oh, what is that? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? What the fuck are you talking about? Um, here's him explaining that he does have talent. I know it's hard for some Stern fans to swallow, to think that maybe I do have talent, but I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> no. You, you, you are sorry. You don't. What, then, after he explains that he does have talent, because he has to prove himself, right? He goes into these fucking stories that are mind-boggling. And I'm, he's not joking. This is real. And the truth is, uh, I, you know, I was I started out uh, like we all did in our elementary school, uh, playing the recorder, which is like the fucking flute. And then you go, and then I moved on to trumpet, where I became an all district trumpet player. In second grade, I was playing with the fifth and sixth graders. Uh, I, I I learned how to read music in second grade. But all we get talking about stories. He's going back to second grade because Artie <laughs> Lake said he wasn't a musician. So he goes back and he goes, oh, re- really, Artie? I'm not a musician? I was playing trumpet with fifth graders when I was in second grade. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's also this gem, too, played yeah. track by. Okay. You know, and then, uh, you know, I was in chorus in all district. And had, I had a solo every year. <laughs> he, had a, he had a solo every year. I mean, come on. I had a plan, was a big baseball player back in high school. All right, it doesn't stop there, Kevin. He then talks about the uh, how he's great at comedy. So, so we all know he's an amazing musician. He played trumpet and read music when he's in second grade. But what about his comedy chops? You know, he's known for being the stand-up comedian now. And he says, well, obviously I have comedy chops. You know, and it's just, you know, for him to say something like that. And, oh, I was never a comedian. Well, well, Artie, I was, you know, I was making comedy films as soon as I got my first Super 8 millimeter camera when I was in freaking fourth grade. And, you know, I was making, I wrote my first sketch in junior high in sixth grade you know and we got an a on it it was called the smothered brother did stuttering john just brag about an a he got in sixth grade he sure did and he was telling Artie leg that Artie leg is wrong about how funny he is like just so you know Artie, you might think you know comedy my teacher in sixth grade gave me an a on a film i made Glory days. <laughs> this guy fucking dumb. <laughs> what the fuck is I wrong? I made a movie called The Smothered Brother. Glory <laughs> days. Oh, yeah. Um. So so then he goes on to talk about his acting, and apparently, when he was in first grade, he was the best actor. You would think that I'm making up this this setup, but listen listen to this shit. And he's being serious. I was never an actor. I was in, I was a star of the show in the little carrot scene. I know it sounds crazy. Why am I defending myself? But in first grade, and it got, it got aired on public television. It got, it, they liked it so much, you know, they put it on, on TV. And I was in first grade, and I knew all the lines. I would give the other actors their lines in case they forgot while we were on stage. This is insane. Kevin, I don't remember anything I did in first grade. <laughs> Nothing I did in first grade was important or meaningful. Nothing I did yeah. in any of my fucking life is important or meaningful, but especially not first grade. <laughs> I was a regular shilly temple. Yeah, I, I know that's the, that's the picture this, this guy's painting. We are on TV. Public access is not TV. Anyone can put anything on public access. I was picturing that conversation where he's explaining to Artie Lang, who has been in dozens of, of huge movies, that he's an actor because in first grade he knew everyone's lines. And I was just imagining, Kevin, what would it be like if Artie was in the room, maybe Artie and Robin Quivers, and they were having this conversation? How would they respond to that? Why am I defending myself? But in first grade, and it got it got aired on public television. It got it, They liked it so much. <laughs> you know, they put it on, on TV. What a fucking idiot Suttery John is. It's unbelievable. That's a great drop. It should be on everything that we say, too. Well, I I could I could literally picture him having that argument against Artie Lang, because I think Artie went through the same thing with uh, Sale, the, Sale the Stockbroker when Sale was trying to pretend that he was a talented comedian. And it's like, are you, what, are you fucking an idiot? You're, no, you're a nobody. 
Yeah, he he does this like well. I mean, we've been talking about it. This fucking name dropping thing. So he yeah. he calls Artie out for name dropping, which is I have his track was seven. You know, and then I don't know Norm McDonald and David Spade. I don't know any other names you could drop there, Artie. And then what Dan Falato, all the Gerdas in his life that keep Judd Apatow and um, Pete Holmes and. I don't know. All his girders. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's immediately followed up by his own take, which is uh, uh, track eight. You know, I don't know about... I was never a musician. Well, Joe Walsh didn't think that, Artie. I wrote a song with Joe Walsh. You know, I played with Huey McDonald on my album. He was the bass player on my album. You, oh, For most of the songs, if you don't know who Huey McDonald is, he's the bass player for Bon Jovi now. Rolling Stones... Rolling Stone magazine seemed to think so, Artie, you fat snort. <laughs> yeah, I know. What a fucking idiot. He's like, Artie's always name dropping. Well, guess what? I hung out with Joe Walsh. Like, John, come on, man. Are you not? He's obviously not listening back to the show, but is he listening to himself while he's talking at all? Is he, is he aware? And again, I want to point out this drop off. I wrote a song with Joe Walsh, and then he says, and this this bass player from Bon Jovi was on my album. It's not even the bass player from Bon Jovi. Like, okay, yeah. that's that's you. It fell pretty far just now. Yeah, even if it was the bass player from, <laughs> I don't know anybody in Bon Jovi except Bon fucking Jovi. That was the, that's the guy I know in that band. So um, this this is I, how. Well, come on, you know Richie Sambora. All right, okay. Glory days. <laughs> this is how he wraps this all up. He's having this long conversation about everything that he's accomplished over all of these different years. And so here's the, uh, the wrap up, you know, so getting, so yeah, I, who knows what I could have done. It could have been, <laughs> you would have been a nobody. I know exactly <laughs> what you could have been. And now we find out why he needs to defend himself and why he has to prove himself and go back to all of these past successes that he's had in first grade and second grade. But, uh, you know, I could, t- I could take it with the best of them. Howard goofed at me. Fred goofed at me. Jackie goofed at me. Robin goofed at me. I took it. I took it. You know, I took it for a while when Anthony and Artie were goofing on me. But at some point, you fucking got to say, shut the fuck up. Especially when kids are concerned. Especially when my career is concerned. When fucking Artie's main objective seems to discredit my comedy, which is the way I make a living right now. No, it's not Artie who's discrediting your comedy. It's your comedy that discredits your comedy, John. <laughs> I wish you would have went one bar like or one bit further on that clip because he says comedy, you know, the way I make my living now, yeah. comedy, uh, mostly pensions, though. <laughs> like, I'm like, pensions from what? From fucking The Tonight Show? Yes, yes, that's exactly right. I happen to know because I've seen John on... Uh, Anthony Cumia's show when he's talked about this after the fact he was making like 80 grand a year working for Howard Stern living in New York City which is not a good salary right. and Jay Leno offered him like a half a million a year so he he made the move and he was making a half a million dollars a year which he's lost to his ex-wife but yeah when you get that type of uh, gig in Hollywood you're pretty much set he's got a pension mm. going he's, he's going to be fine but yeah, it's like I make my living off of comedy. Well, mostly that job yeah. I didn't deserve <laughs> is still paying me. <laughs> I do want to wrap up the uh, the glory days piece of this review that we're doing. He talks about he wants to revive the thing that made him famous in the first place. Right now, I'm in the process of raising some money to do the Stuttering John interview show. It's just going to be called Stuttering John Interviews, dot, dot, dot. I'm only trying to raise, like, 20 grand. Because I want to, I'm going to, I, I need, like, three camera crews to go on the red carpet. I got to sign up to Celebrity Bulletin again. Find out where all the celebrities are, where they're going to be. Go out there. No one's going to recognize me anymore since the uh, Howard Stern day with the long hair. And start asking the questions. I already uh, talked to one of my Tonight Show buddies and former and um, and partner. He, he was a writer on the Tonight Show. He was a writer for David Letterman. 
He's gonna also help me write the questions. I'll probably get another writer um, from the Tonight Show, and we'll craft the questions. Hopefully, as good as Jackie and Fred did, and and I'll go out there and do it again. All right, so he's talking about... Hold on, before I say that, did Bruce Springsteen just say throw that speedball by you? It's called a fastball. Nobody has a speedball. You have a changeup, a curveball, maybe a slider, a speedball? Anyway, <laughs> holy shit, that fucking song. It's garbage. Um, so he's, he's talking about the fact that he's going to revive his, his shtick. I'm going to go out there and interview celebrities and ask them ridiculous questions again. Now, Kevin, if you were this amazing person he's building himself up to be, that you can write jokes and you're hilarious and you've written jokes for all these people, do you really need two writers from The Tonight Show to help you come up with questions for celebrities? Well, not only that, but he said he needs uh, three camera crews for the red carpet. (laughs) What the fuck is he talking about? This is never going to happen. He should start with one audio engineer for his current podcast. (laughs) Yeah. All right. I I want to uh, switch gears real quick. He gets into the current news. And there's a lot of people who have weighed in on this Roseanne Barr thing. You know, you're familiar with this. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, I only need one hot take, and that is Stuttering John's hot take on this Roseanne Barr situation. What's wrong with you, Roseanne Barr? You can't be disparaging to women. But what she, what she, I mean, she tweets that this, a woman from the, what, the Obama administration looks like an, an African-American woman that lo- looks like an ape? I mean, a combination of an ape or something. What is wrong with you, Roseanne? <laughs> you heard it here first, people. A stuttering John hot minute. He had nothing to say on that. Yeah. You don't have to bring it up. If yeah. you have no take on it whatsoever, other than, geez, Roseanne, that was dumb. Like, okay, I think we've all established that. I wonder what his hot take is about uh, Donald Trump. Oh, Jesus, do you have that? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> but... either. It got very political for a while. He got yeah. into this whole thing about Republicans and Donald Trump, and I just couldn't give a flying fuck about this guy's political views. He's an idiot. Well, he name drops Trump a shitload, too, because he's like, he used to call into the Stern Show. I've been on helicopters with Donald Trump. I've uh, been to dinner with Donald Trump. I know uh, that he was talking about uh, that kid being retarded. He, that's his type of humor. That's his humor. Yeah. I, I've been I've listened to Bruce Springsteen albums with Donald Trump. All right, I've thrown speedballs by him. All right. I know he... oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. He he acted like they were best friends. It's like, no, 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 no. You worked for a show that he was a big enough celebrity that he would actually call into the show and get on the air. It, it has nothing to do with you, John. He's a huge talent, man. I mean, shit. I learned a lot about stuttering john listening to this i mean he has a very very solid background going all the way back to grade two <laughs> right uh, you know he played the recorder uh, that's pretty fucking honorable and i mean shit i'm uh I, I bow down to this guy now what i love is that he's putting out this podcast that we could all agree is garbage it's unlistenable he he has his his bitterness to start off the show and trying to prove that he's talented and that's the first 30 minutes and then he starts reading questions from twitter and so he's just answering questions and one of the questions is is something like is the hokey pokey really what it's all about like why are you do you have nothing else to do um (laughs) yeah so so then why did he pick that i don't i don't know i don't know so then (laughs) at a certain point he explains that someday he might create a podcast that's listenable uh, I might have news, and well, it looks. Well, I don't want to. Well, whatever. If that happens, it happens. I might have like a, uh, some uh, a radio type show, uh, an internet radio show, coming out very soon, in like four weeks. So I guess this is the preamble towards that. All right. So I'm just going to give a little bit of advice to to Stuttering John because apparently he doesn't know a lot about the entertainment industry. 
If you're gonna launch something, don't start with the worst possible product you could possibly put out and then build towards something that might be good down the road. And I love that he says, yeah, I mean, if it happens, it happens. In four weeks, I might have a really good show. If it happens, it happens. Kevin, when you and I started this show, do we just happen to stumble upon one day we were recording ourselves and we had clips of other podcasts? Like, oh shit, look at what just happened. We just we just started a new podcast, making fun of other people's podcasts. No, you fucking make it happen, you fucking retard. If you want to have a good podcast and a good show where there's a news person on there and you actually have a format and fucking bits that you're doing, then fucking do it. Don't wait for it to happen to you. <laughs> This is the most motivational I've ever heard you. Before. Yeah, I know. I feel like fucking Matt Foley right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What, but seriously, though, why is he putting out the worst possible product possible? And then he's going, yeah, in four weeks, I might have a good uh, a good radio show. Oh, 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 you might? I doubt it. Well, I'd be surprised. It sounds to me. Now, I, I, I obviously don't know. I, Jesus, I'm fucking stuttering. I don't know John Melendez. You know what I mean? I don't know this guy. But it seems like shit's kind of been handed to him. He actually calls that out at one point because I guess uh, Artie used to say that too. Like, you know, he fell into, yes. you know, the successful Stern show. And then he got this, you know, he wasn't a musician and got a record deal. And then he got, you know, the Tonight Show and he wasn't an announcer. So it's like he didn't, he's kind of stumbled into a lot of shit yeah. and, and, and been marginally famous for it. Um, and now here he is, you know, trying to scrape together something and is hoping that he'll fall into something again. And it, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, you don't you don't think it's going to happen, yeah. Kevin? I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but uh, he is one of the most talented people who was on the Tonight Show. He talks about all of his contributions, you know, and the segment guys, they had to go out there on the field and come up with bits and you know and and i was all of those i was segment i i you know i, I was a monologue guy i i mean you know monologue was not my i didn't i didn't focus on the monologue i was more of coming up and creating a lot of segments and eventually i became a drop-in guy and i was probably the number one cold open guy which was like comedy sketches getting back to my youth Getting back to my youth. He was talking about when he was in sixth grade, he was writing comedy <laughs> sketches. He's like, yeah, then I did it for The Tonight Show, getting back to my youth. But did you hear what he was taking credit for there? He was the fucking Tonight Show announcer. And he's explaining that he was part of the monologue writing. He was doing the bits. He was doing the cold opens. He was writing sketches. And then he explains that, I don't know what a video drop-in is, but... I have two takes on this clip. But, you know, then the the drop-ins, which were the video jokes. That was one of the ones that made Obama laugh at the White House Correspondence Center. We literally, if you saw my reel of drop-ins, you would call Artie a fucking idiot. Because it is well-crafted, well-thought-out jokes in a video sense. And it's it's a niche thing that only, you know... Let's face it, out of the 20 guys on Tonight Show, maybe three or four of us were able to do it. Holy shit. All right. You heard that that clip I just played, Kevin? Yeah. All, yeah. Right, all right. Bring your jaw back up toward, toward your mouth. Uh, all right. Okay. This fucking guy is so delusional. He thinks he's able to write comedy in a way that only a couple of guys who were hired to be writers on The Tonight Show could even figure out, could possibly pull off. And then he's so fucking bitter that he has to make it about Artie Lang. Every single thing he says, he's like, yeah, you know, I used to do this thing that was so great. If you would have seen my reel, yeah, fucking Artie. Yeah, check out my reel, Artie. Like, Artie's not even listening to this. You're not talking exactly. to Artie right now. He doesn't care about your podcast. <laughs> they, who are you talking to? I, I, love, I love that he pretends he's not bitter. Here's another question from uh, DMAC, Killer7566. Why are you so bitter? Well, I am not bitter, D-Mac. I'm not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just say he's not bitter? That's all he <laughs> is. That's all this show is. is that he's fucking bitter. It's <laughs> amazing. The stuttering rebuttal. That's what this show should be called. <laughs> he's just responding to the things that no one is aware that's even happening. Correct. Um, this, is, this is a hard one for a lot of fucking reasons man it, it, it's just it's number one it's not good uh, at any kind of uh measurable scale 
and it's just it's it's it makes me depressed listening to it because it's like this is a guy who thought he had everything and now doesn't have everything but uh it's just trying to uh it is really it's it's really the fucking song glory days personified it really is that fucking i'm so song. i'm so glad you said that we were on the exact same page it's all i could think of when he was talking about all of his accomplishments, and it'd be one thing if he if he was just talking about the Tonight Show and Howard Stern, like that's all I want to hear about from Stuttering John. I don't want to hear about the the stand up show he did at Yuck Yucks in Baltimore. Right? You know, I don't care. But the fact that he went back to when he was a fucking child, or when he was at NYU getting A's on his fucking film tests, I, that was yeah. surprising <laughs> to me. That was surprising. Uh, I like also Artie's going to hear this and be like, oh, oh I, I didn't know that, John. Right? It's He's talked to Artie. He's were... talked to Artie so many times. Doesn't he know that this is not a good argument to make? Artie would be crushing it right now. It's so stupid. God, um, I'm sorry, John. I didn't know. I didn't know that uh, in sixth grade you wrote uh, The Smothered Brother. I didn't know that that was you. <laughs> Here's a clip that I have. It's from near the end of the uh, the episode. He just can't help himself to be boring. He talks about something that happened in high school that couldn't be less interesting. You know, it's funny. When I was in uh, high school, it was when Reagan was president, and I, and I wrote on the desk, like, some shit trashing Ronald Reagan. And this guy wrote back to me on the same desk in pencil, you know, you know you're nothing but a bleeding heart liberal. And I wrote back to him, who the fuck is this? And he wrote back to me, Daryl LaMonica. I knew Daryl LaMonica. He was this fat bastard in like ninth grade, I think I was in 10th. So I said to him, well, I'm Frank Fee. I picked the biggest bully, the tallest, biggest guy that I could think of. I'm Frank Fee, and I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> Daryl LaMonica never wrote on that desk again. <laughs> That's fascinating. Please go on. What the fuck kind How... of story was that? How big is this desk that you're writing fucking sentences on it? So, I mean, what's the interesting part? I don't understand... Why he would relay that story where he had to pretend he was someone else to intimidate someone who was just writing on a fucking desk? Is this what we're talking yeah, about I, on your podcast? I hope Mark LaMonica is like a fucking huge lawyer right now and heard he just heard these disparaging remarks on a shitty podcast. Well, I, I'm hoping that that's like two or three chapters in his book that I cannot wait to pre-order <laughs> on Amazon because that sounds another amazing. Day. I wrote on the desk, uh, uh, doesn't the teacher smell? And then somebody wrote back, uh, you smell. And I was like, uh, I, I'm not the one who smells. You're the one who smells. And it, this went on for, for months and months until we filled up all the desks inside the classroom. Uh, but then we started writing underneath the desks, you know, where all the gum was and stuff. Uh, is this interesting? <laughs> I mean, it actually is more interesting than what I was just listening to <laughs> this morning. And... It sucks because I'm doing double duty now. I had to listen to this um, Stuttering John show, but we're also doing an Opie segment, and I, I should have teased that earlier in the show. We do have an Opie segment coming up. So I'm listening to Stuttering John's god-awful podcast telling stories about nothing, and then I have to switch gears and listen to Opie and Vic Henley and Carl Ruiz, and it's fucking torturous. This is my day off. This is the day I don't go to work, and this is what I'm spending my fucking time with. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I don't know why. I'm, I don't know why I'm complaining. Hobby. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why I'm complaining to you, Kevin. You were smart enough to to walk away. I, I mean, I, yeah. you should not. You, you should be like, yeah. Well, this is the fucking bed you made. Um. All right. I I do want to put to play you this compilation that is the accomplishment compilation. This is all the shit. Actually, it's not even all the shit. But th this is just a quick comp of the things that Stuttering John has done that proves that he's a worthful, meaningful person that we should all be very impressed with. You know, I play pretty good fucking lead guitar on my album if you fucking heard it. Rolling Stones... Rolling Stone magazine seemed to think so, hardy, you fat snort. I have my class three. I had to take a fucking... I'd take a road test in a freaking uh, 26, 30-foot truck where I had to parallel park in that bitch. And I was getting A's in all my films at NYU. As far as I'm concerned, I, I think Mike Bolchetti is funny as shit. You know, I've, I've, written, I've written some jokes for Mike. 
I was in chorus in all district. It had, I had a solo every year. You know, after you come off the Stern Show, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. The Tonight Show, you know, the Criminal Jabaros, the Stephanie Miller Show, Bite Size TV, you're on all these shows. I, I would write sketches, and I got to direct the, you know, the likes of Quentin Tarantino. I became an all district trumpet player. It's, uh, but I got to direct Jamie Lee Curtis and Jack Black and Adam Sandler and David Spade. I learned how to read music in second grade, a bunch with Kim Kardashian, a bunch with Charlie Sheen. I mean, we, I, I got to write and direct so many stars. Sophia Vergara, uh, you Laurie, Terry Bradshaw, like three or four of them. Phil Jackson. Yes, I wrote a lot of jokes for Howard, but, you know, I, I killed it on Anthony. And all the producers and, and directors and staff there always told me how, how well I did. Keith himself and Anthony himself. Holy shit, I'm sorry about the length of that. It is all over the place. <laughs> Could you imagine if, if you did a show where all you do is talk about everything that you've ever accomplished? This is kind of like Bobo from Howard Stern talking about the spelling bee that he won and the, the grades he used to get when he was... Like, is Stern John now fucking Bobo? <laughs> I, I was hoping you were referring to that Bobo, not the other Bobo from O and A. Well, I I still love Bobo because that Bobo, the other one, is on Chip's show from time to time, and he is fucking amazing. Yeah. I, it, comes I am a fan. <laughs> it comes the pre. It comes the pre. It comes the pre. During that clip, uh, he refers to the Kareem Al Abdul Jabbar roast as what I think is <laughs> the criminal at bar bar show. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care for that with shit. <laughs> criminal Abad show. <laughs> the criminal Jabaros. Um, a couple more clips I want to play, and then we'll, we'll talk about Opie. He talks about the fact that Anthony Cumia is a local DJ and has no right writing his own book. Why would he write a book? He was a DJ in, in New York and Boston. But then he talks about Casey Armstrong. And Casey Armstrong was on the Howard Stern show for a, a minute in the 90s. Do you remember Casey on the show? What was his thing? He was like a good-looking guy who worked out a lot. He was a good-looking guy that they kept on claiming they thought he was gay. C Casey was such a bit character on that show. Yeah. He had no, he wasn't an important guy. So this is John. Right after he talks about how Anthony Cumia should not be writing a joke. Anthony from Opie and Anthony. Or should not be writing a book, I should say. He says this. And uh, lastly, what's Casey Armstrong up to? Apparently Casey's got a book coming out. I forget what it's called, like Amazing People or whatever, but he's got a book coming out, so God bless him. All right, so God bless Casey because he's writing a book. I listen to Howard Stern every single day. I could give three flying fucks about Casey Armstrong's book. There's no way right, I would possibly right. want to read that. Well, by that definition, you should write a book because you've right. listened to the Howard Stern show before. <laughs> All right. I got one more clip on here that is, again, an example of this amazing joke writer who's written jokes for all the greats. The two strokes happened because of a, I had, my cholesterol was through the roof. It was probably higher than Artie's weight. And that's hard to fucking, that's hard to, that's hard to beat. But he is so pissed at Artie. And Artie yeah. Lang is on his deathbed at this point. Have you seen Artie Lang's nose recently? Yeah, yeah. Oof, it's, it's it's bigger than my face. Yeah, he's looking he's looking pretty rough. He looks rough. This uh this stuttering John show is not good. <laughs> it's not a good show. It's not fun. It's not fun. It's not, it's not fun. funny. It's not funny. Um anything else you want to talk about with uh with John? Any other clips? No, I mean it just that this is it was depressing, honestly, to yeah. listen to and uh, to to hear like uh I, it's one thing to you know brag about all of the bullshit you supposedly have done, but to me, like b bragging about writing on the Tonight Show is not something that I would ever do, uh, <laughs> because the Tonight Show for Jay Leno's run was a horrific turd. Uh, I I I don't know. Oh, you know, I got he can. He was talking about like he would get a joke on the monologue and how proud he was. I. I dare you to go back and listen to those Jay Leno fucking monologues. It's the, they're the worst jokes. They're yeah, not even close. Yeah, it, it, they're not even close to I'm funny. not really sure how that show fucking hung around for as long as it did. Um, well, I don't know. There, there's this thing, Kevin, called the Midwest, 
<laughs> there's a lot of fucking people there. And they have zero sense of humor. They just think that if you're smiling and looking at a camera and you hear applause going on, then it's a funny joke just happened. There was nothing, there was no entertainment value in that show. Yeah, I don't, and you know, I, that's kind of my opinion of, of Leno anyway. But, you know, people were like, oh, you know, he's edgier in his, in his stand up or whatever. And this was kind of a milk toast way of doing shit on, on TV and stuff. But, I oof, I don't know. I, you know, not that I'm a huge fan of uh, Fallon or anything either, because I don't really think that it's it's ever really been that great of a show. Uh, I'm talking about the tonight, to, tonight Show, uh, particularly, but I would never claim that I was like this star writer on the Tonight Show, because it's not generally known as like the biggest fucking, you know, the Carol. It's not the Carol Burnett show, a fucking late night show. You well, know what I'm saying? well, you know, ag- again. John Melendez is a talentless hack who, for him, that's an amazing accomplishment. He overachieved in life. It's wildly impressive that this stuttering buffoon was able to be this big character on Howard Stern's show and then uh, an announcer on The Tonight Show. It's remarkable. But the sad thing is that it's, it's left him delusional and bitter. And that, that's what's sad about this whole thing. That's why right, it's depressing right. to listen to his show. Because you listen to it and you go, oh, this is a guy who thinks highly of himself. And he shouldn't. But all we can talk in her well, feel free to cut a lot of that out. I was, uh, I don't know, off topic on half of uh, what I was talking about. but uh, Not more than usual. Yeah, hopefully there's some salvageable <laughs> stuff. There. I think so. I think so. I. Uh, what else did I... Oh, I had I had this uh, clip that we didn't get to. You know, that's the one bad thing about being famous for something, especially something as cultish as the Stuttering John thing was. You do get pigeonholed, uh, you know, typecast into that role, and that's the one downside. So I love that he he thinks he's pigeonholed because of the character you played on Stern, not because he has no talent. Right, right. Uh, yeah, the that, thing that pigeonholes you back. is your lack of talent <laughs> or resourcefulness. Pigeonholed. <laughs> They'll pass you by, pigeonholed. <laughs> like Anthony could say, you know, my stand-up wasn't funny or whatever, or what, even though he's laughing his ass off. And my brother knows his laugh because he was a Opie and Anthony fan, and, and I saw Anthony laughing his ass off. It's just it's such a lie. Is that fucking hilarious? He goes, Anthony came to my stand-up show... And my brother heard him laughing, and, and I and I saw him laughing. I go, okay, whatever. What? How how bad has this gotten for you in life that you have to prove that Anthony Kubia laughed at a joke you told while you were on stage? Right. Yeah. That that Holy is. Holy shit. Coming, you know, and like you know, the little bit that I actually know about stand up, that is like, <laughs> oof, that is a real reach. Like you have, that's the type of approval that you need, that you have to like watch to see if someone you whatever admire is laughing at one fucking joke or that, could, that you've told. Could you imagine if someone came to your stand-up show, Kevin, and then afterwards you're talking to them, you're like, yeah, I saw, I saw you laughing at uh, the Chuck E. Cheese joke. And you also yeah. laughed at the, like, how uncomfortable is that? Like, yeah. wait, 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 are you, are you keeping a scorecard on stage with you? <laughs> what's got, what's got you laughing? <laughs> what's got you laughing there? <laughs> That's only <laughs> That's fucking, exactly it. fucking stuttering John. What is wrong with you? Thursday night, I pop on the new Stuttering John podcast. Oh, boy. And lo and behold, John has had a few people tweeting our show at him. Oh, good. One of them being a, a comedian named Gino Bisconti. And Gino has been harassing the shit out of John. And this is the setup to the hat. <laughs> I'm in the DMV. I'm sitting in the DMV. And I get this. By the way, listen to how fucking great this show sounds. I know our show is not crystal clear. But this guy, once again, talking into his fucking iPhone, he's oh, just man. the worst broadcaster. I get this, like, I guess there's a podcast that rates other podcast voice. <laughs> okay. And I don't know what the name of it is, but I guess they said our podcast sucked. And 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 Opie from Opie Anthony sucked. It seems like they're on Anthony Cumia's side and, you uh, know, they have a horse in the race. But they just trash my podcast. And for some reason, I get... A tech or a tweet from Gino Bisconti. Now I don't even know who it is. All right, so 
That's him setting up the show. Apparently, we don't like him or Opie because we're on Anthony Cumia's side. Because that makes sense. That makes sense. We have a hundred and fucking eleven episodes of a shitting on <laughs> podcast, and just Anthony's telling me what shows to review every fucking time. Uh, but this is uh, right after that. He starts talking about how we were saying that he's untalented. You know that you know that podcast that rates all the podcasts called me untalented, right? And right. you know, Gino's like, you know, you're untalented. Right. Here's the thing, you know, fuck and. From now on, we'll call Gino just a, a new nickname, Nobody, because the guy's a nobody. Even his parents think he's a nobody. Good okay? One. He has no fame whatsoever. Good one, John. But <laughs> to call me talentless or untalented, now, I'm not saying I'm as talented as Jay Leno or Howard Stern or, or any of these guys. Okay. Wow. So, so he's not saying he's as talented as Howard Stern. So what is he saying? I can't fucking write this shit. Crozier, he once again goes into his goddamn resume oh, to prove that he's talented. Oh, good. Yeah. I I have a certain amount of talent. If you could be on the Stern Show for 15 years, Howard, behind the scenes, said how funny I was on the show. I mean, millions of people laugh at my interviews. A million, I'm not trying to, but, you know, seriously, we goofing on Gary's teeth and Jackie. You know, I've had, you know, I've made people laugh. I wrote for Howard for 15 years, and then I get hired on Tonight Show, and I write for Jay Leno. <laughs> this fucking guy! He's explaining that Howard Stern once told him behind the scenes that he thought he was funny. You were his employee. I fucking blow smoke up people's ass all day long. Oh. That's how you motivate people to do good work, you fucking oh dumbass. God. Yeah, I, I, these guys say I'm not talented. I, 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 Howard said I was funny. Off the air. Off the air once. Yeah, one time <laughs> after the show. Fucking idiot. When I was reading the questions God, that you Fred think, wrote. You think I, I'm not I'm not talented? I was goofing on Gary. <laughs> you were goofing on Gary? <laughs> you think that makes you fucking talented? <sighs> Gary threw a pitch once that hit somebody behind third base. <laughs> it's very easy to goof on Gary. <laughs> I, I don't understand oh. this thing with Stuttering John saying that I worked at Howard Stern show. Do you know the fucking idiots who work on Howard Stern yeah. show? Well, he was an it's fucking sell the stockbroker works on Howard Stern show. It doesn't mean you're talented <laughs> to have worked on Howard Stern show. Oh, he was an unpaid intern for years at that show, right? And then when he did get a job, his job was to like get Howard's baked potato, I think, right? Well. Obviously, the thing that put him on the map was the fact that he was a stuttering fucking idiot. Yeah. And so they're like, why don't we put him in a scenario where he'll stutter more? Yeah. Where he'll be nervous. And he'll read the questions that Fred Jaggy write. That'll Correct. And he even admitted that on his show. He didn't write any of these questions. So listen to this. On this episode, the last one we reviewed, John was by himself. This one, he's got like a yes man or, or, or two along with him. Oh, good. And so he's going on and on. He's, he continues to brag. And uh, then a yes man comes into the picture. I get paid a hell of a lot of money. Got two pensions out of the whole thing. I write for the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast. Ooh. And certain other, and a few other shows after that. Now, a certain amount of talent to do that. Wouldn't you agree, Royce? Of course, but let's not forget that what you did in the 90s paved the way for so many other people. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, this gets so much better. This gets so much better. Whoa. Because you think that you're just going, okay, Suttering John's rehashing once again that he yeah. was on fucking Howard Stern and Jay Leno. You're like, okay, we get it. He cannot pronounce Kareem Abdul Jabbar's fucking name yeah. to save his goddamn life. You wrote on his roast? You can't even pronounce his fucking name, you talentless hack. <laughs> So he's going on and on, and then this, this this guy chirps up, and he's like, but let's also remember that you paved the way. Oh, okay. paved the way. Did you know that Suttering John invented an entire genre of comedy? Is that so? I bet you couldn't even guess the names that they're about to fucking drop. Dude, wait until you hear this fucking part. This is amazing. You created a genre. People started emulating your ambush interviews. Yeah, and and yeah, like we've we've spoken about this, but you know, besides Ali G, who essentially did the same thing, and between two ferns is totally my stick. What? But the worst is Triumph the Insult. What? <laughs> Are you fucking high? He just took credit for Zach Galifianakis. Uh, is he fucking retarded? Well, he is retarded. Yeah. Here's a guy who was told 
go to this red carpet, ask this celebrity these questions, and now he's taking credit for Between Two Thir- Ferns, Ali G Show, yeah. which, by the way, that fucking guy is brilliant, yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen, and then also talking about Tramp the Insult Comic Dog, and I, I didn't, I'm not going to play this for you, but they go on and on to bash Robert Smigel. Oh, no shit. Who is, who is incredibly hilarious. talented. He wrote for Conan, wrote for SNL. Oh, oh my, my God. God. You, know, you, you don't even have to explain that. They think he's an asshole. Oh. And it, that is the funniest fucking... That's funnier than the entire other show that we listened to. Wow. That this guy is giving him credit for inventing this genre of comedy that you would go in there. All right. Yeah. Wow. So that's that was incredible. That was incredible. That was amazing. Later on in the show, and I think you were alluding to this earlier, <laughs> there was news that broke out that a comedian prank called our president, President Trump. Yeah. And I will tell you that that news is not true. It was actually Stuttering John. <laughs> Stuttering John on his podcast gets through to President Trump on Air Force One and they have a phone conversation. This is a true story. This just happened. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to play this for you because he talked about our show earlier on. So it's related, right? Yeah, of course, yeah why sure. not? All right. I'm going to play you some clips. They're pretty much everything you need to hear about this call. This is um, the, the setup here. John is pretending to be a senator, Senator Bob Menendez, who is a uh, Hispanic gentleman. And uh, this is, it took him a while to get through, but he got through whatever he had to get through to get to President Trump. And this is actually real audio. It sounds like crap, but it's Trump taking the call from Senator John. Congratulations. Great job. You went through a tough, tough situation. And I don't think a very fair situation, but congratulations. Thank you so much. And, you know, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. President, but obviously my constituents are giving me a lot of beans about this immigration thing. I know that you did something really noble, like, you know, by trying to, you know, get the kids back with their families. But I have to answer to them. What can I tell them that you're going to do in moving forward? All right, so this what? is what a hilarious prank. Yeah, this is, this is John. So the, okay, but but hold on a second. Bear with me. John has gotten through to the president, and yeah. he's trying to convince him that he's this Senator Bob Menendez. Yeah. Okay. That's the setup here. So he gets a prank call through to the president of the United States, and yes. he records it on a fucking Radio Shack <laughs> tape recorder. I mean, that sounds like dog shit. It's the worst sounding thing you've ever heard. Oh my god. In his defense, Trump is in an airplane. Okay. So there could be other factors involved besides his shitty equipment, which obviously Suttering John has shitty equipment. Oh. Two pensions, but he can't fucking afford a good computer. He's I don't got, know why. It sounds like an iPhone recording another iPhone on a speakerphone. <laughs> I mean it's gotta be, right? It sounds like shit. Okay, so it's gonna sound like shit for a while, but okay. what he says is you know, I'm Bob Menendez, and then he doesn't sound anything like a senator. Of course, yeah. You, you know, uh, I, I uh, yeah, you, you, you know, you did a great uh, job, but uh, 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 so he's yeah. talking about this whole immigration issue that we're having in this country, and uh, I'm just going to pick up on part two of that. This is where John sounds even less like a senator of the United States. They've got to have security at the border, and that's a good issue for the Democrats too, Bob. It's not like it's good for you or good for me. It's good for both of us. People. Oh, no, I- In the first one, at least he says constituents. Yeah. In this one, he can't think of the word. Yeah. You know, I have to, you know, I have to, you, you know, I have to look good to my people. Wow. Does that sound like a senator? Good Lord. There's two from each state. Yeah. The two. It barely That's sounds like That's one a, of them? It barely sounds like an adult human being. Right, let alone a fucking senator. Obviously, at this point, Trump realizes this conversation is going nowhere. And he tries to get off the phone. I agree. I agree. So, Bob, here's what. Let me do this. I'm on Air Force One. Uh, I'm just coming back. We had an amazing rally in North Dakota, actually. Yeah, that's all the speech. uh, That's all the speech. It's going to be good. You know, it's a tough. It's a tough race. Say it again. No, I saw the speech, and I thought it was. I thought it was a great speech, but. Okay, so again, 
He's kind of kissing his ass a little bit, trying to keep him on the line. I get it. You have this awesome opportunity. You're talking to Trump. You're recording it. This is him winding up for the big joke. Oh, all right. right? So he's, he's 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 able to fucking reel him in. He's got him on the line, oh. pulling it up, and here we go, ready to fucking hit it. Um, if I could just ask. <laughs> If I could just ask you one more thing, Mr. President, right? Okay. He knows that Trump's trying to get off the call. So here we go. This is your last chance. Um, as far as the new justice, I'm sure you heard, I'm sure you know that Justice Kennedy is retiring. And, you know, right. Justice, Kennedy, and Justice Kennedy was a Reagan appointee. Are you, I'm begging you, are you going to go more moderate or do you think you're going to go more conservative? Wow. Is he just trying to sound smart? What the fuck was that? That was I literally awful. expected him to have a joke and to say something ridiculous. Instead yeah. he goes, with your new appointee to the Supreme Court, are you planning on going more moderate or more conservative? Actually, he doesn't even say it that yeah. way. He says, oh, I'm, I'm begging you, are you going to go more moderate or more conservative? <laughs> what does begging you have to do with that? It's a yes or it's a one oh. or the other question. Oh, my God. Can you fucking believe this guy? He calls himself a comedian. He says he's a fucking joke writer. This was his fucking prank call with Trump. Yeah. The one, yeah, the one thing people might know his podcast for because it's been in the news. He literally thought that he was a correspondent for CNN. He's asking him legitimate questions about what's going, trying to, about what's really going on in the world right now. How fucking boring is this? All right. So um, bear with me. This is where Trump realizes this guy's a fucking idiot. And uh, we're going to make a decision. I'll probably make it over the next couple of weeks. Because I promise you, you will have my vote. I will help you if you don't go too, too conservative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did you hear the way Trump went? Yeah. yeah. At that point, he realized he's either talking to the dumbest dummy or it's a prank call. Because yeah. he just goes... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, what the fuck are we doing? All right. <laughs> keep going here. Well, we will talk to you about it. We're going to probably make a decision, Bob, over the next um, over the next two weeks. We'll have, I think we're going to have a really good. We have some great choices. And uh, be done over the next 12 to 14 days. All right. Well, please, you know, you know keep me informed. And, uh, you know, good luck on your trip. And thank you so much for taking my call. You take care. I will speak to you soon, Bob. Take care of yourself. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. President. Wow. Thank you, Bob. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right. Bob, I'm you. What? Holy shit. That was the entire call. I didn't take very much out of that at all. I wanted everyone to hear this amazing feat Holy that Southern shit. John accomplished. Literally wasting everybody's time. Yeah. That was... That was such a waste of fucking time. He had a normal conversation. Well, he tried to have a normal conversation with the president. Outrageous. I can't wait for his new show to come out. Wow. I'm going to go up to celebrities and ask them questions that are actually normal. And it make me seem like I know what's going on. Yeah. Neat. I can't wait for it. Holy fuck. So you would think that after that fucking disaster of a prank call, you would not be patting yourself on the back. But guess what? This guy is very proud of himself. Listen to, this is immediately after that on his podcast. I didn't cut anything in between what you just heard and this next clip. This is how excited they are about what just happened. <laughs> and then to get the Baba Booey in at the end. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Baba Booey to you. <laughs> how the hell? You know, now we're going to put the, you know, the real, I mean, the, we'll put the better in, quality audio yeah, in there, yeah. but... Now, first of all, Royce, here's the thing. I don't even know what the fuck he's congratulating me for. <laughs> but apparently I got out of some crime. Fraud charges. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm just kind of rolling with it. Oof. John thinks he's rolling with it. Oof. John thought that he was playing that so cool. He was convincing the president that he was actually Senator Bob Menendez. As he's going, Gee, uh, you know, you know, my, my, my people... <laughs> He wasn't fucking fooled, dummy. And then he's taking credit for the fact that he said Baba Booey at the end. Yeah. It was I, after there were three different goodbyes. It was like medicated Pete on the phone. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. Yeah. They were saying all these goodbyes back and forth. And then I went back and just isolated this one part. 
He doesn't even say Baba Booty. Yeah, I was going to say because I Dude, couldn't listen, make it listen out. Dude, listen to this. Uh, Baba Booty. <laughs> what? Bob Boudia? That's not oh even a fucking God. prank. That's the worst executed prank I've ever heard in my life. Good Lord. He could have asked if his refrigerator was running and it would have been fucking funnier. Absolutely. Than saying, yeah, I'm just wondering who you're going to uh, appoint for our next Supreme Court justice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. John, I got a bunch of people. Or Bob, I got a bunch of people on the list. I'll make it uh, clear to everyone in the next few days. Ugh. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Yeah, that was painful. I mean... Sonny John had the ball and he mm, dropped <laughs> this guy fucking dropped the ball <laughs> on a perfect opportunity <laughs> oh my uh, god oh King Ed Rock oh. alright well that was that was it man that was what I wanted to cover yeah wow that sucked I, I know that the <laughs> that he- sure did suck the headline that I saw was like you know comedian pranks president on Air Force yep. One and I'm like oh boy and then I, I clicked the article and it's Stutter and John I'm like what the fuck yep right? and Anthony Cumia came out and gave him credit and said hey I gotta give John credit he got Trump on the phone it's amazing yeah. he did nothing with it oh my getting god getting Trump on the phone is impressive don't get me wrong yeah sure but oh my god Way to fucking take an opportunity. He could have thrown in a homo so what? And that would have been even funnier. Oh my god, he could have fucking done anything. Yeah. He did nothing. Uh, He literally did nothing. Good lord. All right, so the reason why I didn't do my homework this week, I didn't listen to Opie, is because, first off, I do put some value on my time. But secondly, (laughs) I had to listen to Stuttering John's podcast, episode nine, where he does a fucking victory lap about his prank call to Trump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Someone yeah, I, wrote I, in to us and said, you got to listen to this episode of Stuttering John. And I'm glad I did. This is fucking ridiculous. We, so you're familiar with his prank call to Trump, right? Yes. We covered it very well, I think, was, on episode 111, our RuPaul episode. Yep. We played his entire call to Trump. We dissected how terrible it was. It wasn't funny. It, it was a golden opportunity that he flushed Wasted. down the toilet. Wasted. Yeah. Wasted opportunity. Basically, if you didn't hear our other episode about it, he called up Trump pretending he was Bob Menendez, who's a senator, and then talked to him how Stuttering John thinks a senator would talk to the president. Still terrible, but talking about real issues and things. And Trump just got disinterested and went, okay, well, I got to go. That that was the extent of the prank call. So this is how he starts off his show. Hi, Bob. White House staff members are freaking out today. Faux podcast or whatever. Uh, that there was actually a prank call. Fake Bob Menendez, real stuttering John Melendez. Did this comedian just prank the president? Courtesy of the Stuttering John podcast. I can't believe this. All right. Welcome to the Stuttering John podcast. And that intro was put together by... Our engineer here, Don. Don, great job. Thank you. Holy shit. Fucking John. Can you just let it lay that you have, like, an intro with people talking about you? He's got to give credit to the fucking guy who put that together. It wasn't that impressive. (laughs) And who starts out their show with people talking about them? Who are these podcasts? They do a show about shows. It's hilarious. The show's hilarious. (laughs) All right. I guess some people do. So, John... This is the beginning of his victory lap. Right off the be- the get-go, it's like, news is talking about me. Yeah. And, God, the news all got this wrong. It's the first time anybody's given a shit about talking about him in... Ever. 20 years. In ever. <laughs> and it's funny because everyone got it wrong. Fake news. A comedian pranked President Trump. I'm missing out on where the comedy is in it, any of yeah, this. Yeah, it, it's not funny. This is him talking about a meeting he had... After getting all this notoriety. Royce and I were uh, having breakfast with a television producer who's going to try and get this, you know, a show of, of ours sold based on this call, which is amazing. He had a meeting with a television producer who's going to try to build a show based on that call. What is it called? Boring Conversations <laughs> with Celebrities? <laughs> Like, well, what, are, what are we doing here? What is he going to talk to the fucking uh, Secretary of State yeah. and ask them about foreign policy? I'm going to call the mayor and complain about things that citizens complain about. Hey, oh, like, mayor, uh, uh, there's a pothole on uh, Route 31. Are you going to do something about this yeah. pothole, <laughs> mayor? Like, what the fuck are we talking about? 
how is he having a meeting with a television producer? I want to hear that conversation more than I want to hear his conversation with Trump. Because that would actually be funny. Oh, God. You ever see uh, Nathan for you? <laughs> so then he starts, he tells this. down after crank anchors. He tells this joke and his co-host, whoever this guy is, I don't even know why they address this as a joke. I know, but, but my ass is in jeopardy, and I mean that literally. Uh, you know, you made that joke at the breakfast table, and the elderly couple across the way shot you a look. <laughs> Does he know what the word literally means? No. My ass is in jeopardy, literally? My ass is in jeopardy just means what it means. There are, there are two different fucking meanings of that. No. I mean, and then the guy goes, man, you said that <laughs> at that diner and those fucking people shot you a look. How innocuous is that? <laughs> My ass is in jeopardy? Like, whoa, watch out for this guy. He's yeah. going to clear the room. I got to tell that on the podcast. I know, I got to reuse that I, I, joke. Like chip. <laughs> <laughs> I got I to gotta tell that joke. So we're literally talking about the fact that John did a boring fucking prank call that was already been on his podcast, and now he's putting on another podcast about that podcast to tell everyone how amazing he is. He talks about how every TV show wanted to talk to him. And you and I going on the media tour it was like every single show. It's crazy. Then NBC, MSNBC, uh, you know, help me out, uh, TMZ, you know, what else? Honestly, it's everywhere because there was countless radio shows you were doing in the car rides between the other studios uh several blogs <laughs> that that fucking went down quick he goes we were on every single show he could think of two networks nbc msnbc and then he's like uh tmz I saw that's not every show yeah that's not even most networks <laughs> that's a couple of networks i saw it scribbled on a bathroom wall yeah so, somebody fucking well he gets into the fucking tweets that he got about it as if that's important but he goes to like blogs wrote about it blogs. you know what rapid part would say about that it's 2018 you still hype that you blog <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck are we talking about he goes from i was on tv in the same sentence to blogs were talking about it <laughs> okay so he starts talking about Twitter and how people on Twitter were super stoked about this prank call. First, let me just thank you, everybody, for the great response and all the support I've gotten from the Twitter sphere and from actual celebrities. And we'll talk later. Uh, Kathy Griffin <laughs> called me. Actual celebrities? And then he says, Kathy Griffin. <laughs> uh, John, I thought you said actual celebrities. There's a disconnect there. Kathy Griffin? Oh, yeah, whose career got ruined because she doesn't well, like that's Trump the only either. person who would who would say Right. Because I guess John had uh Secret Service reach out to him and anytime yeah. that you don't do Don't call the like president this, anymore. John. Yeah, a dummy. Yeah, it's yeah. the president. Stop it. John then proceeds to name drop all over the fucking place. And this is a compilation I put together of Centering John name dropping because he's so fucking amazing with his shitty podcast. Ron Howard, Kathy Griffin, Bill O'Reilly, Mark Hamill, Elaine Boozler, Randy Mayhem Singer, Michael Avenatti himself, Ross the intern, Rain Wilson. He dropped. <laughs> There was also a sliding scale. It went way, way down. <laughs> way, way down. Starting Ross with the Elaine Boozler. <laughs> I know. So he starts talking about Bill O'Reilly. Because, I don't know, I guess Bill O'Reilly gave him shit or something. And this is a great clip that demonstrates Stuttering John's amazing wit. Yeah. This guy just, I mean, his brain works differently than yours or mine. Yeah. He's just off the cuff. He's just fucking funny, man. He's so quick. Thank, well, first of all, Bill O'Reilly, <laughs> you know, who's, account, I mean, his account is Boar, which is what I think he is. So, you know, Boar.com. I mean, didn't he think that B-O-R dot com was going to, like, you know, imply boar? <laughs> Can we zoom in on that? <laughs> this is John setting up his joke. He could have prepared for this all day if he wanted to. He could have been ready with a punchline. Listen to him set up for this joke and then have nothing. I mean, didn't he think that B-O-R dot com was going to, like, you know, imply boar? Oh, <sighs> What a fucking epic fail that is. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? D didn't he think that, like, B-O-R would um, uh, 
Uh, it sounds like boar. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Man. Th- this is unbelievable because this prank call, he got in touch with President Trump, had a boring conversation, put out a shitty uh, audio quality version of it on his podcast. This victory lap that he's doing, he turns this into that he's now like the prank call king. Oh, boy. That should be our next prank call is to Bill O'Reilly. Oh, now he's like the prank call guy. <laughs> Wait until fucking Stuttering John calls you up. Then you're going to get your ass pranked. <laughs> this guy's the prank call guy. I, All I, right. What's that call going to be? Like, hey, Bill, how's the podcast going? Yeah. It's just going to be like. How many uh, subscribers do you have over yeah. there on your podcast? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I just called Bill O'Reilly. Right. Did you guys hear that? I got him on the phone. Oh, it's amazing. Great success. <laughs> Fucking boring. So this is um, more name dropping. And Andy, you're a you're a movie buff, so I have He's going to uh, top Elaine Boozler? I have a question for you after you hear this. So this is awesome, man. I got, look, uh, you know, Cinderella Man, I loved Solo. I mean, uh, just one of the greatest directors, Ron Howard. Ron Howard, um, and, you know, I can't remember some more of his movies, but he's done so many great Willow. movies. Andy, Ron Howard. Yeah. Legendary director, yeah. obviously, he was a, a TV star. Can you name more of his movies yeah, than... Teen, yeah. Backdraft. Right. Great he's, movies. He's done a ton of fucking movies. Yeah. You go through the list, you're like, you got the Willow on your third fucking one? <laughs> Cocoon you could throw out there? There's so many movies. So he brings up Ron Howard, and that's how he started off the conversation. You're like, oh, did Ron Howard want a meeting with you about this call? Listen to this. When I wrote, Secret Service about to arrest me, unbelievable, they should arrest Jared Kushner for putting the call through. Shame on Donald Trump, who has been a friend of mine. And he... And he retweeted it. How cool is that? Ron Howard retweeted him! And he's fucking taking a victory lap about it! That's insane! Uh. This guy hit a fucking button on his phone! (laughs) Because he's obsessed with Trump like everyone else is. Hit a fucking button, and Sonny John's like, Holy shit, man, Ron Howard's my boy now. Yes, you're having lunch with him tomorrow. Well, he even goes goes as far as to say this. That's amazing. Ron, if you can get me in like... Solo 2. Yeah, Ron, if you can get me a cameo in one of your movies. Because he retweeted you? Is that how Hollywood works? Uh, listen, I apologize. We got to put this guy in the cast. I retweeted him back in 2018. It was, it was a decent tweet about Trump. So, anyway, he's the co-star. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Action. <laughs> That's not how this fucking works at all. And oh then, God. this is something I had no idea. I know that Ron Howard was Opie. I know that Ron Howard was on Happy Days. I did not know that he was the star of Star Wars. That's Ron Howard. That's no. fucking Luke Skywalker. No, that's that's that Mark Hamill. Uh oh, retard alert! <laughs> retard alert! Glass. Holy shit, uh, Andy! I mean, can we just fucking edit something out of this shit? What is wrong with this guy? It's fucking Ron Howard, fucking Luke Skywalker. Not uh, even no, nope. <laughs> nope. Ron Howard cast as Luke Skywalker would have been the death of Star Wars. <laughs> There's no way that movie would have been good. This receding hairline. A so, ginger receding hairline. Yeah, I'm just not buying that he's taking down the fucking Death Star with that ginger hairline. So this is the thing that everyone's talking about is the fact that Stuttering John was able to get in touch with Trump. That's the big deal. Obviously, the the call was born. That's the only achievement. The only achievement is that he actually talked to the guy. And this is the takeaway from that. Stuttering John is able to prank Donald Trump and get a live call from Air Force One. What the hell is Vladimir Putin able to do? And that's the truth. And I think that's what's really embarrassing to Trump. Because, look, if I could dupe them, if I could dupe them, you don't think the Russians can? Wait a second. What is Russia going to do with prank calls? (laughs) I'm confused what the fucking connection is here. Like, I was able to get in touch with Trump by pretending I was a senator. What do you think Putin's doing? I think Putin is running a fucking country and doesn't give a shit about prank calls. Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> what is he talking about? Daniel, did you refrigerate the running? <laughs> exactly. You better catch it. The, the, the fucking commentary that's coming out about this, I didn't even realize until I heard the show... But these pundits come out and they say, well, Jesus, what about what, what are hackers up to? Hackers?
fuckers. <laughs> Getting into the fucking computer system is very different than a call screener thinking that this guy's a senator and putting him in touch with... It's, there's not even any connection there at all. Anyway, yeah. it's fucking hilarious. So, Stuttering John needs so much goddamn attention. And he's so desperate for attention that the pub that he goes to, he was doing a victory lap at the pub after he got in touch with <laughs> Trump. Yeah. Yeah, and there was people at my pub that I go to, one, the, the, the bartender, and they all didn't believe me. Yeah. And they're probably sick of you fucking showing up, too. <laughs> oh, the, the fucking bartender didn't believe me. Like, yeah, because you're a fucking no one. Yeah. You're an alcoholic. You're a waste case. You're they're a waste there case. Start, shows up and drinks. That's what every waste case does. Comes in and says, oh, the, the president's out to get me. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, I happen to have the awareness around the fact that when you say you have a podcast, it shuts everyone off. Yeah. Nobody's listening to the next sentence coming out of your mouth. <laughs> So there are times when I've been podcasting and I'll go to the bar and the bartender's like, oh, what have you been doing today? I'm like, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> because who wants to hear, oh, I was just doing my podcast. Yeah. That's the fucking worst thing you could say. This fucking dummy is like, guess what I did on my podcast? I'm like, I don't know. I don't care. Did you want a you, beer? You, what do you want? You worked for free. Yeah. Like, you listened to it. it gives a shit. <laughs> And then he starts reading these tweets that he got from fucking nobody. So he goes through the celebrity thing, and that got done real quick. And then he starts just going through random tweets. Birdie Maker write, uh, writes, dude, that blew my mind. That was a Rolls Royce of phony phone calls. <laughs> hey, there you go. I mean, that's what we should, you know. Yeah. You know, we should have that on the Stuttering John podcast. The Rolls, the Rolls Royce, Royce of phony <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> Home to the Rolls Royce of phony phone calls. <laughs> How is that interesting or funny? Why would you read that tweet? It wasn't a good phony phone no. call. No. By any means. By any I standard. can't even touch Richard Christie's Tradio stuff. Oh, my God. Richard Christie <laughs> runs laps around this fucking guy when it comes to phony phone calls. And he's talking about a specific tweet he got from a nobody yeah. who said it was a good... I don't think this guy's ever gotten a positive tweet ever in his life, and he's blown away by it. All he gets is shit on Twitter, like yeah. most of us do. <laughs> right. So he goes, he goes, holy shit, somebody liked what I did on Twitter. I'm going to read that exact tweet. And then they're like, we should make that our fucking positioning statement. No! Yeah. You're not the Rolls Royce of phony phone calls. And then he gets into this fucking conversation, which I don't even understand how to decode this. Well, let me ask you this real quick. Because it's really not a phony phone call. It's kind of more of a, a prank call. But it... It still kind of takes the cake no matter what, right? Andy, what's the difference between a phony phone call and a prank call? It, nothing. I think nothing. Yeah, but there's a difference between a phony phone call and a prank call and this call. Yeah, because right. Because a prank call is funny. <laughs> he just was pretending to be a senator and have a boring conversation it was with someone. so dumb. It was so boring and... You're waiting for a payoff that never arrives. It never arrives. And he had chances, too. He built him up. He's like, so I want to ask you this question. Yeah. What are you going to do about the Supreme Court justice? Like, yeah. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> you had an opportunity to fucking, like, put a zigger in there. Yeah. And he even explains that his whole goal was to not have any jokes. You know what? That's why, you know, like, I get some people like, you know, how dare you do that? And, you know, it's, you know, it, I didn't do any jokes. Which I wasn't planning on. So in other words, this prank call is the same way that he plans for his show. No jokes. <laughs> yeah. There will be no jokes today. Even though we're reporting on this that a comedian got in touch with Donald Trump. No jokes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that at some point there needs to be a joke in order to be a comedian. Yeah. Right? Uh, at some point, something. He should be embarrassed. That he dropped the ball. It's fucking embarrassing. It, uh, and instead he's doing a victory lap. Yeah. As if what he did was the most amazing thing. And it's, they keep talking about like, you could go back and listen to the call. I mean, it, it's out there. It's on YouTube. It's on... Dude, I would have squashed that and just been like, I got in touch with the president. It was amazing. I can't believe I got through security and never played the call. Yeah. Because it was garbage. It should, if you downplayed it, it would have been better. He sounded like a fucking idiot. Ugh. Speaking of sounding like an idiot, this is why podcasts suck. Listen to this fucking dummy try to talk. So then, so we said that we do it, and then I, and I am, and then, and I, this is where. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
stuttering jumble at Finally. Amazing podcaster. Amazing. This was the announcer for the Tonight Show. <laughs> I'm not making this up. In this world, Jay Leno was like, that guy needs to be my announcer. <laughs> Holy shit. And just to put the cherry on top. Let's explain how terrible Stuttering John's podcast is and how fucking unimportant and boring it is. Listen to this. I was trying to get Casey Armstrong. and Ke- and From the Howard Stern from Show. From the Howard Stern Show. And Casey said he was too busy. He wanted to get Casey Armstrong on his podcast. And Casey's like, yeah, I got shit going well, yeah, on. He hasn't been on the show in Casey Armstrong hasn't years. been on the show since the 90s, <laughs> right? <laughs> At least. I don't think... He's a nobody. He's got nothing going no. on. Stuttering John, who's a friend of his, says... You want to come on my podcast? He's like, no, no. thanks. Yeah. No. <laughs> Holy shit. That's how fucking boring Ugh. this fucking podcast is. <sighs> All right. Let me start off with this then, because Stuttering John starts off on the show before Jackie the Joke Man gets there. And they're both from Howard Stern. So there's a lot of Howard Stern talk on this show. But John wants to know why he hasn't, he was never asked to be back on Opie's show when he was on Sirius. He was a guest one time. Right. And then he's all upset because he's like, "What? Well, what's going on? So here's the here's the clip of uh, Opie explaining why John wasn't asked back to be on the show. But it was more like uh, at that point we knew like the writing was on the wall and they were they pretty much had it out for me. So I was hanging out with my guys more than anything. Uh, we, we didn't get a lot of guests on the that, imagine that, that last uh, version. Of I the didn't show. know. All right. So <laughs> that's Opie's excuse. The writing was on the wall. We didn't have a lot of guests anymore. It, you know, it wasn't you. It was us. However, Obi's a fucking liar. Yeah. Because all I have to do is go back to a couple episodes ago, and I think I these clips came from the best debate in the universe episode that I did. This is Opie on the beach talking about how getting fired from Sirius blindsided him. Not gonna lie to you, it was devastating. I was really, really bummed out, really, really depressed. I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do after that happened. I was very, very surprised I was let go by Sirius XM. Extremely surprised. Oh, he was very, very surprised. And then he says this. And wow, did that come out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. And then on this show, he goes, the writing was on the wall. <laughs> we were on our way out. That's why I didn't have guests anymore. Are you lying to me or stuttering John? Oh, 100% John. He's trying to dodge interacting with John as much as he can. Oh, I don't know maybe, why. It, maybe it has something to do with my clip four. Before I do that, though, I just have one more piece of my package here. So Stuttering John makes up excuses. He gives Opie excuses for him. He says, yeah, I didn't know if maybe Howard said I couldn't come back to Sirius or maybe because I did Anthony's show and that's why he didn't want to have me back. And Opie goes, no, 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 no. I mean, Howard, I'm way off his radar and so are you. And Anthony doesn't talk to me. So no, that's, you know, I don't care about that. And then... I have a clip on why maybe he didn't ask him to be back on the show. This is how captivating John is as a guest. And uh, and then... Um, uh, That's Southern John <laughs> as, a, yeah. as a guest on a show. Joe, what do you got? Uh, go play clip four. All right. And, and you still go by Opie, right? <laughs> uh, sort of, yeah. Because <laughs> it's I, Greg, it's Opie. Well, no. He doesn't even know what to fucking call him. I don't either, though. They're such good friends. Maybe it's yeah. because <laughs> you're an unfunny bore who doesn't know how to talk. Yeah. He's not a get anymore. No. Stuttering John, you're not a famous person at this point. I want to just talk about, he he mentions he wasn't asked to come back on the show. He's not sure why. Is it because I was on Anthony? And then Opie goes, why, did you talk shit about me on Anthony's show? Yeah. And this is two guys having a very comfortable conversation. You did blow did up. Did you trash me on Anthony's show? No. No, I just, I oh, know. All right. All right. Well, I'll ask you right to your face, because I, I, I don't, I, I. No, not at all. In fact, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure which one's the stutterer. There are so many clips that I have where Opie is stuttering more than John is. <laughs> so stuttering John has a book coming out. He's very excited about it. He's been you promoting don't say. It for months. Yeah, he's been promoting it for months. And it's going to be this tell-all behind the scenes on Howard and Leno. And he's got all this stuff that's going to happen. Does everyone know who stuttering John is? I have to explain this. I feel like I don't no, have to Well, we did this. an episode on him. We've so. done a whole episode yeah. on if him. If you're listening to Howard, this show and yeah. you don't know who Stuttering John is, I don't have time for that. All right, good. You hear that, Switzerland? We're not <laughs> going to explain it. So this is him explaining that he's not sure when his book is coming out. And thankfully, 
Jackie calls him on this because this is a ridiculous thing <laughs> this when you've been promoting great. a book forever. Anyway, on that note, my <laughs> book is called Easy. We were <laughs> my book is called Easy for You to Say, and, it's, and it'll be out sometime in October. But, but, and your book is gonna. Yeah, my book is mean and cutting. Really? Now, wait, wait a minute. What do you mean sometime in October? You got to have a publishing date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was released on October 11th, this episode. And he goes, it's coming out sometime in October. And Jackie goes, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't have a date for when your book comes out? How is that even fucking possible? I know. You don't have your shit together enough? Yeah. Skip down to uh, my clip two. It's I t- called it Worst Sellers List. So well, Why is it getting delayed? Because uh, we had, I was doing the audio book and, and I noticed a bunch oh, of mistakes. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He can't even get out of his own way. I can't talk and I can't write, so it's going to turn out great, I imagine. So they're talking about this book that's supposed to come out, and yeah, you can pre-order it. You don't know when it's going to come out. Nobody knows. And Jackie says, well, you got to have a release party. That's how books work. And then there's a hilarious joke that ensues. Right. Amazon.com. But you got to have a release party, John. <laughs> what? A release party. Let me know. I know some restaurant people. Is this a food. is this a legit book? Yeah. All right. Yeah. With a real I publisher a, and all. I had a release this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! Be more funny. Right. Fucking thing sucks. <laughs> I had a release this morning. That didn't even register as a joke to me. We've never talked about Jackie the Joke Man on this show. I don't think. Mm, can I? Can I just give my take on him real yeah. quick? Yeah. Okay. Jackie was the head writer slash comedian on the Howard Stern show right. in the 80s and 90s. Jackie does not write jokes. He steals other people's old jokes and then tells them on stage. He's not a joke writer. You guys know this, right? I, I did not know that. You didn't know that? I... All of his jokes are just other people's jokes. <sighs> He's the worst kind of comedian. And he laughs at all of his jokes. I, like it's the first time he's ever heard them. Yeah. That, yeah. that I know about he's him. He's insufferable is the best way to describe him. Well, Jackie has his moments. I mean, as an old Howard Stern fan, I, I have a warm place in my heart for the guy. But he's not a talented comedian. No. He's but definitely the level. most tolerable person in this room. Yes! Well, <laughs> yeah, because you don't hear Carl at all. Carl's not even on the show. Okay. Well, for the uh, most part. Let's... Pull back just a little bit. We yeah. never got into like what sums this up. We're, oh, no, we're a little, I didn't. There's I got right so much it. to get to. Shot out of a cannon today. Play yeah. my clip one. This okay. sums up the whole thing for me. And this is Carl. Okay, got- this is Carl talking to John. I, I got to be honest. I've told John every time at the party exactly what I do. This is the most he's ever looked at me in the face. <laughs> oh, John. Well, I'm yeah. sorry if I was mean to you, but... No, no, no. Mean would have been good. You just fucking walked away from me eight yeah. years in a row. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the other my guy God. Making no connection. There's never this, um, you never know who could help you. You know, don't step on people on your way up because you never know who can help you on the way back down. John does not subscribe to that in any way, shape, of, or form. This is way out of context. He's explaining that... Carl Ruiz has met Suttering John at Guy Fieri's party, like his Halloween party, eight different times. Right. He's met the guy. Hey, John, by the way, Carl Ruiz, I'm on the Opie show. And Suttering John just doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now they're in the studio together. He's like, hey, nice to meet you, Carl. And Carl's like, I've introduced myself to you eight fucking times. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is the best part about this whole conversation is that the reason why Opie knows Carl is through Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri used to be on Opie's show all the time. Yeah. Opie still doesn't know how to pronounce his fucking name. <laughs> yeah. I like to say Guy Fieri. <sighs> because I see an R in there. It's, what? It's Fieri. But, but there's an R in his last name, right? Stuttering John. Right, Stuttering John? Back me up on this. Like, Opie, you're just an idiot. Fucking ridiculous. I, I can't. I don't know. Who fucking cares? When the show first starts off, First off, Opie has this weird intro where he Oh, yeah, explains, that was my next thing. Oh, is this your or, next thing? I don't know. Yeah, but go go for it. Yeah, listen to this. Live from the Westwood One Studios, it's the Opie Radio Podcast. They recorded this two weeks ago and put it out in two different segments. What's live about that? <laughs> it's the opposite of live. Oh, we know. used to be on the radio. That was live. So the is other there, there's the, no such thing as a live podcast, yeah. is there? <laughs> that would be called a streaming show. Right. Is what we Why? call that. So one of the things that is insufferable about this show is the the producer guy, Joe or mm-hmm. whatever that comes on. Joe, and yeah. Shits all over the engineering, right. the producers, anybody who's trying to make the show not suck, he comes on, he's like, Well, this show's terrible because 
uh, Mike and, and and this other guy fucked it all. Not because Opie's a fucking idiot, yep. but because everybody else is a, is a, an incompetent fuckhead. So you've got this guy, Joe, yep. and he's got a great radio voice. Mm. Why is Opie doing his own fucking intro? I don't know. I, like, what? Oh, That's it's your Opie problem radio? with this? Yeah. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Why? <laughs> Why is he doing it? I don't know. I didn't understand that. Do you have, do you have the same clip? That I had? No, it's that. It, it was, was that. It was, it was, that was my number so, two, yeah. Since jo- you brought jo- up... Go ahead. Since you brought up Joey, this is Joey in part two. Again, we listened to two and a half hours plus yeah. of this shit. So this, there's this just must, so much to get to. Yeah, I must have clipped this, we, too. I feel like we're, we're all three of us are completely <laughs> frazzled by how <laughs> fucking ridiculous this show is. We don't know where to begin. I can't figure it out. It's, Joe, Joe, get down off the bar. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. All right, so this is... Joey explaining that the engineer totally fucked up and didn't have Carl Ruiz's mic potted up. Yeah, but first, I need to address one thing, because I'm sure by now you can hear that Carl's mic is hardly being picked up at times. That's because uber fan cop turned producer Mike Sappho isn't wearing any headphones, so he has no clue that the channel the Cubans on is crapping out. He has no real reference point, so it's hit or miss moving forward. In cop lingo, it'd be like putting a blindfold on before shooting your gun. Uh, I'm hurting too old. <laughs> yep, please, as long as you're firing that gun towards Opie and John and Jackie, <laughs> then I'm fine with it. <laughs> what kind of morning zoo shit is that? I, yeah, I had that same clip. It's I, I called that suck explanations. It's, if you have to have somebody come on and explain hey, why Hey, by the way, the reason sucks. why this show is not funny is because <laughs> the hosts aren't very talented. You know, you know, All right, now back to the show, Opie. The, the show sucks because... Opie burned all the bridges, doesn't trust anyone, so no. he hired his friend who was a cop to be the audio engineer on a radio show. What I mean, right. why don't you hire a cop to fucking do your taxes next? Slash bodyguard to protect him from what all the people that wide. hate him. Guys, keep in mind, this is not an independent podcast. It sounds like it is. This is Westwood One. It's a corporation yes. behind this fucking show. And at one point, I don't think I clipped this. At one point, they start talking about, hey, are you going to get a job back at Sirius XM? And, and Opie's going, well, Carl and I might go back on the radio. We have offers. Dude, you <laughs> ah, you work for a company. You have a show. Play, play my clip nine. Do you have that? Yep. Okay. Me and the Cuban love Sirius XM. One of the best places ever. <laughs> oh, why, why, are you, are you going to get a show back there? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, no, nice. No, we might go somewhere else. I don't know. Well, hell, we, we fuck, got, fucking, you know, I could be third mic. We might, uh, we, have, we have an offer. We have an offer to go back to radio. Stuttering job application. <laughs> And you hear Dopey sidestep that so fast. He's just like, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, we're just going to uh, break up the show then. Yeah, right. That's the end of the offer. There's no offer. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. You just hear his car take off. Yeah. I could be third mic. Speaking of third mic, you're saying Westwood One is a professional radio operation? I thought so. Or they, there's some professional? I thought it was. Play clip three for me. Yeah. So, yeah. You don't have to keep Jackie waiting if he wants to come in. I mean, I... No, we're talking to you about your book and stuff. <laughs> no, I know. I, I just... I don't Why wanna... would you do that to John? He, he's, been, he's been in showbiz so long. Because Jackie's going to think it's me. And, and no, no, no. I don't wanna... <laughs> no. What they're doing is they're not telling you the truth. There's not, there's not an extra microphone. Yeah, that's the problem, too. He's going to have to sit on your lap. Oh, is that true? <laughs> yeah. We, look, look oh. at that. Do the math. Look at, I, I this is a shithole. Look at the, do the math. Yeah, look. we just started this. Oh, I, <laughs> that's so fucking funny. I, this place is a shit. These are the people that fucking gave you a job. Yes. This place is a shithole. There's only three mics. It is surprising to what? me. That they they only had two chairs. Yeah. Which this is this is the very beginning of the show. Stutter and John, what's up, buddy? We don't have a chair for you because we, we're just uh, building this thing. So they don't have a chair or a mic because they're just building this thing. These are all things you could just order all at once. They also building it. One hundred percent fucking know that there's going to be four of them in right. the studio today. And this is great because they're keeping Jackie waiting. Yeah. And Jackie legitimately gets pissed off about it. This is him finally just walking in and, and just saying, fuck it, I'm not going to wait for someone to tell after, me to come out. After an hour. After, they well, put on a show already. Yeah, here's this. <laughs> Work. Oh, for a fucking half an hour. Jackie, there, Jackie. Five times the cocksucking security guard said, why are you here? You can't stand there. Jackie. You can't be here. Ask, ask, ask Mike. Jack, ask Mike. I said, go get Jackie. And they, and they said they only yeah. have three microphones. So, so you got to sit in the Robin, uh, Robin booth. <laughs> 
No, but the no, point no, is, no, don't I'll fucking book me if you got three microphones. They only have three microphones. That's no, not... so don't book me. Jack. What an asshole. Oh, it's ridiculous. He's yeah. always, ever since back to Stern, when he was even on Stern, he's always been the guy that gets, like, no, he gets less respect than Roddy Dangerfield, right. according to him. Well, I he's think that's always, true. like, demanding people respect him. Right. Why? Right. Why? What have you ever done to he earn respect? He doesn't command respect, any respect. You know? oh. Well, really the funny thing about that is Opie is well known, this is well documented, that he would keep people waiting to come on the show, waiting in the green room, as a power move. Mm. They'd have a really good comedian ready to come in, and Anthony and Jim would be like, yeah, let's, let's have him in. We're just, have, we're just shooting the shit. Get this guy in here. And Opie would make him wait an hour because it was a fucking power move. That, it was the only control Opie had over the show. He wasn't funny. He wasn't interesting. Yeah. He couldn't steer the conversation because the comedians were all took it over. The only thing he could do was keep people waiting. And so again. What, what end, though? Well, right. To what end? Everyone hates him. It makes the show worse. Everyone hates his guts. Yeah. To yeah. that end. Yeah. yeah. So that was his power move. So now he's doing it again. Yeah. Now that he has a podcast, but it doesn't work anymore because it's just a shitty podcast everyone listens to. So Jake is just like, listen, man, I'm, not, I'm just going to go home. Can I, can I just come on the fucking show? <laughs> it's not like he has the power anymore to keep people waiting. And this is legitimately Jackie pissed off. Hey, Mike says, I'll meet you guys in the lobby at 3 o'clock. Yeah. So I'm there at 10 to 3, waiting, 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 waiting. Well, 3 I... o'clock, I'll be down in five minutes, and now it's 3 fucking 30. <laughs> I mean, you could hear it in his voice. Jackie's not doing a bit right there. <laughs> so you told me to get here at 3. I got here early, and I'm fucking standing down there like an asshole. What and, I, and you guys are talking to stuttering Johnny to nobody. <laughs> Bring me up. What's going on? What the, the most interesting part of this, to me, yes. is that Carl blows this up completely. But he's like, why are you doing this? Either mm -hmm. Carl doesn't understand why Opie's even doing it. And he's like, why are you doing this to, to him? Both John and Carl were saying, bring Jackie in now. Yes, right, and he's right. like, no, 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 no. Right. No, and, no, I want to talk to you, John. I want to find out about your book. I want to talk about the Trump call. Like, right. No, no, no. And then, like, Opie's embarrassed that there's only three mics. He's yeah. clearly embarrassed by it. Yes. And Carl's like, <sighs> he knows all about it. And so the, my question is, like, why does, why does Carl blow up Opie's spot? Or he's like, do they not have... And this is just like, Carl must be just like... Have, he's had it with... Fucking Opie's bullshit. Carl has integrity. Right. He, while he does laugh at Opie's stupid jokes, and he does continue to be the yes man that Opie needs around him, he also is a legit talent. Mm -hmm. Carl Orwell is a funny guy. Mm -hmm. You don't hear it in these two shows. He doesn't talk at all. Right. But he doesn't put up with that kind of bullshit, and he does speak his own mind, I which agree. is nice. And anytime we've done these segments, yeah, you can tell that Carl is the only shining light oh he'll get sick he'll get sick of this soon yeah yeah i well, mean there's gonna be a death pool for when carl just fucking leaves the show and now opie's going everybody fucking leaves me man everyone's uh, can we talk about the opie conspiracy shit real quick okay this is a very important thing for me so you guys gotta bear with me for a second i have i have a package yeah. oh boy okay i have a package here stuttering john very early on in the conversation talks to opie about when it was just you and Jim Norton, after Anthony was fired from Sirius, the show for two years was Opie and Jimmy. And Opie loves when someone has his side. He gets so excited. You were talking to Jim, and Jim wouldn't give you anything. Nothing. <laughs> you know, and it no was like... Thank you for noticing this, because no. you're a radio guy. You've done this a long time. <laughs> yeah. He purposely made sure he wouldn't laugh or go with anything I was doing. And I'm like, well, then what the fuck are you doing here, man? Yeah, and, and I, I felt... And, and then he had a plan. He had a plan, yeah, man. Yeah, which was what? Oh, wait, oh, to get his own show? Uh, to, to take over the show. Ain't no fact checking. <laughs> so Opie says, Jim was sabotaging our show. I was on there and he was just tuned out because his old goal was in a couple of years, he would just take over the show. All right. That's the conspiracy that he set up. Right. A couple more clips from Opie here. This is just after he says that he finds a way to compliment himself by talking through Carl. So this is Opie patting himself on the back. <laughs> but thank you for noticing that because Carl's like, man, you seem like you're back to your, your old self again. I'm like, I, I am because, uh, you know, we're doing stuff, we're enjoying it, we're laughing, we have right. chemistry. Yeah. You know, uh, I help Carl along, he's helping me along, you know. Yeah, you know, even Carl said that, hey, I'm pretty funny. Right, Carl? Remember you said that I was funny? <laughs> Remember that? All right, sorry. Th so after that, he then talks about how he knew he was saying funny things. 
and Jim Norton was giving him nothing. Again, remember, this is on purpose in order for Jim to take over the show. But Jimmy would sit there stone faced, and I remember thinking to myself, I, "Wow, I didn't know we were doing this, but this is this is good." Uh-uh. I remember when you do a radio show, you know when something's funny, you know like that's funny, and I, and I would think to myself, "Motherfucker, I know what I just said was funny. You're purposely not giving me shit." Yeah, 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 so. yeah. Is there any evidence that Opie's ever said anything that's funny? No. I've never heard it. No. What well, is he talking about? So I have my clips. Joe. Oh, you got I'm more? I'm in the middle of a package. Sorry, sorry. I didn't, this I didn't is a very a important package. package. Go, 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 go. This is, this is going to be mind-blowing to people. <laughs> because I do the research that no one else is doing out there. Yeah. Opie goes on his show, calls Jim Norton a pussy. Do you remember that? Yep. He goes, Jim Norton's a pussy. Yeah. He should have left the show. He didn't want to be on a show with me. He sabotaged my show. He ended up taking my job in the morning slot. This is Jim Norton. This guy's a goofball. He's not conspiring to take over uh, Opie's job. So Jim Norton, on October 10th, was on the Mike O'Mara show. Oh, yeah. And addresses all of this, (laughs) which is amazing. This is Jim addressing the fact that Opie called him a pussy. As far as the, the thing with Opie, we have no relation. In fact, somebody uh, hit me on Twitter. She says, Opie called me a pussy. Like, he called me a pussy like, because I stayed with him instead of going with Anthony. Uh, when the reality was when Opie and Anthony, when Anthony got fired, I was hoping Anthony would come back to the show. I was hoping he would come back on. But, yeah, Opie was right. I just didn't enjoy working with him. Um, he's not lying about that. So Jim says, <laughs> look it. I said on the show that was my job. And it would be great if Anthony could come back. Remember, Anthony was fired over tweets. Right. He didn't do anything to Sirius. He didn't do anything on the air on Sirius. He didn't film anyone taking a shit. He didn't film anyone taking a shit in the bathroom at Sirius. (laughs) He just tweeted things that Sirius decided to cut him loose. So Jim says, I was holding out hope that maybe we can get the band back together. And then he addresses this whole plotting against Opie. But Opie acts like a victim. Like everyone was out plotting to get him. He actually said, Jimmy wouldn't give me anything in studio, like, laugh-wise. It's like, hey, stupid, if your jokes were funny, I would have laughed. <laughs> like, this idiot acts like I was sitting there plotting against him. It's like, that's just not how my mind works. Yeah, that's a weird conspiracy to have that Jimmy had in his mind, all right, I'm going to make Opie look terrible. And then in two years' time, two years and three months, I'll be able to take over the show. Yeah. So Jim explains the real reason why he took over the morning show. Like, he thinks that me and Sam plotted to take his show, Instead of realizing he sat out for almost the entire month of August because he thinks he's Howard. And it's like, hey, you just couldn't get away with that. When they were negotiating that final deal, instead of sitting on your ass on the beach, had you been in doing radio shows, uh, me and Sam would not have been doing radio shows. And you'd still have your morning show. And Sam and I would have went 10 to 1. Like, he, he's just delusional. And that's what makes him so difficult to be around. <laughs> Amazing. So I, I didn't listen to Sirius XM at this time. After Anthony left, I listened for a week or two, and I couldn't take it anymore because it was so unlistenable, Opie with just Jim. So I didn't know this whole background, but apparently Opie decided to take all of August off right before his contract was up, and then he came back and they go, you can have afternoons. We'll put you on three to six. <laughs> oh, and Opie's like, well, these guys took my job, man. What the fuck? It's like, no, you... No one's listening to you on the on the radio. Right. No one likes you. Your Q rating is, is nowhere. And you took all of August off. No one's seen yeah. you. When you should have been you showing weren't... your boss that you were a valued asset. Right. You went on vacation. Exactly. And you, made, you made yourself look useless. And nobody missed you. And no one missed him. In fact, they were probably getting a lot of positive feedback. Like, oh, you know, Sam Roberts with Jim Norton is, is pretty good. Yeah, this is like, actually better oh, than... Hey. People who actually like these two guys together. Let's get rid of this fucking dud that wants to take a month off. Right. Jimmy goes on to explain Opie's insecurity, and this is so great. I I love that Jim breaks this down. But the insecure version of him, when he watches everybody in the room being funny and he doesn't feel like he fits in he doesn't feel like he deserve he belongs there and he'll, he'll he can deny that but I'm, i mean i've been around funny people my whole career right when he's insecure he's awful uh because he turns into a baby and he turns resentful of people who are being funny around him and comics picked that up this is why opie doesn't have any comedic friends anymore except for carl ruiz <laughs> i'm not including Sherrod. I'm not Vic including Henley. Vic Henley. I'm not including those two. Those two are not comedians in my book. Um, and then just the last clip I want to play from Jim Norton on Mike O'Mara, and then I'll let you guys get back into the show. I apologize. But this is just, this summary of Opie 
is what I've been saying all along. I call this one, Jim Norton nails it. If he oh had just God. relaxed and enjoyed it, um, you know, he, he would have been much more fun to be around. I'm sure he has his complaints about me. I can only no. tell you that me and Anthony have remained very close. You know what I mean? It's like uh, he's just unable to see it, and I don't care if he ever sees it. Like, I have no interest in helping him see it. Um, let him t- say what he wants and feel how he wants. It's, it's irrelevant to me, you know. So this is what Jimmy's saying. All right, Opie, you're not a funny guy. But you're the Opie from Opie and Anthony that is an amazing show that everybody loves. You got Jim, you got Anthony, Voss is coming in, all these different people. And it's a really funny show. Just sit back and enjoy that you're part of this. You don't have to be the guy who gets off with the great jokes. Yeah. I equate this to, what if Ringo Starr had said, I'm not getting enough credit for the songwriting. <laughs> That's because you're not the songwriter, asshole. John and Paul are writing the songs. You're lucky to be in this band. You're not even a good drummer. You're in the fucking Beatles, and you're not even a good drummer. That's what Opie should have done. should have been the Ringo star of Opie and Anthony. Like, dude, you're famous for no fucking reason, except for you surround yourself with people who are very, very talented. Yeah. you can. He's grabbing me by the lapels of the tuxedo I'm wearing, everyone. <laughs> yeah, <he's all> fired <laughs> up. Fine, fine. Well, they, he really, I, I don't have I a, warned you I had a package. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't have a clip of this. I don't know if you guys have a clip of it, but he really did reveal it at one point that when they, when Anthony and him were getting along the most was when their, both their relationships were like falling apart. Yes. And they were both miserable. They'd hang out at the studio and like get bombed or whatever mm-hmm. and f- hang out in you know, that's when the show was clicking the most because they were kind of like on the same wavelength. In the early and, 2000s. Right? Yeah, right. And, you know, when Anthony got fired, the smartest thing this idiot could have done was to, would have been to just fucking walk out with him. And they could have taken the show anywhere else. But they no longer got along. Right. So he didn't do that. He's like, oh, I'm going to, I will get by because he's fucking an arrogant I finally Idiot. lost this dead weight of Anthony, the talented one. Right. Well, that's off what, to bigger and He's been holding things. me back. Well, that's what he thought. And then he complains that Jim Norton didn't leave, which is insane. Yeah. Like, this is all Jim's fault because he should have left when Anthony got fired. Jim Norton had a full-time job at Sirius XM that was paying him good money. Why would he Why leave would he that? Right? Away from it doesn't make any sense. Anyway. So. Joe, what just, do you got? Opie said at one point that he wasn't really aware of Jimmy's show or whatever. Uh, my five is is a little on that. Okay. Uh, when I left Sirius, they got rid of my VIP account, so I I, I, I hear the show isn't doing that great, but I, I don't listen or know yeah, no, much no, about it. So. No. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't listen because he doesn't have a VIP account anymore. He would listen. He would listen. He would listen to Jimmy's show. 20 bucks a month? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't afford 20 bucks a month. They're <laughs> right. not giving it to me for free, yeah. so I'm not listening. Yeah, right. That's just my clip. I'm sorry. My clips are divided into pathetic and sad and bombing. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I have to kind of jump around a little bit. But yeah. I, ha- I have another one that highlights Opie's insecurity. My four called Insecure Opie. It's quick. You have to listen to this. But... Okay. Two, one, I can't it. wait to hear this podcast <laughs> again. <laughs> wait, now, what? I don't like, even know car. what. So he's going to go listen to his own podcast in his car. That's and that's, wait, When you're really talented, do you think... Howard goes back and listens to the replay of his own show and no. listens to it. Does he definitely does, does Anthony, not? If he did, he would fix some shit. No, that's what <laughs> someone like me. I'm not a comedian. I don't have like I any confidence on the mic. I'm gonna go back and listen to this. You're the goat. Like, I, yeah, I'm gonna be like, <laughs> was I actually any good on this? Should I stop doing it altogether and I'll listen to this again? And that's what Opie's doing. Get ready to be super insecure. I'm pretty sure that was Carl who said that. Two, one, I can't it. wait to hear this podcast <laughs> yeah. again. Wait, now, what? Oh, that's, that's Carl. <laughs> So Carl's going the insecure one. Okay. Swig and a miss. All right. Well, I did say I was no good at this. You did. That was perfect. You backed that up very so my, well. So my, my clip 11 yeah. is all, all all the name dropping. Get, get Ad Rock ready. Okay. Because this is a, a montage of the name dropping. Guy Fieri, Kavanaugh, you know Mitch Fatal, uh, Corbin Burnson, uh, Billy West, uh, Eugene Levy and his kid with Aaron, Dennis Blair and Max Alexander and Mike Siconia and uh, Ralphie May, I stutter on ours, Garkoff Uncle, uh, Gilbert Gottfried, Garrett Morris, Lisa Lampanelli, what the <laughs> drop? There's like half those people I had never even fucking heard oh, of. Jackie was throwing out names. Yeah, all the comedians were there and he says like eight people I've oh. never heard of in my life. <laughs> my, my clip one, I called this pathetic name dropping. <laughs> okay. 
I, I've known him for 40 <laughs> years. Back when I used to, uh, I used to run a, a comedy show Wednesday nights at the Bitter End, and it would, yeah. and Simone would come with Henny Youngman's grandson, yeah. and. Uh, the the MC from Dangerfields and Bob somebody the gay guy that used to book it and there was nobody there and we just left our asses off. So Great story! <laughs> Holy shit! A bunch of nobodies I don't remember were there. Henny Youngman's cousin and Eugene Levy's son. Who the fuck are you hanging out with? Some gay guy that blew me. So I mean, what's the interesting part? <laughs> I don't, I don't understand what that story was. At the very end of the show, at the very end of part two, Jackie starts rambling, and Jackie's an older guy. I'm not an ageist. But, you know, when you get older, you some of the synapses stop connecting in your brain. <laughs> he makes zero sense out of this. Yeah, it's funny he just because you alone, he, he used right? to break my balls that I had all these shacks, and I could never fight back because the truth is, where I live, the... the Houses are all small because it's a small little area. Yeah. And I don't even want to talk about it now, but, you know, it's bad enough people come looking for you. There's no reason to pinpoint it, so I wouldn't defend and explain my reasoning for why I was there. But the reason we were there led to me being where I am. So the, the whatever the plot was worked. So Jesus. It's, uh, no it, idea what you know, said. <laughs> Like, I have no idea. Yeah, I, no, clipped that, I clipped that too, but then yeah. I tacked on the the very next part of Opie's reaction was, uh, we'll end on that turd. <laughs> like, just like, that was the fucking worst. The reason we were there led to me being where I am. So the, the whatever the plot was worked. So That's how we end today with a big fat turd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. They went nowhere. And listen, that's a long time to be podcasting. I get it. You just get to a point where you just get delirious. Like, what are we talking about anymore? And Opie can't run the show well, so it's just these guys rambling on and on with whatever stories they're telling. Yeah, I, we'll just like finish out on J my Jackie clips. There's one more where okay. I called Old Man Can't Internet. And in those days, I was just looking at the HTML and mimicking it and then putting it up and hoping it would come up, you know. <laughs> right. And this guy helped me, and he said, um, will you put a little, uh, whatever you'd call it, on the front page uh, of your website? And I said, no problem, because I knew how to do that. It was a but I, I thought it was a little ad, but it was a GIF, and I don't even know if I knew what a GIF was at the time. <laughs> Okay. Great story. Long way around to fucking nowhere with yeah. this guy. Every time he starts telling a story, it's. I know Carl is not a fan of this. Joe and I do it a lot, where you pull the taffy of a story, and you're you're always like, just get to the fucking punchline. Don't bore us. Get to the chorus. <laughs> exactly. Me and Joe are pulling the taffy of a fucking you know a, a banana flavored taffy that nobody wants. Well, but the whole That's problem, tacky. the whole problem with the show format is that Opie thinks this mundane conversation is a show because if you have people on the show that the fans should be interested in, then anything they say is interesting to those people. It's just not the case. No. You have to continue to prove yourself all the time. If you're going to be a guest on a show, I'll give Howard Stern credit. Steve Martin, the same way. These are people who every time they went on a talk show... They brought something. Right. They didn't phone it in ever. They said, okay, I'm going to be on a show. Well, Howard hasn't in like 10 years. But before that, he would bring lesbians on with them. He'd have a whole bit. Steve Martin always has something going on. Don't just go there and just have a mundane conversation. That's yeah. not a show. Right. I know you're a celebrity, but that's not a show. Jackie the Joke Man, you're not relevant. Not a celebrity. I, I You guys keep using this word celebrity. That means celebrated. These are just personalities. These are just personalities. Yeah, that's, a, that's a really good point. <laughs> not good personalities. And I got to tell you that with Stuttering John, I've listened to his podcast, obviously. Right. I've heard him on Anthony Cumia's show. He's a one-trick pony. He's got nothing else. I was so angry that I had to listen to the fucking prank phone right, call the Trump story, story again. all over again. The Trump story again. Let me play a clip that no. I have. I know. I know. It's just so <laughs> fucking annoying. Um, so he tells the story again, and the big joke is that he was trying to have uh, Ganji, Grillo, which... Oh, Casey. Casey, Casey. Yeah. He's trying to have some fucking nobody from Howard Stern. He's trying to have Casey call into the show, and Casey couldn't. So instead, he talked to Trump. And listen to how hard it is for him to get this joke out. 
KC said he was busy, so it was, it's more unbelievable. Uh, it, it, the guy getting trouble uh, getting uh, in touch with Trump is that KC uh, was too busy. Right. He had something to do. Yeah. <laughs> what? His fucking mouth noise is. It's like the... uh, he so didn't disgusting. even structure that story correctly. No. He like said the punchline, and then he came back to the setup, and it's like. John, you're not an interesting guest. You're terrible. It didn't make any sense to me either, though, because he reveals that he was riding around in his car yeah. when he finally got like Kushner and Trump on the phone. Yes. So it's not like he was recording a podcast. No, he was driving call, down the street. He had to call his buddy and three-way him in so that that person could record the call. That's why it sounds like such garbage. But like, what is he doing? Just riding around, like just hitting numbers on his phone, hoping that... Something interesting happens? Well, this is the best part is, and I give Opie a little bit of credit here, because I've documented this call pretty well. It's a a nothing. It sucks. It's a nothing burger. He calls up Trump (laughs) and pretends to be a senator and talk about things that actually a senator would talk to Trump about. It's so boring. Yeah. So Opie... Thankfully, says this. It was and, unbelievable. And then at the end, I just, I, I just said, and a Baba Booey to you all. I just, I put that in, for just for fucking right. But that was it. Why didn't you ask him about? I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. I mean, it was amazing. So it, it, uh, it, trust it, me, I, I yeah. bow to you for get, doing this. But why didn't you ask like about Stormy Daniels or something? Yeah, you know, I should have because he. Yeah. <laughs> so Obi says. Yeah, it's great. You talked to the, to the president. Why didn't you make it funny? Yeah. Why didn't you? No shit, Sherlock. No shit. No shit, Sherlock. No fucking shit, Sherlock. You have Trump on the phone. <laughs> Say something funny. <laughs> well, because, okay. Just so throw it out He there. says he's doing stand-up gigs, right? Somehow yes. he is... Stuttering John the stand-up, uh, yes. Uh, uh, riding Jackie's coattails or something. It seems like they're package dealing yeah. each other because John says, I-, I go there and Jackie's there. And then I, I, yeah. you're in Jackie's here. Yeah, and whatever John just, like, books fucking something running around and, doing something. Yeah. So he's a... "Quote unquote stand-up comedian." Correct. Here's some of John's jokes. Okay. Uh, seven. All right. Yoko Turco. Um, uh, you know, Mossy Turk. That's my name for her because she ruined the show. Really? Uh, so you came up with a name for somebody who ruins a podcast? Why don't you just call her the Stuttering John of Podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you. Again, you're way out of context here. I don't think anyone knows what, you, what just happened here. He's talking about Marcy Turk, yeah. who took over and ruined the Howard Stern show. Right. And he calls her Yoko Turco. Right. It's okay. hilarious. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. If you were just listening to that, would you have any fucking clue what That's, the fuck would just happen? Well, if you listen to this <laughs> show, you would. It's not, it's not a funny joke. It's not a funny joke. Well, that, you, you had as much, you had as much <laughs> context... <laughs> You had as much context That's listening true. to that right now as you had when he said it originally. That's true. So this thing that I do when I have a number, see how it says set up? Yeah. That tells me that I need to explain what's about to happen. <laughs> so people have some fucking clue what they're hearing. You're like, yeah, play track four. Duh, Yoko Turco. What an idiot! <laughs> Okay. Listen, yeah. you don't. Nobody needs explanation that saying Yoko something is that person is bad at something Fair or ruined or ruins a ruined good thing. something. I think I, the Yoko reference means it's you a terrible it. fucking joke. <laughs> Fair enough. Then eight is right. his other awesome one. The whole thing grew grew like a mushroom. I mean, it was yeah. Nobody knew anything. A toadstool. You know, yeah. <laughs> Him chuckling at his own joke. A toadstool? toadstool? Why? Why is that, that like funny? John's attempt at like free association? Oh, it blew up like a mushroom. <laughs> a mushroom. John, and John's like, mushroom, what do I got? What do I got? Pizza. Uh, psychedelics. What's growing in my underwear? Like, well, how does he come up with fucking toadstool? toadstool? And then, and, and Jackie's just like, yeah. yeah. And John's like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, dude? There's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of them laughing at each other to try to make it seem good. Opie does this thing where he tells the same joke twice. He explains that the people who are on this podcast were famous 20 years ago. Yeah. Okay? So he throws out this, if this were 1998, this would be great. He does this joke twice. Yeah. Don't get Jackie yet. No, no, no. We're talking to Stutter John. Let Jackie <laughs> fucking wait. Did you ever hear that? This isn't 1998. Oh, he can shit. wait. <laughs> Me, you, and Jackie. If this was 1998, this would be an amazing lineup for a radio show. <laughs> Here's a tip. 
Opie, if you're going to do the same joke twice, make it 97 the second time. Yeah. So that I don't associate that by having I'm listening to the show and go, oh, I'll make a mental note. Opie told the same joke twice. Yeah. You made it too easy for me. You're making my job easy at this point. Yeah. Also, they were never, they weren't big in 98 either. <laughs> 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 Again, you're like, these are not celebrities. No. <laughs> Cedric Judd, people knew about him in 98. They still didn't give a fuck. No. It's not like it was a big deal. You were a phone screener. So I, I was a tried phone to screener. point out how unfunny John is, but yeah. num- my number nine is how unfunny fucking Opie is, too. So you were bullied by chicks? Yes! <laughs> I have a Me Too moment. <laughs> I have a Me Too moment. You're, you're like Kavanaugh's girlfriend right. in seventh grade. Where's my hashtag? <laughs> no, but, uh, you're a hashtag Me Too? Where's my hashtag? <laughs> John's laugh. <laughs> so John uh, is like uh, uh, not fucking amused. A, it's not funny. It's not funny. It's not Where's what the Me hashtag? Too movement's right. about at all. They're completely off on it. And yep. John is just like desperate to get back to himself. Yes. Carl right. and Opie right. are laughing yes. at shit that's not funny. And John's just like, huh, 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 huh. can we talk about me now? Uh, fucking dickhead. All right. I have an example on here. They decide to go on this thing where they just start telling topical jokes. So first off, Suttering John says the most douchiest thing you could possibly say. He's talking about how many chicks he's sleeping with. Yeah. Which, you know, John is in his 50s. Like, are you still yeah. bragging about sleeping with girls? Yeah, it's <laughs> gross. So gross. And then Opie and Carl start riffing on just something that's topical. Is automatically funny? I, I don't think so, but. At least 200 since the divorce. I just went crazy. Oh, really? Crazy, like two or three a week. They're, I was just on on a roll. Were you pulling a Kavanaugh, or, or was this? That <laughs> no, were you in the no. Devil's Triangle? <laughs> no, 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 no. How no. many were blacked out? <laughs> no, no. I bring pills. I, I bring pills. I was performing in Cosby. <laughs> oh yeah, you Cosby him up. Yeah, Cosby him up. How many did you write in your calendar? <laughs> Oh my God, those jokes were like Hurricane Michael. Uh, Am I right, guys? What the fuck was that? They just said things that are in the news. Was it on your calendar? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> the fuck? It's the Hurricane Michael of podcasts. <laughs> it's deadly. Yeah, that was bad. I, it, I mean, starting John bores people to death. Yes. I got a couple of that. Uh, uh, right? Number five is uh, Opie checks out. Oh, okay. I think I have this one too. You know, you know, they came with us, you know, with the e, the e contracts. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're, they're handing me a note to make. I, 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 whatever. There's stuff going on behind the scenes. I was making sure everything's oh, okay. cool. All right, because I was panicking that we're not uh, getting this recorded right. Oh, okay. So continue. Sorry. So. No, don't. What the fuck? I, I gotta make sure you're paying attention to this super boring story that I'm gonna start telling for the fourth time. Right. What oh. a fucking dick. Like, like he he acts like he's never been in a radio studio. Like, there's not somebody, like, there's shit going on. We're mm-hmm. trying to continue a show. You know, shit might be going wrong. He needs to get a note. He needs to fill the time for him. Instead of calling, are you listening to me? You're 100- Did you hear what I fucking you said? You are 100% correct. What a dick. That's how radio shows go. There's a lot of things yeah. going on. Someone's giving you a note. You're right. checking. You're having a quick side conversation. And fucking John looks at Opie and goes, dude, are you paying attention right now? <laughs> I am saying... I am giving you gold right. right now on this show. You're not listening. That's how, crazy. How dare you big time me? Yeah, no, right. No, I'm not paying attention because this is fucking boring. Yeah. And there's there's another part. Uh, my six is called True Professionals. I, I mentioned how toxic it was. I think the one thing, and Jackie, maybe I'm wrong here, but you know, you know, in speaking for you, oh, he can't hear me. I don't know. Um, what's happening? Where is that? Uh, what's going on? Where did Carl go? Uh-oh. Now Jackie, Uh-oh. there's more notes. Oh, uh, Carl's doing a phone call, and Jackie's in, in oh. here now. So, so Jackie, continue. Like... Half the studio was walked off the show at this point. <laughs> Can we talk about what the setup was? Edit this shit out. Yeah, Joey, that's your holy job is edit the show. Let's talk about the setup of the show. They get there, and it's Carl and Opie, and suddenly John shows up, and they go, "We don't have a chair for you." But they do have a third mic. Right. So now there's there's three microphones, two chairs. Jackie shows up. So now there's three microphones, two chairs, four guys. So Carl eventually gets up and goes, "Dude, take my take my mic. I'm going to I'm going to leave." Now Carl is in a totally different place in the building yeah. and he's called into the show in order to be on the show, 
But this, the engineer didn't pot up his microphone, so you can't even hear him talking. <laughs> yeah. And then Jackie's actually not with them. He, so they can't see each other. For some reason, Jackie's in some other He's area. Like in the, the Robin booth. They yeah, they could go to the Robin booth. Yeah. So nobody's looking at each other. No one knows what's going on. The equipment's malfunctioning. It was unbelievable. And this yet, is a legitimate podcast. And yet these three guys would have you believe that they are A-list celebrities right. that have seen it all and done it all. So I, I only have a couple of clips left. I put together a little compilation okay. of these three guys letting you know how fucking big they are. Okay. So that's my number 12. All right. <laughs> because because everybody's acting all big shoddy in here. So, I mean, me, you, and Jackie, if this was 1998, this would be an amazing lineup. I know what I just said. It's funny. I do have a book coming out. Guy Fieri, because he's coming on my show a lot. You know, Jay Leno has always told me. The whole time that I was there, <laughs> yeah. I, I'd get interviewed. And I was friends with Ralphie. I put him on the stage with me in Pittsburgh. And, and, and Artie was doing my radio show at Sirius at the end. Yeah. And uh, I passed on. I bought a house in Calabasas. Oh, Martin. Lee. You got so lucky, you know, we're jealous. That, and that's money. when you were truly a star, man. Because you had to be a big shot, didn't you? You had to open up your mouth. We fly into uh, L.A. I write my jokes in the town car on the way there. I do the I do the appearance with Jay, and it kills. And uh, and then after the, you know, you know after the... Uh, Segment the exec producer and head writer off of your job. I only canceled because I, I had to do a, I got to do a book signing Thursday. You know, I kept on turning down the Tonight Show. I was headlining in Las Vegas at a huge party upstairs. I had a two four suite. John, how would you like to be the announcer of, of the Tonight Show? They, the show is so great, and you guys are so great. <laughs> Holy shit, that's good. <laughs> Yeah. That's a lot of fucking big timing going I on. That's fantastic. Nice job, oh, Joe. God. Unfortunately, Spotify is going to take off my fucking feed now because we just used uh, copyright <laughs> copywritten music for. <laughs> I thought this. I thought half. this podcast was so fucking small that we could do whatever we want. That's probably true. <laughs> That's probably true. Even though these guys are big deals and big celebrities, they still fish for compliments. This is John. Just needs a compliment. He's talking about what a great job he did when he was on Opie's show a while back. Yeah, no, it was, it was all good. You were very complimentary, and you said, I could do another four hours with you. That's yeah. the first thing you said to oh, me. Oh, yeah, no, it was great. I mean, it was awesome. I was saying all that shit when uh, uh, Eugene Levy and his kid were there, remember? Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, so. You know. <laughs> Can you imagine he's on the show with Opie? He's going, remember when I was at your show a few years ago and Eugene Levy was there and I was making this joke? No. <laughs> Who the fuck does that? <laughs> no, I don't remember you were there, John, because Eugene Levy's kid was right? there yeah. and he was more important than you. <laughs> all right. I, I want to play. This is another thing that Sonny John talks about all the time. He's all butthurt about how Howard Stern treated him. Yeah. And he brings up this bit that Howard Stern did on the air where he, Howard says... When, his, when John's wife was pregnant, he says, your wife should have an abortion, which is a joke on the radio, mm -hmm. right? This is uh, John still bringing that up. It still pains him. Like, if, like he told me on the air to abort my kid when, when my wife was pregnant because I'm not fit to be a father. <laughs> Pretty good joke. I don't know why John's still upset about that. Yeah, a lot make any of it, sense to me. Yeah, a lot of it is about the way they got treated at Stern. Jackie and yes. John are always bitching about how yes. they didn't get paid enough. It right. comes out over and over. And I, my three, I called money grubbing. They have a, a little bit where they reminisce about their Christmas bonus. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah this is great. You gave me a canister with fucking popcorn in it for Christmas. And he goes, oh, well, that was Alice. And I go, I stuck my arm in there looking for a check. <laughs> you fucking... It's, like, they're just fucking desperate. They're, they're worth so, all this money. Like, what they're doing, yes. like, deserves to be rewarded. I, I will the... tell you that I do have a specific stance on this. If you feel like you should make more money, prove it and go make more money. Right. That's how the world works. That's how the economy works. Right. 
So when Howard doesn't pay these people a lot of money and says, well, if you can go make more money, then, then go do it. Just go start your Jackie, own show. Jackie goes, okay, guess what? He's never made as much money exactly. as he did when he was at Howard Stern's show. So, He's lost a shit ton of money by leaving that show. So Howard was right. He right. didn't deserve that right. much. Oh, stay where you are. Th these guys have absolutely... John fucking is like, oh, I started it as an intern there when I was 22. Right. Because Mitch Faith Hale, like got him the job Correct. there. Yes. This is somebody who never had to work a fucking day in his life and got fucking skated by because he stutters. And they, he just fell into this fucking job. No, 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 no. You forget that he was he was getting A's in college. He would have been a celebrity <laughs> either way. Bullshit. <laughs> but listen to me, Artie. So he went play, to college? Play my, play, play my 10, and that's my last one. And, okay. uh, Cow it? No, I'll, after. I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say. When you left Howard, how much money were you making a year? Well, uh, 85000 a year. I mean, it was. I a, mean, eighty five thousand is a nice life, but I mean, that's. Well, but no, consider it. No, but, yeah, but hold that, on. I'm but, gonna, I, taxes are going to be taken. No, out I understand of that all yet. that, but yeah. no, taxes are going to be. Fuck <laughs> you. First of all, if you let, let's just if with inflation right now, just for everybody who's listening right now, if, the if 90s you don't know, or this is early two thousand. Yeah, yeah. Right? So eighty five thousand back then would be the equivalent of a hundred and thirty one thousand six figures. You would have been making Look at a you. six doing figure salary. Shit. What are you an economist? I looked it up. I, I put it in a calculator, <laughs> <laughs> but I I looked it up. But I what m people may not know yeah. uh, if you work in radio or mm. TV or anything, these are low paying jobs mostly because. Everybody wants to do it, right. and so it's a saturated market. And if you if you don't like the money, you leave. And there's a college kid right. who will slip right in and do the job that you're doing Tell for supply and less demand money. Works is exactly, exactly right. The, you the job that John was doing on the Howard Stern show would have been the equivalent if you were doing it in a smaller market, thirty thousand. Yeah. Now there's. there's no joke, a million people who would take that job in a heartbeat yeah, right, exactly. if he's not there. And he was making six figures, and it wasn't fucking good enough for him. However, New York City six figures. Yeah. Which means his rent was 60000 a year, so 85000 is not impressive <laughs> yeah. in New York City. I, know, I hear what you're saying. I never begrudged him for leaving, though, right. because if, yeah, you're going to be the, A, I don't, Jay Leno's a fucking moron for ever picking him up as the announcer for The right. Tonight Show. That is absolutely ridiculous. I don't blame him for leaving. <laughs> right. it's, it's an incredible fucking opportunity for yes. him. I didn't blame him for leaving. But to be bitching about the amount of money that you were making then, that guy, all you did was read other people's jokes to yes. celebrities, yeah. and you think you should be making what? A yeah. Half a mil? It was also a phone screener, like you said. Right. Like, what was he doing? People doing that job for nothing. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. People do that. For Wolfie free. is doing that now. I don't know he's intern, making any money. College <laughs> interns get school credit to do that. You are making eighty-five grand. Right? Yeah. Fuck you, dude. I'm with you on that. Let's talk about Opie for a second. Eh. We're not talking about Opie. We're talking about stuttering John mm. and Jackie too much. Mm -hmm. Opie does this thing, and I pointed this out before. He's terrible at a political conversation. He should just avoid it. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about politics, and this is what I call Ope on politics. Well, that's that's where I'm. I'm definitely different than your politics. I I don't believe in either side. Yeah. I think they're all uh, <clears throat> playing games and they're all uh, uh, full of shit. Well, yeah, full of shit. Dynamite drop in money. That broadcast school has really paid off. So Opie <laughs> has an amazing point of view that politicians are all assholes, right or left. Like, right. Oh, okay. Good one, Fresh Opie. Take. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys, that's, that's an amazing take. Who would possibly say that? And then in part two, he brings up politics again, but this time he is driving this conversation into the ground. Well, well, you, go, go. You, br you bring up something there, though. There was a time where if your friend uh, didn't line up with you politically, you, you still got along with each other. Yeah, of course. I, I That's not the case anymore. No, no. It's like it, it's an all out war. It is. It's it's the country is completely split in two. But he has supposedly three comedians on the show with him. And he starts talking about how, yeah, we were divided as a country. What are they supposed to do with that? <laughs> Maybe that's why Jim Norton wasn't laughing at your jokes. There's nothing you could do with that, Opie. You've just you've ended the conversation. Everyone just goes, yeah, it sucks. <sighs> anyway, mm -hmm. never tell you about the time that Howard uh, got me a Christmas gift? Like, fuck! <laughs> Opie, what are we going to... That has No one can relate to this conversation. No. It goes nowhere. Mm -hmm. and it's not even accurate. It's not like people that have different points of views can't be in the same room together. 
It's not. It's not accurate. Joe's, I know this whole thing. Joe's a cucked out libtard snowflake, and I'm an <laughs> alt right Republican, and we still get along. I didn't know that about you too. <laughs> that's what everybody says, right? That we're alt right on this show. I think so. I think that's people's <laughs> take on it. This is Stuttering John again. Cannot wait to talk about his amazing achievement of talking to the president. I guess you guys. Uh, Did you hear about that, Opie? What? I did it when I pranked the president. Oh, no, I want to talk about that. <laughs> did you hear about that? You won't shut the fuck up oh about it. God. We've all heard about it. Did you hear what I said? It. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear what I said? I was going to come in here and read Wikipedia. Just <laughs> 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 and it's definitely on the Stuttering John Wikipedia. It's the last thing on there. It's like a whole page about how he pranked the president. Like, uh, let me give Stuttering John some advice. I know he's listening. John, I was once on the Anthony Cumia show, but I don't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not bringing it up every episode as if it's a big deal. It's not a big deal. Just move on. You talk to the president. Whatever. You should probably put it in the intro of your show. <laughs> One of these podcasts, they do a show about shows. It's hilarious. The show is hilarious. All right, so Anthony Cumia talked about us a few times. Whatever. I don't bring it up. It's not a big deal. John should play the prank call at the beginning of every episode of his podcast. Yeah. Said, uh, he might. He should Would play. anyone know if a fucking tree fell in the woods? Would anyone know what John's doing on his podcast? I don't. You should play him saying Baba Booey to the president at the beginning of oh, every show. so mm-hmm. fucking lame. He doesn't even pronounce it right. Boo, 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 do you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Alright, this is them talking to Jackie and Opie is shocked that Howard wouldn't have Jackie back as a guest. For the fans, I, but why, but I mean, the, but the fans would love to hear what you guys are up to, and it would be amazing radio. It's so weird to me that he just doesn't want to go down that fucking road. All right, how many times has Jackie been a guest on Howard since he left the show? Several, a dozen. I, I don't even know. I, I, He's been on the show many, many, many times. times, and Howard threw him the world's biggest bone and let him have a radio show on Howard right. One. Yeah, yeah, the it, Joe Cunt, get it? Yeah, Joe oh, Cunt. Oh my God. I, that's another thing I learned reading <laughs> reading Wikipedia that Howard took care of him when he really didn't have to. And he didn't. He did have him on the air of every once in a while. This was the Artie Lang era when Howard was doing amazingly well on Terrestrial. He went to to satellite, brought over millions of subscribers. Artie Lang was killing it. Nobody was pining for Jackie the Joke Man at that point. Do you remember that? No. I mean, you guys are yeah, Howard yeah. fans. Yeah. At that point, I didn't have a conversation with anyone who was like, well, they had to bring Jackie back. And I was like, it's so much better now. Right, that show's right. amazing. Yeah. And meanwhile, you're exactly right. Howard's like, he would have had him on as a guest. Hey, Jack, what's going on? What are you pity. doing? It was a fucking pity play, yeah. for sure. It would have been amazing radio. I want to um, dissect Opie on this little bit. He gets... Opie does this thing where he stutters a lot, and he's not sure what to do with himself. And I have an analysis of this, but listen to this. He says, I got to say this, and then he says nothing. You know? I got to... I got to say this about... I I, am, uh, I don't want to, but I... I, I, I I'll, I'll say this. So... I mean, but if you're hanging out with him having dinner, that's the real guy, don't you think? And then when the mics are on, he's trying to perform and well, put, I, a sh- uh, put a show on for people. Now, you know, it, uh, you know. And- <laughs> what was that? He goes, I got to say this. I got it. Oh, I don't know if I want to say this. I, no, I got to say this. When Howard would hang out with you and, you know, just going to dinner and stuff, that was the real Howard, right? And I was thinking about this. I'm like, What is Opie? What was he afraid to say? What was he trying to say? Hmm. He was thinking that Stuttering John was going to say the Howard Stern that I went to dinner with was the real Howard Stern. The guy on the radio was playing a character. And John said the opposite of that. John said, no, no, no. The guy that I went to dinner with was acting nice to me because he's a pussy. The real Howard Stern was the guy on the radio telling my wife to get an abortion. (laughs) So Opie, I think what he was going to say was that I used to play a character on the radio. I pretended to be someone I'm not. Because I wanted to be interesting and compelling, and I was Opie the Destroyer, and that's not really who I am. And then he stopped himself because the whole point of this talk radio thing is that you have to be real, mm. or else who gives a shit? Yeah. If you're playing a character, if you're just acting, why am I listening to your show? I think that's where Opie was in his head when he said, I gotta say that, I, I, well, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I gotta say it. Uh, and then he doesn't say anything. Yeah. I think that's where he was going with mm. that. Yeah. That's eh, just my Quite opinion. possibly. Who knows? What do I know? <laughs> Let's talk about Opie being terrible at the um, commercial reads. Oh, God. This yeah. is him talking about this thing called Talkspace, 
which is a ridiculous fucking product. You have a psychologist or a psychiatrist that you can text with, yeah. <laughs> a virtual psychologist or shrink or something. But listen to how Opie reads this. Everything's at a 10. This is not a conversational read in any single way. Can't imagine fitting anything else into your life well. With Talkspace, therapy is as easy as sending your therapist a message. Get something off your chest whenever you need to. Talk about everyday challenges at work or at home. Just chat about life. There are no extra commutes, no leaving the office, and no judgments. Jesus Christ. Is, that, is he having an allergic reaction and his tongue is swelling? It sounds like he went to the Voss fucking <laughs> school of announcing. They did, they did, uh, here's here's great a, here's thing, <laughs> It's crazy that he can't just read like a normal human being. He's been a professional broadcaster for 25 years. He gets some copy in front of him and he goes, Rod, you want to know the most amazing thing that's ever been invented? It's talk space. I can't believe you're not using talk space right now. I'm using it. I'm texting right now as I'm talking I'm about talk it's, space. It's talk space. <laughs> uh, I did put together a, a super cut of the, the quip ad in the uh, second okay. episode. Yep. These are the highlight. I, it's like a minute and a half of bullshit. Yes. It sounds bad, but there is some... Uh, outstanding parts that I, I strung together. This is the, the Quip Supercut. It looks cool. It has no charger. It's really nice and compact. And so... You're like, oh, it's time to change my brush head on my Quip. Oh, I love my Quip. He's talking about a toothbrush. What the fuck kind of read is that? I know. I know it's how so... What? <laughs> I know how I'll really bring the listener in. I'll go and record this in, in my the, bathroom. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think he was in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Oh, let me play you the setup to that, because this is so frustrating to me. So this is the guy Joey, who's the producer, or does the post-production. I don't know what the fuck his job is. Yeah. But he's the guy who they, they talk to on the show. Oh, Joey's going to take this part they out. They blame him for in. everything. No, that's the cop that they blame for <laughs> shit. Mike, yeah. But, yeah, and this is after the where he explains why the show sucks. Right. That he's like, I got, I got to save this. I better bring in my fucking kid. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's exactly the- right. So, so Joey says, yeah, for some reason, the, the guy who's who's running the board didn't bring Carl's mic up. And then he does this bit that's out of fucking nowhere. Greg, where are you? Obi went to the bathroom, Dad. Bathroom? What's he doing in the bathroom? He's got a new toothbrush. I think he's brushing his teeth. Oh, all right. Thanks. How'd you get on this podcast, Roman? I have an iPad and internet. Seriously? How'd you get on here? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. I'm going to pause it right there. <laughs> How is that a funny bit? And anyway, this guy just wanted to have his kid on the show. I guess. I don't know. It's, it's That's a, not funny or fun. No one's having fun with that. Completely off the rails. Was he watching his kid go to the bathroom? Probably. <laughs> I, I know there's like a, a toilet flushing. It's so hacky Didn't radio. Didn't like John ass. and Opie both complain that people went after their kids, like yes. and this thing. And then this guy brings his kid on. Like I don't know. I I won't go after his kid because I want to just shred this whole thing. But uh, that was ridiculous. It's, I'll just say so that was silly. ridiculous. All right. So then, so this all of a sudden now uh, goes into that live read that Anthony had the super cut of, or Andy had the super cut of, but. I just have to play this for you because this is so confusing to me. Hmm. All right, here's Greg from the bathroom. Getquip.com slash Opie. I love my electric toothbrush from Quip. I got to tell you, it's sleek. It looks cool. It has no charger. As soon as I got my Quip in the mail, I threw my old electric toothbrush right in the garbage with Quip. It uh, charges with one single A battery, so it's really nice. All right. And sweet. <laughs> Here's my question, guys. He's talking about an elect- electronic toothbrush. Yep. He says it charges with a battery. That's not charging. It's running off. It's the battery. opposite of charging, right? <laughs> and then he says with a single A battery. I've never owned an A battery in my life. There's double A and triple A. What's a single A battery? Do you guys even know what that is? No. I mean, I'm sure it's a fig. I've never heard of it. it I've never owned one. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. You can get a single A battery. I'd rather just plug it into the wall. I have an outlet so, in my bathroom. So what you're saying I is because you it. never heard of it, it doesn't exist? Is that what you're saying? I'm asking you! <laughs> is this a thing? All right. This is another thing. As we're talking about these cheesy production moments where they're doing a podcast, but then they're also 
teetering on like a morning zoo. At the end of part one, they go into this thing where they read off people who followed the show on Twitter. Oh, I stopped. This I is stopped the, listening. This is follow the backs. follow back yeah. segment. Opie Radio Followbacks. So let's look out into our magic window and give a great big Opie Radio Followback to the following. At Girthy Mac. At Ben underscore Marsh. At Nando Orlando 55. At Jizu 74 J-E-Z-O-O. What is going on here? This is a weird element to the show because it reminds me of the show we did last week. Killers, cults, and nut jobs. Right. Where for 30% of the show, he's just reading people's names. The Patreon. Who've acknowledged you know, him. People. It wasn't even Patreon because they didn't make four bucks a month. Uh, I don't know what this was. Right. Uh, but then this show has the cheesy, over the top morning zoo production where it's going right and then left <laughs> yeah, and it's right and, it's like people, back and, forth. and there's like a crowd cheering yeah. and it doesn't make any sense. He's just reading off Twitter handles. Yeah. And they're like, follow these people because they follow us. Like, no. No. Uh, I won't follow any some, of these people. I'll give you some free focus group feedback. I turned the show off at that point. Yeah. Was, I was done. What a even, weird thing to even do. Even when like I'm supposed to be listening to it to pull clips and like say this is fucking stupid. You had a job I still, to do. I still, still turned it off. <laughs> oh my god, I still have more to get to, guys. Do you have more clips to, to talk about? I, I don't know. Do you want to hear Opie react to the stuttering John stutter that fucking everyone's heard a billion times? Oh, and, right. Yeah, and, they act like this is I, the funniest thing. It's like, we're all over this. This yeah. is 1996. And Opie acts like he about. never heard it before. Okay. And John, <laughs> John keeps telling everyone, oh, it's okay to laugh. Yeah. I'll laugh if I want. It's the only thing you do right. that pe- makes people laugh. Your name is Stuttering John. Yeah. You don't have to give people to permission why you're famous. to laugh in your face that you can't talk. To That's why you're all famous. anybody's ever done to, for you, to you. What? That's all you ever give. <laughs> Ralphie had said yeah. it's okay to laugh it's okay to laugh that's what my therapist always did that's a but, beast yeah no but, a motherfucker but, so Ralphie had so he had like you know goofed to me on stage at the Tempe Sorry. Improv it's Sorry. okay Sorry. it's okay and he's a pal like a acts like he never heard it before right. and then apologizes for laughing in his face over right. it I'm like what the fuck is this mm, yeah yeah that was weird it's stupid. Another thing that Opie does is he loves to interrupt people. This is so classic Opie. He asks a question and then doesn't let them answer. I'm going to go in a different direction with this now because, uh, you know, Howard Stern show, the Opie and Anthony show, you know, we were pretty big as well. Like the toxicity. It sounds like you guys uh, didn't oh, escape yeah. that. It, it sounded like your environment was extremely toxic as yeah. well. And I want to ask both of you guys that. Uh, why do you think that is? Because you know, in our world, we had plenty of money. All... <laughs> Holy shit, Opie. This was a guy who was on a panel at a podcasting convention and talked about interviewing people and how good he was at it. <laughs> oh, I'm really good at interviewing people. You just asked a long question where you complimented yourself and then interrupted people as soon as they started to talk. Andy, I don't know. What do you think about that clip? I... Well, the problem with that clip is... <laughs> what the fuck is that? That's not a good interviewing technique. I only got one left that, uh, this is Howard Stern big times, Opie. Okay. So then it, that happened a couple more times because he would come out of the uh, freight elevator. It was the only way, you know, he couldn't avoid me. I couldn't avoid him. Next thing you know, I find out that the Sirius XM is shutting down the hallways. Yeah. And and after I, I asked the right people, they go, it's absolutely because of you. He doesn't want to fucking deal with you. So. Yes. <laughs> that makes all of us. He doesn't want to deal Opie with you. He said hi to Howard, and Howard's like, we got to change Shut this. Down the building. <laughs> I never want to see this asshole again. And then Opie goes on to explain how they changed the rules of how they're able to walk around the building. Yeah. And Opie, this is, again, a, I don't know how well you guys know Opie, but this is such a classic thing. He was always into creating viral videos. So he was always at his phone now, like, this video's going to go viral, man. Listen to this clip. Next thing you know, I find out that the Sirius XM is shutting down the hallways. Yeah. And and after I, I asked the right people, they go, it's absolutely because of you. He doesn't want to fucking deal with you. So in the elevator banks, you know where that is? And then the glass, I would have to sit out there. The, the, the video's on my YouTube channel. We could put it in the description of this podcast, whatever. But it, it's done incredibly well. I had a wait. He <laughs> says his video's done incredibly well. The video he took on his phone? Yeah, the video of this new situation at the, at the building. It's done incredibly well. Obi, you're trying to get viral videos still? I thought you were a celebrity. 
That's what you're worried about is YouTube views? Oh my god. That's what I'm worried about. Here's an incredibly well done video of me behind a glass wall filming Howard Stern walk by right. without saying a word yeah. to me. Well, it's well, done incredibly well. It's done <laughs> right incredibly well. driver giving me the finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I want to play uh, a couple other things real quick. Jackie the Joke Man is talking to Carl Ruiz, who's a Cuban. Do you guys know that he's a Cuban? F, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's mentioned this many times. Yes. And Jackie asked... It's in his nickname. Or no, Stuttering John asked him what nationality he was. Yeah, right. right. He asked, is a Cuban. But Jackie wasn't there when that happened. <laughs> so Jackie doesn't know the difference between Cubans and Mexicans. He apologizes... To Carl for doing a Mexican joke. Jesus. I said, if you're, no offense, wow. uh, Carl, but That's if you're insane. a Mexican standing on the fucking, <laughs> if you're a Mexican on the corner with a shovel and they pick you up to go pick lettuce, right. you make more than $25,000 a I year. Would. Dude, the offensive part was not the joke. It was thinking that a Cuban and a Mexican is the same person. <laughs> yeah. They're wildly different. And later on in part two, I, I didn't get this clip because I just fucking ran out of time. Jackie starts talking about spicy food he's like carl you know about this but it's like all the peppers and the hot sauce like that's not what cuban food is at all that's mexican food <laughs> cuban food is very different than that he's a stupid old racist he's a, a stupid old tells a holocaust joke at the end of the first one too <laughs> yeah he, no he's stupidly proud about oh i spread it around i do a jew joke and then right. i do a black joke yeah. and then i mix which up is, cubans and mexicans which and is then I fine about, you know mentally challenged people i spread it around i don't care about any of those things what i find to be hilarious is that he doesn't know the difference between mexicans and cubans yeah he's that's idiot. surprising to me like you this is, these countries have been around his entire life. The bit is that he doesn't care. Do. No, the bit is that he, do, he honestly doesn't know the difference. Yeah. He's not doing a joke there. If that was the joke, I would have been in on it. He was, That was not a joke. <laughs> At the end of part one, they tease part two, which is so fucking weird. Again, this is getting into this weird radio morning zoo production value thing where they replay parts from the show you just heard. Remember... This is not a radio show where it's an hour and a half and maybe I listened to 15 minutes in the beginning because I was on my commute. This is a podcast we've all listened to. They play a clip from that and then they tease the next episode and make the most hackiest fucking joke. And stuttering John Melendez. I stutter on ours. That poor bastard must have a heck of a time on Talk Like a Pirate Day. <laughs> Ralphie had said that. <laughs> yeah. He can't say ours. He goes, oh, talk like a pirate day. He's got to be a bitch for this guy. Is it? Is your son writing these jokes? Yeah. <laughs> From Roman, the, write me a joke. What the fuck is uh, going Roman, on? Roman, are you done on the toilet? Flush and write me a joke. All right, I have one more clip that I want to play. If there's anything else you guys want to play, we can do that. I know it's a marathon. You, you only have one more clip? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we don't have like a half an hour on the, the Brother Wee's section of this? I, we could. We I could mean, talk I, about I it. I clipped it, but I was just like, oh, do we, we really want to? Just, it? just whoever, whoever. funny about it. Yeah, I just no, want to say. I just want to say, whoever uh, likes to send Brother Wheeze all of yes. all of the clips from this show, yeah. that Wheeze was talked about the, on this show fairly extensively, and we left it alone. So yeah, it's, it's just not, I mean, there's so much to talk about. Just I didn't find it interesting. Yeah, and I don't think our listeners care about Wheeze. Yeah. Weez is not interested. Somebody does because they one person does salaciously. One person does trying to get me in trouble with this fucking guy and whatever. I want to talk about the fact that Opie has mentioned many times. Anthony and Jim talk shit about him, and Opie says, "Well, these guys have nothing else to talk about, so that's why they make fun of me. I do it my own show. I don't have to talk about these guys. I take the high road, right? This is him again saying this. I try to I try to take the high road as much as I can. All right." Let's talk about Opie taking the high road. Definitely does not. Here is Opie taking the high road on Anthony and Jim, who, those guys are obsessed with me. I never talk about them. Uh, Jim Norton's a pussy. I mean, yeah, he, no, he, he really say, is a pussy. Because, he was, so. But he just stayed for the money? Absolutely. And the fact that it was a huge audience. He would he would spit on the floor if his uh, breakfast was wrong. It oh, was, really? It was insane. Anthony was a drunk. He wasn't a drug addict, was he? I don't he? know what the... I'm, oh, I'm, no, I'm, I no, I didn't know. No, I didn't know. I Listen, I, I, I didn't listen to you guys. I, then. I, you know, I, was, I was busy doing <laughs> Howard's show. I didn't know that he was a... He was a you know. it's, oh, whatever. Whatever. 
I'm trying to, trust me, you're, you're trying to fucking get me going. Anthony, you know, party, let's say. And, yeah. and it, it, it got in the way with the uh, of the radio show. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah. calling in uh, sick or late or not oh, showing okay. up yeah, so yeah, many yeah. fucking times. <laughs> yeah. He's falling asleep on the air. Even the staff that was really on his side would get frustrated because, you know, 6 o'clock or, or when we were starting at 7, sometimes right around 6 or 7 in the morning, we we still weren't sure if he was going to make it. Oh, see, I know. You're no fucking treat. I hear the show is and doing that great. Way to take the high road, LP. Yeah. Nailed it. That's exactly how you do that. Holy shit. Yeah. Some serious shit talking. I'm not going to throw you under the bus, Carl, and tell everybody that you steal your mother in law's social security check. <laughs> I mean, I'm taking the high road. Exactly. Um, the other thing that Opie says, I didn't clip it, but it's just so funny to me. You know, every time Opie talks shit about people he used to work with, he has to fess up to some ownership because he knows he was a shithead. Yeah. So he says, Listen, I, I used to have an anger problem. I've addressed that. I've taken care of it. He's taken care of his anger problem. Does this sound to you guys like he's taken care of this? No. Like he's fixed? He's figured this out? Very angry. And everybody that's ever known him. Well, in that case, I want to bring up the fact that we did a show last week where we reviewed Opie talking to Stuttering John and Jackie the mm, Joke Man. Yeah. And on Twitter, we get these people who want to stir up shit and get things going. It's not something I'm a huge fan of, but somebody messaged Stuttering John and Opie that, hey, these guys are talking shit about you. So Stuttering John tweeted out, I think talking about me, he needs attention. So my next podcast will be annihilating these idiots personally. And then uh, some guy named Asshole writes, these nobodies trying to get famous from you guys. And then Stuttering John replies, I know, but I know about their lives and criminal records. I will destroy them. Huh? So he's throwing it out there that he's going to talk about us on the next podcast and annihilate us and destroy us. And God damn it, Jen, it worked. I listened to his fucking podcast. Uh, he got me. Such a sucker. I am such an idiot. I want to hear more about your criminal record. I know. Wow. <laughs> we'll save that for another day. So I'm, I listen to the show. It starts off. With Stuttering John setting up the show. He's going to be talking to this guy, AJ Benza. And then at the end, he's going to be answering questions from Twitter. So I listen to the beginning and I listen to the end, thinking that this thing might get brought up because this is his next show. This is the first tweet that he reads at the end. I'm, I'm going to just read a few tweets and then we'll get out of here. Trump's butthole uh, at Butt Trump's. What do you think Trump's butthole looks like? An exploded balloon or a ripped up piece of liver? I don't, you know what? I don't want to think about what Trump's butthole looks like. Then why did you read the question? That's a I stupid question. Uh, how many tweets is this guy looking at? He's picking from, I'm guessing, four in order to read three questions. Why would he even... Like, fuck, I thought they were actually going to be talking about things. And you're talking about a tweet from Trump's butthole. In the beginning... <laughs> I know, it's so disappointing. He doesn't even know how to be compelling. No. He has no idea how to make himself interesting. He talks about how he's excited to have A.J. Benz on the show, and he pulls a total opie with this one. I will start the show that, to say that I'm going to have my old buddy, my old slapperoonie. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is a slapperoonie? Slapperoonie. Yeah. Slapperoonie. <laughs> oh, I got, I got the new ISO here on the board. Slapperoonie. For all the cuzaroos and slapperoonies out there. Cuz. Cuzaroo. Slapperoonie. Cuzaroo. Slap a Rooney. That's great. Oh, shit. All right. So I'm listening to Stuttering John's podcast. I'm one of the few people in the world who can say that they've done this. The last time I listened to his show was back in June with Kevin when we reviewed his show. And it was just him. And he was going on and on about all of his accomplishments. This was back in June. It's now October. I'm listening to his show again. Holy shit. He's still fucking talking about it. It's unbelievable. And I, I worked on The Tonight Show. I made it to the last day mm -hmm. of Jay Leno's tenure, yeah. 10 years. I, you know, I, I produced you know, the Stephanie Mill show. I worked in this business. I, I was head writer for the Kareem Abdul-Jabbaros. <laughs> he still can't say Kareem <laughs> Abdul-Jabbar. He has not been working on that. He could not say that word. And this is interesting, too. Stuttering John considers himself a comedian. He does? Yes. Oh. He's a stand-up. And he tries to make a joke. He doesn't like Trump. He's, he's a big anti-Trump guy. Okay. He tries to make a joke here about Trump. And then he ripped Avenatti and Stormy Daniels and called Stormy Daniels a horse face. And if uh. anybody knows 
uh, you know, about horses. It's Donald Trump's. He's, he's a horse's ass. And, and but could you believe? I mean, home those... run, call me a home run. <laughs> that sounded like a Bobo joke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the joke was not funny, but also terrible delivery because he's stuttering and he's stammering. It, you know, it, it, Trump should know about who the horse is because. And then he has the fucking balls later on in the same episode. To say this about Artie Lang. Brian and Doug Goodstein both told me that they saw me and they saw Artie and I blow Artie away. And I do. Artie can barely talk at this point. But, um... You're calling out <laughs> Artie Lang for not being able to talk? You stuttering retard? Oh, man. That's unbelievable. That is... That is ballsy. That is ballsy. Uh, and then, because Stuttering John is so hilarious, he has to read tweets that he put out that were hilarious to remind you how hilarious he is. This is him trolling the first lady. You know, what I tweeted, it was like, here, you know, you know, I said, hey, Melania, how's that anti-bullying campaign doing after your husband just called the woman a horse face? I mean, really, what is Melania? She's got, I mean. Good one. <laughs> He's so uncomfortable when he ends his punchline, he has to immediately start talking again because he knows it landed flat. You notice that every single time because he's he's a horse's ass, but uh, you know, uh, but uh, I'm glad you listen to these so I don't have to. Seriously, it's ridiculous. He talks about how his book is being delayed, which we covered on the last show that we did. Yes, I, yes. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you a couple other things about this show. I don't want to get too deep into this, but it's funny because he's booked a book release party event thing. Where? Out in California. Oh, okay. He lives out in L.A. still, I think. So he he booked this event, and this is very telling. They're talking about getting celebrities to come to it, and whoever the co-host is on the show speaks up and talks about how, oh, I actually happened to see some of the DMs that were going back and forth with some of the celebrities that you asked. I saw that you were, like, you know, talking to some people on Twitter. Yeah. Like, offline, like, on the DMs. Yeah. And, like, it's amazing some of the responses people give you. What? Like, what? I don't know if you want me to put people on blast, but it's just like, yeah, man, sorry, can't make it, exclamation mark. And it's like, you sound way too excited about not yeah. being able to make it. <laughs> uh, Pat Oswalt. Yeah, okay, you said it. Like, yeah, Pat Oswalt. <laughs> like, what a dick, Pat. Like, really, dude? Come on. Like, Well, well, listen, at least he responded. That's hilarious. Aww. So Pat Oswalt writes back. He goes, can't make it, dude. Big isolation for It's like, fuck you. I don't give a shit about Stuttering John. And Stuttering John goes, well, at least he responded. Huh. All the other celebrities that he reached out to, I'm sure he shook all these people's hands when he was on The Tonight Show. They don't care about John. No. John's not a celebrity anymore. He's not important in any way. No. So he talks about why his book was delayed. And, you know, he and I, we had a lot of editing to do because we had to take some stuff out. The lawyers came back with stuff to take out. We had to change names. And then, you know, when Guy removed one section, he accidentally removed the whole Trump phone call section. Why would I want to buy this book? He's explaining, as he's promoting the book, the lawyers got it. We had to take all this shit out. I had to change people's names. Why would I possibly... But guess what part is in it? The Trump phone call. Holy fuck, I know about the Trump phone call. John, we all know about your Trump phone call. Well, I was going to ask if you were going to go get his book, but now I think I know the answer to that. I'm not going to get his book. <laughs> How many pages do you think it's going to be? Like seven? Well, if he writes the way he talks, it's going to be 362 pages. <laughs> Listen to this. I don't even understand why this is possible that an author would be the one responsible for editing their own book. It was. We all collectively... Screwed up. I, I didn't read it cl close enough to catch a few spelling errors and grammatical errors. I know that guy and his proofreaders did, and he had two other people. But when I went in to do the audio book, mm -hmm. there was, like, tons of mistakes. Yeah. He was supposed to catch his own spelling errors? That's not how writing a book goes. No, you're supposed to have an editor do that. Editors do Copy that. Editor. Whatever company he's working with is proofreaders. not doing a great job. Uh, all right, last clip I want to play. This is just how delusional John is. This is for real. John thinks this is true in his head. <laughs> uh, what do you consider your best bit in the Stern Show? There was a lot, but I vote for the Jennifer Flowers press conference. That goes up there because I think I single-handedly saved Bill Clinton's election because I made a mockery of Jennifer Flowers. And 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 I, I'm telling you, that was and even in the papers yeah. they said that. He is so delusional. That is so scary. That's crazy. <laughs> that is Google crazy.
Who was Bill Clinton running against in that election? I'm talking about Bob Dole? Uh, maybe. Are we talking? It was either Bob Dole or it was George W. or George Bush Sr. There was no way Clinton wasn't going to win that election. Yeah. Is he fucking retarded? He I mean, the, he is. He retarded. had it in the bag, that guy. He thought for sure that he's the reason why. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And he's still he's still going on about how he used to know Trump and going on and on with his Trump stories. I used to like Donald Trump. Sure. I mean, Donald Trump was a nice guy to me. And then, you know, and and he gave me real estate advice and he and, and he took me out to lunch and I flew on his helicopter. Holy shit. You know where I've heard all of that before? Where? Every other place John talks on any other show. It's all he talks about. It's like we get it, John. He, he also needs to back off the mic a little. That slushy thing in my ear just now was a little nauseating. Oh. You know, it's unbelievable to me. I've had people just say, you know, you can just do Opie and, and Stuttering John and Rich Voss and Maddox. Like, yeah, we could just do these shows over and over. They keep putting out more content that is terrible. This is the beginning of Stuttering John calling out other people. He's calling out uh, Tim Conway Jr. here. But Tim Conway, you suck. You suck and you're a coward. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're not even a man. You're a cockroach. You're the piece of gum on the bottom of my shoe. You're the hemorrhoid on the on on the tip of my asshole. This this banter <laughs> wouldn't win in a schoolyard fight. No. Like, this is not this is not good banter. He's not a he's not a roast master with this. Yeah, you're like a, a piece of gum on a Carl, shoe. Carl. Carl, didn't he write for Kramer? <laughs> he was the head writer for Kramer. Uh, all right. Um, apparently, the Sabres are doing very well right now, and I'm missing all of it. What's the score? I I just got a text from a friend who says it was like they got like seven goals or something. I don't know. Here is John talking about Jimmy Kimmel, and he's explaining that he's making fun of these people in his book. I do trash Jimmy Kimmel because he has Love Me Howard fucking, you know, uh, you know, problem. He's got to, you know, do whatever Howard, what he thinks Howard wants him to do. And I, sure. and I, of course, chant, uh, trash the bitch known as Chelsea Handler. And I do tell a few stories about Kathy Griffin, but. All right, so he's throwing everyone under the bus because, of course, Sonny John is is the funniest person. All these people suck. Jimmy Kimmel, how was that guy popular? He's the worst. <laughs> this is a clip that I call "Making Friends." Daniel Tosh is also a little bit of a snobby guy. When he was on the on the Stone Chase, he's not a really, you know, he, he you know he's one of those like guys that would fit in with the Patton Oswalt's of the world and the you know and the. And the Louis C.K.'s, like the very pompous. Oh, so he's a prick. Yeah, the very pompous, like the, yeah. uh, Bob Smigel, that old kind of group. Very douchey. Oh, so he's a son of a bitch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> really funny people. You mean yeah, like, all these professional comedians who are good at their jobs. I mean, I'll, I'll give him credit. He's punching up. I'll give him credit on that. But Jesus Christ, John. So they start ripping <laughs> on Daniel Tosh and his co-host, whoever the fuck this nobody is explains that Tosh is not a celebrity. But that's my other uh, big issue, my celebrity issue with, uh, with so, so we covered Tim Conway, well, I wouldn't call Tim Conway Jr. a celebrity, but I mean. No, he, but he, I wouldn't call Tosh he, one either. Gavin, you didn't know who Lenny Marcus was, obviously. Do you know who Daniel I Tosh is? I do. Okay, we can go there. Do you I know do. why you know who he is? Because he's famous. Because he's a celebrity. <laughs> Daniel Tosh is definitely a celebrity. His show's been on the air for a decade. It's very popular. And then because they, he's funnier than Stuttering John. They go on to explain that Daniel Tosh is just a curator of content. He doesn't have actual content on his own. You play videos and you make fucking, you know, fuck you, you fucking twit. And so what? You have more money than me. He's Who a, doesn't? He's a human Huffington Post. He's just an <laughs> aggregator. That's all he does. Fucking... He, just, he doesn't create content. He just takes other people's shit and shares it. All right. That, you couldn't be more wrong about that. And I've gotten bashed up for that as well. Oh, you guys just talk about other things. You just play clips. Have you ever watched Tosh.0, oh, Gavin? Yes, sir. Tosh.0 oh is a great show because it's nothing but jokes. Him and his writers write jokes. That's the content, dummy. I've seen... Daniel Tosh do stand up a few times. He's a very funny fucking guy. He might be a prick. He probably is. 
But don't say he doesn't have content. He's not just showing YouTube videos and then going, oh, that was interesting. All right, what else is going on? He's got, he fucking has jokes. Uh, and then uh, Greg Fitzsimmons gets bashed. I don't hate Greg Fitzsimmons, but, uh, but there is an arrogance about him. And I'll tell you this. When I was at the Tempe Improv, and I think I had Greg, you know, in the beginning I was just a host because I was just starting out. And Greg was the headliner. And, and Greg and I met Brian Regan for dinner. Drop! <laughs> All right, we get it. We get it, John. You say hang out with famous boys. people. All right, this is more um, Greg bashing. Greg Fitzsimmons, I swear to you, while we're, like, having dinner, he goes, well, you know, Brian, you know, you and I are like the smart comics. You know, you, you know, you know, you know, you and I are the smart guys on stage. And I'm just sitting there. Oh, really? Oh, really, Greg? So you're self-proclaiming, you're self-proclaiming yourself a smart comic. <laughs> you did a joke. You, you did a whole bit about farting and and the talcum powder on your balls fucking puffed up. And you're a smart, highbrow comic. It was. So John is upset. He can't, he can't say words. He can't say words. He, he, He's upset because he's not included in this. Right. Like, how am I not a smart pa 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 funny guy? <laughs> he doesn't oh. understand. It's Greg Fitzsimmons. Yes. Has he done fart jokes? Yes. He's also been the head writer on multiple TV shows. He's he's a very smart guy. And Suttering John is taken aback by the fact that he would consider himself to be a witty comedian. And then Sarah Silverman gets uh, some shrapnel here, too. If, if she actually had something to gain from it, then she wouldn't have shared the story, right? Because she would have sounded like an opportunistic person. Yeah. Been like, oh, well, I let him. Like, yeah, Louis, just I'll sit there and watch because you'll put me on this next show. Well, yeah. that doesn't that, I feel like that reputation precedes her. Isn't that what she's known for? There, yes. Uh, not as much as Chelsea. But yes. Right. Um, but oh, my, what? Is she, a, is, she, that's, is she known to be a bitch, too? Chelsea She's known to Sarah. date men that will further her career. She dated Gary oh. Shandling. Sarah Silverman? Yeah. Sarah Silverman dated her way up. That's how she landed a Jimmy. All right. So they're they're determining that Sarah Silverman got to where she is because of who she dated. And I don't know if that's true or not. I think Sarah Silverman's pretty funny. She's obviously put out a lot of content on her own. Uh, she's written a lot of jokes and done a lot of good stand-up routines. But aren't you supposed to, when you're a cute chick, date guys who are more successful than you what is she supposed to do you use the phrase he's punching up but is he getting anywhere because i feel like he's going further down <laughs> right he's punching up and he's not, falling he's backwards up, but he's not getting anywhere hey, they're just calling everybody out oh, sarah silverman's a fucking whore and greg fitzsimmons yeah. son, do you know greg fitzsimmons really is? popular people that are funny and i hate them yeah he's, just, he's going lower with each punch he's just going <laughs> lower like he's, it's not working for you it's not working Maybe she's not punching dude the funny thing is is that so he's he's trying to have a career in showbiz still. That's what that's what's so fascinating about Stuttering John. All he wants is to have a career in show business, and it's not happening. <laughs> he explains I'll just shit on anybody. Right? It's like why is this not happening for me? I don't know because you said Pat Oswalt's a douche, and you shit on Sarah Silverman, and you're not helping yourself. He's trying to get into the B list. He's in the C list. Right. Shitting on everyone in the A list. <laughs> yes. It's not you working. Get the B list. You don't get moved <laughs> up to B by shitting all over A and B. Yeah. And this is Gavin from WATP. He knows a thing or two about this. A fucking expert. This is him talking about, I love this clip. He's talking about the fact that they're trying to get a radio show. And then listen to, as soon as he says that, how terrible he is at broadcasting. Who would ever hire this guy to be an on mic personality? Yeah, and plus we're and trying to lose control. Plus we're trying to get a radio show. Right. And, and, and you know, you know, Royce had a good point. You don't you know, even though Tim Conway is Tim Conway, you know, if, eventually you're gonna piss off the other company, which is what is iHeart. He's trying to get a radio show and 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 you know, uh you know, uh brought up a good point and you know, uh Tim Conway and guess what? You failed the audition. You will never get a radio show, John. You suck at broadcasting. You're possibly the worst. And I listen to Opie. You're possibly the worst. This is the, the funniest thing about John is every time he does a guest spot on another person's show, he has to talk about what a great guest he was. But he doesn't just say, oh, I had a good spot. You know, I was funny. I was compelling. He has to prove that he was funny by saying other people told him he was funny. This happens all the time. And here are a couple more examples of that. 
and the producers couldn't have been nicer. They were all like, you were great. Even my friend Mike Schiff called me and said, John, that was brilliant. You were awesome. And nothing but good. You know, the producer, you know, emailed me after. All right, this is my favorite clip. Later on, after he talks about how great he did on the show, he goes on about another show and how great he was. And for Tim Conway Jr. to be that big of a coward after he knows I did a great appearance. And I'm not like, I'm not an egomaniac, but no. like even when I did Frosty, Heidi, and Frank, I know Sorry, I killed days. it. I think you would agree, Royce. I mean, I was getting laughs every fucking, every 20 seconds. From, it, it was a great appearance. You know, from Frosty, Heidi, Frosty, Heidi and Frank. And I did, you know, the uh, Sid and Bernie show in uh, on um, on WABC in New York. And, 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 and they were very honest. They said, John, that was the funniest 35 minutes that we've ever done. I did a great job there. I'm a good guess. <laughs> Because this, this shit makes me laugh so hard. He goes, they were very honest. They said that was the best 35 minutes we've ever done. They were blowing smoke up your ass, dummy. That's the opposite of very honest. The polar opposite of very honest. You, That was the best 35 minutes. You on the show, we were laughing every 20 seconds. John, they you're say not that fun. without making eye contact. So yeah. They, they, say, they look down at their feet, and that's what they say. They say that in an email. Right, right. <laughs> that is automated and just goes out to every single person who was recently on the show. Gavin, I got a tweet from Anthony Cumia saying I did a good job at his show. This is what hosts do. They blow smoke up your ass. They're not they're not being totally honest. Um that that's that's all I have. I appreciate uh Charlie for calling out stuttering john and getting me to go in and listen to that because holy shit this fucking guy is out of control i don't know i don't know what his end game is i don't know what he thinks he's gonna i don't know what he thinks he's gonna she be when he grows up be at the top <laughs> yeah right exactly <laughs> i know what i'll do i'll piss off every single person who could possibly give me a break oh, okay. first i have to talk about stuttering john no <laughs> yes all right let's talk about stuttering john before we get into op because he did talk about WATP. <laughs> he's talking about this guy, Sciency, who's talked about us, too. He's, he's kind of a troll. He's got a YouTube show or Twitch or something. And he likes to talk about anything that's going on in the Opie and Anthony universe. So Senator and John's talking about him, and then we get brought up. He's trying to get fame by yeah. goofing on me. It's like this other fucking site. Uh, who are these podcasts? I, I hate to give them any fucking yeah, publicity. See, this, it's working right. for them right now. It, yeah, all they do is just goof on people's podcasts, but they love to goof on mine. Right. You know, saying it's a fucking train wreck. You know what, <laughs> dude? We get more fucking, way more downloads than you. Nope. We're a much better podcast than you. Nope. Shut the fuck up. And you know what? Don't <laughs> hide behind who are these podcasts. Say your fucking name so I can mention them. <laughs> and get my fucking trolls on you, you fucking douchebags. <laughs> Uh, so, John, slap a Rudy. I you love this slap a Rudy. You want me to say my name? It's um, Carl. <laughs> I have to tell you, Stuttering John addresses us as who are these podcasts? have been trolling us. He said that on his show that came out on Tuesday. I looked at our download numbers on Tuesday and Wednesday. They were lower than the previous Tuesday and Wednesday. His show has nothing going on, oh. no one's listening to it. If, the, if I was on a show that people listen to, like the official podcast, <laughs> where we saw our numbers go up quite a bit because people listen to that show, yeah. Yeah. I would know it. Nobody's listening to Stuttering John's show. Uh, uh, so, great job, John. You're, you're the best. Later on, just a couple minutes later, he talks about he has a big announcement. Ooh. And I wouldn't even be listening to this when he talked about it, so now I am. So, John has been contracted to do his own talk show for Green Bee Life Media, which is a brand new cannabis-driven network launching in 2019. <laughs> Isn't that great, Don? This is a guy who's trying to get a radio gig. I've, I've documented this. Yeah. He's trying to get on a radio program. He's been hired by a podcast network that doesn't exist yet. And he's announcing it with all this fanfare. <laughs> Look at me! I'm going to be the host of a cannabis show uh, on a network no one's ever heard of. Uh, Woohoo! Fucking amazing. And he's definitely the guy who should be talking about marijuana because he's synonymous. I mean, stuttering John Melendez is synonymous with alcohol, I mean, marijuana. <laughs> 
Yeah. But you're going to be like a, a brand ambassador talking about the the positive side effects of cannabis. Yeah, which is great because you know I like to I like to dabble in weed and I and and when I was going to run to be senator, I was I'm all in favor of hemp. That's and right. I, I, thought, I don't I don't think we should be cutting down trees for any other no. for any reason, especially not to make paper. So. I, I am a I am an advocate of uh, pot, so hopefully we'll have a lot of pot smoking guests on. Oh. First of all, you are <laughs> never going to be senator. When I was going to run for senator, he said, "What the fuck was that?" Stuttering John Melendez. Oh my god! What the fuck does he think? And hopefully I'll have a lot of guests that are smoking weed. Ah, that's not a good recipe for talk show success. No, it's Dry. not. Opie had Doug Benton on <laughs> recently. <laughs> That would be the best guest you could get yeah. on a weed show. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Woody Harrelson. But that's the <laughs> best you could do <laughs> on a weed show. It just goes way down yeah. from there. So anyway, Stuttering John, we love you, buddy. And uh, keep up the terrible work. Yeah, this is um, something that uh, the deuce turned me on to. Okay. And it's a, another podcast called Juicy Scoop, uh, hosted by... A woman named Heather McDonald, who is famous for being like... Uh, Did she have a farm? She's a... No. Oh. <laughs> yes. She's old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she is like a writer on Chelsea Lately, I think okay. is what she's best known for. Okay. And now it, she turns up on like those Real Housewives shows like in the background when... They have those parties where they get all dressed up, and they're the only ones there, and she's in the background. Andy, you're acting like I've watched this show ever in my life. I've never seen a Real Housewives episode. I know you're forced to watch it by proxy. That's not what we watch in this Okay, house. I'm just telling you. You know, you know that part in the show? No! I have no idea. This is the setup. I'm setting oh, it up right. for you. Oh, right. The listeners at home. So, she'll, usually she talks about Real Housewives bullshit, but you, yes. when, it's off, when it's out of season or whatever, she has had guests. And uh, the the guest, what, let's see if you can guess who it is with the uh, clip seven that's clip on there. Clip seven. You know, I have no talent. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'd be nothing uh, without him. You know, I'm a loser. I'm not fit to be a father. This was on Juicy Scoop? <laughs> this was the guest on Juicy Scoop. Stuttering John Stuttering Melendez, John obviously. Melendez. But it's amazing that I've heard him say those exact same things on his podcast. He only has like four things that he says. Carl, this he is He might like, as well be like one of those dolls you just pull the string. This is a Family Feud style game. Yes! About... The I mean, Melendez is a broken man, yes. and he's a broken record. <laughs> so Creepy. you are going to guess top five, five to one. Oh, sweet! What are the things that John Stuttering John talked about on this podcast? <laughs> Now we're doing the same fucking sleepy camp. Shit. I'll take it on post. <laughs> I actually want right. to edit. Guess one, Carl. What what is your first guess about like what he talked about on the podcast? Oh, okay. So I have to guess five things that he brought up. Yep. In conversation. Okay. So Stuttering John is going to talk about his book. Play clip three. All right. Hatchet job on Chris Jenner in the book. You know, yes. the, I talk about it in my book. Yeah, and I say it in the book is that to promote this book, don't forget I I trash Jimmy Kimmel in this book. And it, I, like I talk about in the book, and I'll, I'll tell you something else that's not in the book. <laughs> and and, I, and I, I, this is another true juicy thing in the book. Weird, like, I don't, I don't think I put this in the book. So, like, I, I equate it in the book, and I talk about it in the book. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> this fucking book. Why uh, even write a book? Yeah. You've already said everything that there is uh, on every fucking show you're dude, on. Dude, it's the fucking same interview okay. over and over again. So okay. what do you think the next thing? All right, so there's there's five things that he talks about. You went right about. down the middle. That was the, the that was number third three. most popular. <laughs> that was the third most popular. Okay. Um, the other one is going to be uh, the, the real Howard Stern. All the things that we don't know about behind the scenes. With Howard Stern and the Howard Stern show. Yeah, that is clip. Even though I will say, I I, I decided at the end that this is the no, the number two thing. So, that, but it's clip one. Okay. <laughs> it's very confusing. Yeah, I know. And then I go to work for Howard, and it was a big problem with Howard. Because Gary, you go to Howard, and even though Howard's not beating you up physically, when Howard is like it, Howard to now. 
Cut to Howard Stern. Now, Howard is nice to Gwyneth Paltrow, soldier of Howard. Ask Howard for some money. Howard doesn't give him a dime. And Howard says, you know you're not... You know you're not allowed to speak to me because Howard doesn't allow any of his staff members to approach him in the hallway. Like No one's allowed to speak to him after the show. Downstairs, he's not on the same floor as Howard. Okay, so there's a lot of Howard <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They get longer the higher up the list. Of okay, the shit. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so that was number two. Mm-hmm. So I've gotten two and three. Yep. What else does Suttering John talk about? It has to be that he was the announcer on The Tonight Show, but not just an announcer. He was a writer. Yeah, on number, the Tonight Show. Number one is Jay Leno. All right, you know, prop Jay up. Jay Leno and Jay is like Jay, 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 Jay being Jay out for Jimmy Fallon. Jay's contract wasn't up until September. Jay was Jay was like, all right, I'll tell you what, I got six figures because I was a writer. Jay Leno, from Jay Leno. You met Jay? Jay was probably always, you know, sweet to you, right? I mean, oh, no, Jay, was yeah, like, he yeah. was, yeah, he's a he, he's a consummate professional. He really is, and that's how that whole place is. Jay, at the, you know, with Jay, and we were coming back from a Jay walking, you know, that yeah. I wrote, whatever. And Jay, that's, that's already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so Southern Jeff has about his book, talks about Howard, he talks about Jay. Now, do I get three buzzers? You, like, yeah, you like get family it's family feud, feud rules, so you get three rules. strikes. Okay, but you yeah. only have to get two more. So you, right. your yeah, odds yeah, are yeah. in your favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got you it. know what... Well, the, I'm going to take I'm gonna take a stab at this. I'm going to say the fact that he was the head writer on the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast. Oh, Is that one of them? Eh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, fuck. He loves bringing that up. Okay, all right, all right. Um, I know that he recently was hired by this new podcast network that talks about weed. Hmm. Does he talk about his new job being the host of a show talking about weed? That does come up on the show, but that is not not on on the the list. No. Oh, maybe I'm thinking too deep here. Well. Maybe I'm getting too deep with my my thoughts about stuttering John. Yeah. Um, He's going to talk about uh, glory days? (laughs) I don't know how you fucked this up. Uh, 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 Okay. Uh, <laughs> Maybe this bit should get a buzzer too. I let everyone down. All right. What did I? What did I miss? The the uh, the Trump call. Oh fuck the Trump call! Oh, of course. How can you f- miss the that? The Trump call. How did I forget that? That's, That's his that biggest clip- claim to fame since being on the Tonight Show. Clip five. Trump. I, I I did the worst English accent, like Sean Moore. I say, oh, who I go, Sean oh, is in Connery, yeah, this... Moore is in Roger. Oh my God, he tells it the same way every fan, time, too. As if I named myself. So worst English accent boring. since Lindsay Lohan in The Parent Trap. It's Trump. And I have a five minute conversation with Trump. Oh, this guy's so boring. So, and I'm like, I'm on the really... fucking phone with the president. You know what's interesting? <laughs> I've hung out with Donald. I've had right. lunch with Donald. I've had dinner with Donald. I've, I've been right. on the phone with him numerous times. Right, I'm going to take a guess <laughs> what the other one is. Is it possibly about him supposed to be on the Anthony Cumia show? Is no. there anything about Anthony Cumia or Opie on this? No, no. Right. We'll, fit, we'll just get through this now. All the right. other thing, he relentlessly talks about money that he made. Or money that oh, is ex-wife. owed to him, oh. just money. Okay. Like, how, how, uh, like you, normally people who are su- successful, yeah, demure when the subject of money comes up. Right. Not John. Not John. Clip four. He made six figures <laughs> when he worked for the Tonight Show. I know all about it. I walked away with one hundred twenty thousand from okay. that. Okay. Point. I got two pensions. You know, millions of dollars a year. And he's content with my motorcycle. I own my place. I mean, I'm eighty-five thousand. So, can I make fifty thousand? I was making forty-two thousand. <laughs> Since when do you give a shit about me? How much I'm getting paid? <laughs> oh my God. Talks about it so much. I should have known that one. It's embarrassing. I know exactly what his salary was at Howard Stern Show, ninety thousand right. dollars a year. Because he tells you, and then what he, he made it at Jay Leno Show, four hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, <laughs> and why he had to take that job. I've never heard. That's a really good point. I've never heard any other guest on a show talk about their salary specifically yeah. to someone. If you're a celebrity, even if you're just a, even if you're just a carpenter, yeah, I've never heard anyone explain their salary to people. <laughs> It's so bad. It's and the, the last clip is not part of the game. I just, I could have, like, obviously, just play the clip. Six. <laughs> Great stuff. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about Scott it. the Engineer, a man who has worked for him for 30 years, loyal, loyal servant. The guy who supplied him with my audition tapes so that where I say, you know, <laughs> Cage and, and Pamela Anderson. I was mispronouncing. Oh, they, they had a bleeding Nicholas Cage? <laughs> Maybe stop t- 
telling people that. Oh, I mispronounced it where I said the N-word. <laughs> like, you don't just run around saying it. It's one of the funniest clips, though. Oh, it's a funny time. clip on the show because it just shows, like, what an idiot he is. But don't <laughs> don't wear it like a badge of honor so that you get beeped on another podcast. Good stuff, Andy. I, cool. I feel like I should have easily nailed that one. You should feel bad you missed that Trump thing. I, I do feel bad about that. That's so <laughs> obvious. It's all he talks about. If you listen to his podcast, the very beginning of it is just all news clips. <laughs> a comedian talked to Donald Trump because it's a slow news day. Yeah. This is shit. The best part. I he had think- a phone call conversation with the president and they said nothing important or interesting. <laughs> Who gives a shit? I forgot to clip it, but right at the end of that episode... They realize that they're both going to be, the the host and John realize they're going to be in Vegas at the same time. Uh And John tries to say, oh, we should get together when we're there. I'm hanging out with some nobody and Andrew Dice Clay. And uh, Heather's like, yeah, uh," she like comes right out. She's like, yeah, probably not. But uh, I'll, maybe I'll call you. That's and she hilarious. gets away from it so fast. It's, yeah. it's the best part. I'm guessing she hangs out at different places in Vegas than stuttering John does. <laughs> John's like, you know what the best buffet is? You know, you we got to go. We got to go to Excalibur. I, you know, it, it sounds weird, but the buffet is the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. Yeah. We got, a, we got a cool post on the subreddit from a guy. I don't know how to pronounce this name. Maybe you can help me out with this. This word right here. Senevery? Yeah. There you go. Nailed it. He brought up that he thinks Stuttering John was talking about us. <laughs> so I went and listened to it, and I think I have to agree. Yeah. Because, again, going back to the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast, <laughs> and I'm sorry I pronounced that so well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do, but I, I always found Richard Lewis to be a lot funnier. I mean, I, I, I just like him. I mean, and so, like, I, when I was head writer of the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast, yeah, <laughs> assholes, that's right, you fucking douches. I was the head writer of the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast. I got to write jokes for everybody from Kareem to fucking, I can't remember, the stuttering guy. Oh, I took God. a picture with the, all of them fucking I wrote jokes idiot. for. A.C. Cowlings. No, is that it? I don't even know the basketball players anymore. I heard most of the anymore. day oh! cast off of Twitter. <laughs> no, no, seriously. But, I mean... <laughs> Uh, I mean, I got to write for all those people. And what was I... What the fuck was I going for here? <laughs> oh, my God. Is that amazing? <laughs> it's like any random <laughs> part of the Sonny John show you can just clip and you're like, holy shit, this guy's the worst broadcaster in the history of broadcasting. Yeah, I, you could drop the needle anywhere on Anywhere. And he'd just be like, hey, another thing about Kareem abdul Jabbar. The reason why he brought... Oh, God. I wrote jokes for that guy and and, and the other guy. I I don't remember his name, but but he was somebody. And and you would have been impressed if you knew his name. He he couldn't think of one other person that was on that roast. There wasn't one famous person at that roast. Oh, fuck. Wow. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) So right after that, the reason why he brought that up is because he's talking about the fact that Richard Lewis told him how funny he was. Oh, because, well... Oh, uh, oh, Richard Lewis, you know, yeah. happened to be in the audience. And he goes, John, I, you know, I love you. You're fucking super talented. I always knew it. After, after they played all my bits, you know? So this is the thing with Stuttering John that I've realized. I, I think it's so funny. He thinks that every polite compliment is vindication. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, obviously, I'm amazing. Even Richard Lewis told me I was yeah. a, a, such a great writer with all my bits. When I got right in his face and said, how did you like it? Did you like that? It was so great what I did, right? That's a good it, point. Wasn't it? wasn't it? That's a good point. Yeah. How would you just take me aside and say, hey, John, I really like your bits. So, yeah, he's really funny. Dude, dummy. They don't actually think you're funny. Nah. It's polite conversation that you have with someone, nah. especially if you've just seen them do comedy. Yeah, yeah. I, ju- I met Jim Norton the other night. I don't know if I talked Ooh. about this. Mm, yes. So Jimmy Norton <laughs> was in town, and Vinny featured for him. So I went in, and I talked to him. And you know what he said to me? He said, hey, Carl, I like your podcast. It's very funny. Do you know why he said that? <laughs> Because that's what you say. Because you were standing in front of him. Right. That's what you say. He didn't go out of his way to tweet me or send me yeah. an email. He, he probably heard three seconds of the fucking show. If that, yeah. But yeah, it was yeah. very, <laughs> it was very nice of him to say your show is very funny. Suddenly, John would have heard that and be like, Jim, Jim Norton thinks I'm the funniest comedian yeah. he's ever heard." That, that would have been the first six minutes of the show today. All right. Yeah. I would. I need to talk about this Howard Stern exclusive. Oh boy. That Stuttering John has brought to the world. 
Really now? Oh, good. You don't know about this. I was hoping you didn't know about this. Yeah, I'm out of it. All right. I was too busy looking up Artie's mugshot from this week. Was that amazing? His face is is flat, except for his chin pops out. His nose is flat to his face. Yeah. I mean, that. if if you don't know what we're talking about, Artie Lang, a longtime Stern Show co-host, got arrested for the 50th time. He's going back to rehab for the 100th time, but this time I'm sure it's going to work out for him. His nose is destroyed from drug it's use. It's gone. And when he's looking straight on the camera, it looks bad. Yeah. But then he turns 90 degrees for the mug shot, and it's the most frightening fucking thing I've ever seen. I mean, it's I've seen horror movies that were less disturbing than Artie's face right now. Good Lord. That cardinal has never had a chance. Oh, dude, I've been having nightmares of that all week. <laughs> Fuck. So, Stuttering John gets exclusive audio, and okay. he's been talking about this for a while. He's been saying, I know for a fact that Howard Stern told his staff to set up fake Twitter accounts. Wow. And Stuttering John has the audio. Boy, I, I, I'm going to need a minute to brace myself for that <laughs> revelation there. <laughs> and I'm going to play it for you now. The Howard Stern show I work for. How do we get the word out? So set up a fake Twitter account. Become 10 different people. I don't give a shit. And then when, we, when our core team says to you, we want to get Lady Gaga on the show. They announced it on Moldred. And all of a sudden, Lady Gaga, I, I'm telling you, every celebrity reads their Twitter for himself. Every celebrity starts getting just random things from fans. Hey, when are you going to do the Howard Stern show? We want you on the show. And they're getting all this publicity material. And they're getting, and they're getting bombarded. And it works. I said before, a Jehovah Witness, they bang on the door. We've got to bang on people's doors. They're forgetting about us. And I'm pissed. Okay. So we're going to have a core team. It's going to be about six or seven people who are going to head this up. They're going to meet weekly. But everyone in this room, I'm telling you, is responsible for involvement, pitching guests, and strategizing. It's up to us. If we don't do this, uh, I think we're in trouble. Crow's reaction? Thoughts? Sorry, I drifted off. So that, <laughs> that was a that was like a staff meeting. I'm Correct. assuming that was a, a secret recording of a staff meeting. Correct. So so someone pulled out their iPhone, hit record, and Howard's addressing the staff. This is early on in the Marcy Turk days. Okay. From what I understand, this is probably around the time Artie left. Yeah. Marcy well, took over the show, and they switched formats to become like this A list celebrity interview show. Yeah. And so the the just so I understand the the controversial thing is that he wanted his people to become involved in social media? Yes. Boy, that's a shocking revelation, dude. I'm, uh... I had a feeling you were going to react like that because... I'm flabbergasted. Stuttering John is actually, like, he has blown up this amazing case against Howard. It's like, oh, well, now... No, no one's ever going to take this guy seriously ever again. This guy seems like the CEO of a company that he wants to succeed. I've sat through 500 meetings that are just like that. Right. In career. I mean, right. Jesus He's the guy. Yeah. I need you all on board. We got to work together on this. Yeah. We got to get great guests. Like... Oh, okay. Seems reasonable. Yeah. I, wow. I didn't find anything in there that shocked me. Did you guys know the celebrities read their Twitter? Yes. Yeah. They're narcissists. I and, did know that. I mean, don't half the people on Twitter have 10 fake accounts anyway? I mean, isn't yes. that how Twitter works? That's what works? Twitter is. It's yeah. fake accounts. Yeah, that's the whole fucking thing. Yeah, I had a feeling you were going to be that impressed with that. Stuttering John's super excited about it. Do you mean when I followed Artie Lang's nose on Twitter? <laughs> that, that wasn't, wasn't actually... actually his nose? Fuck. <laughs> Man. He doesn't have a nose. You should have known that. You know, social media literacy is just, it's beyond me, I guess. That's exactly right. <laughs> All right. So that's our Stuttering John segment. Oh, beautiful. So, of course, Stuttering John is running around in circles celebrating... This huge victory of this this tape is out. It's because very the, exciting. Because a videotape leaked of Howard yes. telling idiots to do work that they are not qualified to do. Correct. But also... Which is kind of what his job was. An idiot who wasn't qualified mm-hmm. to do what he was supposed to be doing. Yeah, this is Howard's track record. That's a good point. But also, Sterling John's the guy who leaked that audio of Howard telling the staff to create fake Twitter accounts. And that's part of this meeting. I didn't hear that either, oh. but I don't care that much. All right, it doesn't matter. Howard means so little to me. It, I, I understand. 
it's it's fascinating. It's actually very interesting to watch. I recommend you. Check no, it out. I will go check this out. It, I, I am interested now. This PowerPoint presentation is it's fucking brutal. Anyway, is there a picture of Richard Christie and a picture of Brad Pitt? You see, yes. You see, you see, Robin. <laughs> if we have is. Richard Christie <laughs> reach out to Brad Pitt, we'll be able to get Steven Spielberg. You see, you see. <laughs> That's how this works. Step one, JD, steal the underpants. JD, I need you to get on the phone with Oprah. Holy shit. So, oh shit. Anyway, Stuttering John is so excited about this, and he's talking about how amazing this all is. So I had to just check out his show, and I pulled some clips because this fucking guy is the worst. He talks about how excited he is about this video coming out, and he has dubbed it the Pelican Brief because Howard's nose is large. <laughs> I'll wait for you. It's fine. We're no, ready no, to follow along. no, no. I got that. <laughs> okay. I got that. And I have to say, yeah. if comedy is your day job, please quit. <laughs> Stuttering, John. Stuttering John is the worst. So here he is. He wants to take credit for the Pelican Brief, and then he realizes he isn't even the one who came up with it. His buddy did. Now, everybody's calling the Getting Things Done so, uh, seminar the Pelican Brief. Now, that was something that, you know, that we came up with. I know you said it first when we were talking about what? Whoops. Something, I forget his, oh, his, um, uh, the picture. Of, oh, you you said it first about the Getting Things Done thing. You and I were hanging out at your place yeah. talking about the photo and... Yeah, what, we were smoking, and we came up with that name. Yeah, you said it first, and then I and then I said it when I, you know, <laughs> about his book. <laughs> who cares? It's not that great of a joke. Who gives a shit? Oh, wait, I that's right. You said Pelican Brief, but then I said Pelican Brief. I have an idea for you, Stuttering John. <laughs> I got, yeah. I got an idea for you. Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Yes! <laughs> should guess how sad he should be. Oh my God, he should just talk about video games. This is amazing. John explains that he went to a party and was very funny at the party. This is the this is the part of starting John that I love. I can't get enough of this. When he talks about how great he is and how funny he's been in certain situations, nobody talks like this. So I go over there and then we're hanging out. And I'm fucking making Chris, his nieces, his brother, all I did like a 10, 15 minute stand up routine, all improv and adding in jokes and talking about the Trump call, everything. They're all fucking laughing their ass off. And Chris, who's always said that, that it wasn't funny, was like, all right, you're funny. <laughs> and then and then, and then, at the party, I said to him and Sandra, all right, I'm going to say before Sandra does, you were very funny at the party. So there you go. And then and Sandra goes, yes, you were. <laughs> so it was great. Is that an awkward thing to say? Now, okay, I, I am point, stone-faced right now. Right. That's because crazy. Because I'm going to tell you a couple of things. All right, go ahead. I work as a stand-up. Mm -hmm. I don't call myself a comedian. I take the work that I get, and I do my goddamn best. You're very good at it. I do not do material at parties, number one. All, all you improvise. Will I did a 10-minute set. All improvise. I you had will jokes. never see real comics. Right. You will see comics have conversations and laugh, yes. and maybe comics will throw bits at each other. But you will never see someone who is a real performer standing in the middle of a room trying to hold fucking court. Right. I can only imagine it's how uncomfortable. Yes. I think the people in the room were just as uncomfortable as you and I hearing it's that. uncomfortable laughter is what he <clears throat> got. And they go, okay, John, you're really funny, John. Yes. Good stuff, John. Can you turn it off now, John? That's what happened. And in his mind, it's, I'm hysterical. I know he's lying because I've listened to hours of his podcast now. He's never been funny once, and that's when he's trying to be funny. So I'm just going to say that it's possible that John... Cause I'm a liar, a liar. There's no way he was funny at a party. Let me play a couple of the that's jokes. That's my new favorite drop. <laughs> I know, I like that. He's workshopping some material on this latest podcast that he has. Check this out, Vinny. You're going to love it. It made me feel so secure. So, but then, uh, but, but man... Dude, I was sweating like Donald Trump at a Mexican Day parade. Ew. Oh, my God. I was shaking like Sarah Palin at a spelling bee. Nope. <laughs> I was I was shaking like a Michael J. Fox bobblehead. Now, here's the thing. There have been no laughs. What do you mean? I'm None. And the last one I really confuses me. I was shaking like a Michael J. Fox bobblehead. 
That's extra shaky. It's extra shaky. Does the bobblehead have Parkinson's? What does that mean? Oh, Christ. It's a terrible so joke. I mean, those jokes were all terrible. But I like that he says them as if it's going to get this uproarious laughter from the listener. But you know what he's he saying to himself in his head? Oh, they're losing it right now. I they got him in the palm of my right hand. Now. He also has to retell Twitter jokes that he put out. So he puts out things on Twitter and then thinks they're so funny that he has to retell them on his podcast. And that's so funny, Fred, because, you know, another Animal House, you know, you know, a reference, which is like my funniest comedy. I made a joke <laughs> after Trump made his airports. <laughs> Let me pause that real quick. What? He says Animal House <laughs> references. He goes, my, it's my funniest comedy. You mean it's the movie that you like? Okay, I got you. It's the movie you like. <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> John, you stupid asshole. You stupid fucking like, idiot. I know that ONA back in the day didn't rely heavily on the movie references, but they yes. were just out of context and that made them funny. All right. So we play the Animal rest House clip. references. Let me play the rest of this clip because no, he's got an amazing Animal House quit. reference. I quit. So he's talking about, because I paused during the middle so it might get weird. He's talking about how during July 4th, President Trump was talking about George Washington taking over all the airports. I don't know if you heard this. It's pretty stupid. Right. It's a pretty dumb thing to say. So, of course, John's got a hot take for that one. I've leader sharing where I said, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't think Trump's said anything wrong. Um, you know, especially after after the Germans bomb, bomb Pearl Harbor, signed John Blut- Senator John Blutowski. People, people go, Germans? Like, they don't even get that I'm quoting Bluto <laughs> from Animal House. They don't even get that. I don't understand how that even connects to what he's trying to make fun of. He just pulls a reference that makes zero sense. Do you remember the movie Animal House? Yes. Okay. Do you remember when Bluto gives John Belushi gives that big speech? Yeah. Where were we when yeah. the No, no, I, I know. I know the reference so he was he's just, talking about. Right. But it doesn't make any sense to the thing where Trump got something very wrong and he goes, "I don't see what's wrong with that." It's like when the Germans. It's like whoa, whoa, whoa. That has nothing to do with anything. You're just telling a joke from a movie. I get the joke. I get it's the not joke. It's not funny. Joke. I wouldn't repeat it on my podcast if I had tweeted it at someone. But it's, it's all like, he's got. <laughs> it's all, it's he's, all got. he's got. Well, it's funny because he even admits that he tries to go on Facebook, but no one reads his shit. So I'm on Facebook, but I don't really, I don't know. I don't post as much on Facebook because it doesn't, doesn't seem like anyone even fucking, ever, anyone reads it. Yeah. You know why, John? Because you have no fans or friends. That's why nobody reads what you post on Facebook. That's how that works. People only see it if they want to. All right, this is because John has so many opportunities that are going on and he's so coveted. He's talking about Tim Sabian. You know who Tim Sabian is? Yeah. Tim Sabian works for Westwood One. He's He's the one who catapulted Don and Mike to fame. He also hired Opie to be a podcaster on Westwood One. I know. He's the one who hired Opie. And John says this. You know, Tim's not stupid. He's just like, he's a bullshitter. You know, like he promises us... You know, that he'd get us on Westwood One. He gave, like, he makes all these promises. He's got no power over there. In stupid stuttering John's head, he goes, he said that he would get us on Westwood One, but he doesn't have any power to do that. Tim Sabian is the senior vice president of the digital division within Westwood One. He most certainly has the authority to hire talent. He's done it before. Th- th- that's not what he said the one time that he accidentally picked up the phone when I called. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's the point. Dummy, he probably listened to your show. He's already made a mistake with Opie. He's not making that mistake again. You're not good enough to be on Westwood One, Stuttering John. You suck. Your show is terrible. Let me play you an example of how terrible his show is. Him and this guy Ross who's on there just start talking about local retail near where they live. It's only at the donut shop, which is by the Home Depot. You know, berries. So the donut shop or here? There's a donut shop by the Home Depot. Where? Yeah, on the corner of uh, of Roscoe and DeSoto. There's that Popeyes there. Which, which oh, oh, okay. I go, I go to the Spud Nuts. Which, by the way, the Popeyes is way better than KFC. You couldn't pay me to go in that Popeyes and not to get off on a tangent, but the homeless contingent living outside that Popeyes is enough for me. I don't care. To I'll, I'll walk right over it and get that chicken. It's awesome. This is the kind of content that's coming out of this guy's show. Can I show. throw out? What the fuck is going out of the second guy co host life where he's like, There's a donut shop by the Home Depot? <laughs> no. Where? 
That was the craziest what reaction. What kind of conversation is that? Like, I know you're trying to, like, make everything interesting, but holy shit, talk about an oversell. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you there. All right, so then he talks about, on Facebook again, Baba Bowie, Gary Delabate, the producer of the Howard Stern Show, the guy who reports into Marcy Turk on the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> Marcy Turk's boy. Yes. Boy Gary. And Boy Gary mixes things up with Stuttering John. Stuttering John's got an awesome anecdote. He can't believe he hasn't told this story before. It's so amazing. This is classic Baba Boo. I can't believe I never told you this. So, hey, Mike the Media, here's a new one for you. So, I'm on Facebook, and, and I write something like, uh, you know, he spelt it wrong. S-P-E-L-T. And Baba Booey, like, you know, he, he sends me, like, a DM on Facebook, like, a personal email. Um... John, I don't know. I think he even did it publicly. And he goes, uh, John, it's spelled. And I go, Gary, it could be either way. And I sent him the Oxford Dictionary where you could, where spelt is, is, is you know, like is allowed. And then writes back, I stand corrected. <laughs> no, you never told me. I never told you that one. How is that? That's never awesome. That's crazy. Oh, I, I, That's I still have it. I got I got to send it to you. I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> Please clip that. <laughs> that's a really funny one is that an amazing anecdote or what it's great he tried to correct him on a spelling error he was wrong it was actually spelled correctly mm. and then he admitted that he was wrong i really thought the john's show was funny but i stayed corrected <laughs> that was an amazing back and forth that was uh, can i tell you how big of a loser sorry it was john classic is? It's, it's a cl- classic baba booey i can't believe i never told you this story it's so amazing i what kind of life is this guy living he used to be, obviously, Stuttering John. And then he went on The Tonight Show. Yeah. And he was the announcer. Still Stuttering John. Yeah, still Stuttering John. But he was the announcer for Jay Leno's Tonight Show. Listen to what he's doing now for money. This just happens randomly during the Hand show. jobs down by the bridge. <laughs> by the donut down shop. Down by the donut shop by the Home <laughs> Next Depot. Next to the Home Depot. <laughs> the soda. He gave her a pass. But and, and anybody else, you always gave a shit. I know, I heard that too. It was like, a, I think I'm going to you. But how could it be from my pocket? And he comes. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Before we get off this topic, oh, I've got a new cameo request. There you go. Oh, there's is, the bar tab for today. Is it from uh, Captain the Janks? Tab for today. <laughs> there's the bar tab for today. I love it. I only charge fifty five bucks. I only get forty one twenty five out of it. But, but but that covers my bar tab. He's on cameo, and when somebody signs up for you know what cameo is. Oh, I know what it is. With this? I'm kind of my eyes are rolling a little bit. So it's. Going, yeah, that sounds about right. When someone does his cameo, he's excited because now he's got 40 bucks to buy beer with. This is a guy who used to make $500,000 a year. You have children, sir. You have children. What are you doing? He made a half a million dollars a year as the announcer for The Tonight Show. I don't know how long that lasted. Years, though. And now he's excited about 40 bucks coming in through cameo so he can buy beer. One of the last times I listened to Stern... Yeah. High pitch Eric was getting seventy five or a hundred dollars for yes. doing cameo. Right, yeah. So I just want to say it was one of the last times it was a couple months ago I was listening, he was talking about this shit and high pitch Eric was making more. I know that for a fact. And getting That's more cameos to do. High pitch Eric is booked fucking solid with this shit. More people would rather get a cameo from high pitch Eric than stuttering John Melendez. It's just a fact. Yeah. It's just a fact. I'm gonna play two more clips from Stuttering John. This is amazing. They get to an ad read and Listen to this ad read, fail. This is impressive, even for someone as stupid as John. Do we? Should I read this new sponsor? Yeah, we were supposed to do it a little earlier. It's fine. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Happy week. birthday, Eddie Julie. Julie. <laughs> so you're fucking walking all over. Why are you doing our new sponsor? <laughs> Happy birthday, Julie. <laughs> from Tim. Should I read this new sponsor? Yeah, we were supposed to do it a little earlier. It's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, Speedweed AD. No, no, that's a, that's a note for use of Speedweed ad. Oh, the Speedweed ad. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the company. How the fuck that's do awesome. I know? How the fuck would I know? I thought that was a company. Speedweed AD. <laughs> you read the title of it. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Wow. Wow, that was the best one of the day. Even the people who have to sit around and kiss his ass and pretend that he's funny. We're like, holy shit, John, are you fucking kidding me? Are you that stupid? His wife is going to play that for a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> and just how stupid is this man? Well, exhibit A, I'll show you that. Speed weed ass. So, Stutter, what are Stuttering John's things? 
is that he hates that everyone thinks he's only famous because of Howard Stern. Which is 1,000% accurate. No one would have ever heard of John Melendez if it not for Howard Stern. He, I think he came on as like an intern. Didn't he have a great band that got signed to Atlantic Records? His band was amazing, of course. Yes, sure. let's not forget about that. What was the name of their band? I have no idea. Exactly right. It, it was never a good band. So Stuttering John was, I think, an intern, and then they, they kept him on because he had a speech impediment. And Howard Stern likes that sort of thing. And Stuttering John's whole thing is like, I would have been famous either way. It just so happens that I got my start at Howard Stern. I, it could have been the Tonight Show. Whatever. Right? That's his whole take well, on it. He's a dynamo. He's a dynamo. Right. Obviously, you can tell by how funny and smart he is. This is maybe the craziest thing. And I've played a lot of crazy clips of John claiming that he always had this in him. This is maybe the craziest thing I've ever heard him say. So, so yeah. So, you know, so, you know, Howard, you had nothing to do with my fourth grade fucking teacher wrote my report card. John tends to ask outrageous and penetrating questions in class and stutters when excited. Who the fuck are you? you don't take credit for fucking my personality. Don't t- take credit for my sense of humor. Don't take credit for my balls to go out and do those interviews. Yeah, you sent me out. Are you following the logic here? This was Howard Stern's bit. He goes, oh, you know what we'll do? These people are always on the red carpet. They're getting asked all these kiss-ass questions. We're going to send a guy from our crew is going to ask ridiculous questions this so, was his idea this is so, his bit so let me tell you about stuttering john's fourth grade teacher yeah she was like john i want you to go down to the movie premiere for your assignment this week <laughs> yeah. and i want you to go ask judy garland if she does anal and <laughs> then i want you to report back a plus john bring back the audio like it's, what are you talking about it's worse than that john's claiming that he was doing that fourth grade on his own like, this was already a thing that I was doing, asking people outrageous questions. Stupid John, idiot. this wasn't your idea. This bit that you're famous for had nothing to do with you. You were just the asshole they threw out there to ask these questions. You were the person who was starved enough for attention to do it. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Howard, you weren't the reason why I'm famous. My fourth grade teacher told me that I had the questions and I stutter. That's not a compliment. Those weren't compliments that she wrote. My fourth grade teacher got me punched by Morton Downey Jr., Howard. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with Stuttering John? I, he's fascinating. I gotta visit him more often. We gotta, we gotta pop in. You're a great guy. On John. <laughs> You're a great guy. I don't know. All right. Wow. I have what's known as... Cringe of the week. Cringe, Cringe of the week. week. And this week's Cringe of the Week is a doozy. You're going to recognize this guy. And you're going to notice that he's talking about WATP. This is Stuttering John. Uh, but, um, <laughs> uh, and podcasts. Are, you know, there's, I don't want to mention these guys because there's another, there's another one. But I don't want to give them any credit because they, you know, they, you know, because they get, just like this other, other idiot, they get, like, anything, you know, they crave at any mention of them, so I won't even mention them. I want I paused it. I want to point out, he's 100% <laughs> accurate there. Or, yeah. or as you could say, exact you right. Yeah. He's 100%, <laughs> I've totally changed the way I talk. He's 100% accurate right there, that we do crave attention. He didn't even mention our name, and I have the clip on my board ready to fucking play it. <laughs> All right, here's the rest of his comment about WATP. But they do, like, they've done a couple where they trash us, but that's because they know that they really don't have a show of their own and they don't have any creativity, so they got to trash us because, they don't, because they're a bunch of losers and they don't even post their names. It's just like a title of the show and they don't post their names. I wish they would so I could send the Melenders after them. All right, so, John, you've just brought up the exact reason why we don't post our names. I had thousands of people try to get me fired from my job because they were butthurt. You are just as butthurt as these people. These fucking guys, I want to go after them in real life. Right, that's the problem. Yeah. We're just doing a show and pointing out the fact that you suck at podcasting and you want to go after us. Yeah. That's why we don't use our real names. There's people telling truth on the internet. Quick, hurt them! <laughs> so, the other thing that I want to point out here is... This happened at the one hour, 36 minute, and 30 second mark 
of this show that Stutter Ring John put out. Good Lord. And thank God our buddy Jordy somehow heard this and pointed it out and sent this in. With the timestamp? With the timestamp. Oh. Because I, was... I don't listen to two hours of Stuttering John. Are you yeah. fucking kidding me? Holy Christ. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm, I'm listening to Pootie Pie yeah. talk about eating asshole. <laughs> I don't have time for Stuttering John. <laughs> so, thankfully, <laughs> this guy sent this over to us. And I want to point this out, and this is true, Crozier. The fact that we just played it on our show means more people heard him say that from our show, yeah, then they'd heard him say that on his show. That have ever heard anything he that said on his show. That is 100% accurate. Yeah, without a doubt. John Melendez trying to get the Melenders after us. Oh, watch out. Uh, Here come the Melenders. They probably own flip phones. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do to me. Throw their fucking Nokia at your uh, head. I'm going to create a Twitter account and then you'll, then you'll see. <laughs> fucking idiots. You have uh, some stuttering John updates, correct? Yeah, and I hope that I can, like, get through them because I'm so fucked up right now. Like, I'm so drunk. Um, So, Stuttering John finally replied to Carl, and here's him starting out getting kind of salty that Carl is essentially on his show punching up. I don't know how true this is. I don't know how many listeners Stuttering John has. I can't imagine being that many, but here's that. There are people who are really, really, really punching up that are trying so hard to get a piece of this. Like AJ. To try and get a, a piece of this magic that we have, the John, Royce, and Frank show. That's right. They are trying. Like they, they, It's really, really sad in a way. Because if you're going to punch up, punch up to like Joe Rogan. He's got like three million fucking you know, downloads a day. Yeah, we got our own problems. Yeah. Like why? <laughs> but Leave us alone. We're trying to punch up. But so news and blues at Star Wars underscore 2020. I'm just going to mention this thing once. All right, just once. And then, and then I'm going to leave it at that. And then we'll, and I'll, I'll never mention it again. Will you ever confront who are these pod? They trash you on their last podcast, and they love Trump. Now, as Carl is known, the big Trump lover, fundraiser, <laughs> voted for Trump, always. So I, I don't know shit about Opie and Anthony, but I am well-versed in the Howard Stern universe. And so I, I know a couple things. Uh, Howard made Stuttering John. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay Leno stole Stuttering John. Jay Leno fired Stutter jo- Stuttering John. Stuttering John is now a nobody. Yeah, I promise you. I promise you. Andrew Gerza could be talking to him and punching down. <laughs> Stuttering John is a nobody. <laughs> so and he, I, I and don't he know. would be laying on the ground. Andrew would be laying on the ground when he did it. I don't know anything about either of these universes. All, all I know is I, I can recognize when somebody is so salty that they will take any excuse to hit on the person that is criticizing them or roasting them. And this is the typical giving somebody an unwinnable scenario, which is if you punch up, if you criticize somebody who's more famous than you, then you're jealous. You must be envious. But if you punch down, if you criticize somebody who's less famous than you are, well, then you're a bully. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. What the fuck are you supposed to do then? Never talk, never do anything, never say anything about anyone that isn't positive? Yeah, I think ideally that's that's what you're supposed to do is not punch at all, but that is no way to live. Um, I, I know that Stuttering John, he, he made his bones, so to speak, asking celebrities questions that would make them uncomfortable on the red carpet. Or some might call that punching up. He, he <laughs> yeah. That's what he did. And I think all Carl has done is just provide some constructive criticism, the same that he has done to both you and me. <laughs> yeah, constructive. Just like we did with the cripple. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being gay and walk. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be so much easier if you just walk, damn it. <laughs> just fist yourself. Get, get, you don't need sex toys. Get that dildo out of your ass and get off your rascal. Come here. <laughs> Uh, this next clip is John going, well, he's talking about how Carl has no credentials, which at this point, he's, what, 150 episodes into his podcast? I don't know what episode this is going to be, but... <laughs> this ain't going to air. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th- this is going to be like The Vanished, where he airs it, and then he will have to take it down after weeks long of harassment <laughs> yeah. from soccer moms on Facebook. <laughs> or, in this case, gay men on Rascals. So, okay, no credentials. Here we go. This is a fucking podcast. All they do is analyze other people's podcasts, and they have no talent. Zero. 
They have no credential, no reason for anything. But they punch up at guys like me because they know they have nothing to say on their own. So they so, 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 you understand? Oh, yeah. So they punch up because they, cause then they'll get someone like this, News and Blues, who tweets me. So they can get some fuck like it. Like they get off by actually being mentioned. Yeah, because they're listening to this right now. Yeah. Yeah, we are. So is Carl. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? Now you're listening to us listen to you, you <laughs> fucking prick. <laughs> what kind of credentials was he looking for? A professional podcasting degree from Harvard? <laughs> what, what do you want exactly? Oh, yeah. He cries about how people call his podcast unlistenable after listening to it. It is out there now on podcast saying that my podcast is unlistenable. Now, how would you know my podcast is unlistenable unless you listen? Hey, hey, that's my move. Thank you. I mean, th and this guy, you know, fucking this. I'm not even going to mention the name of that podcast again. But oh, that's all they do. This is like <laughs> the fifth show they've done goofing on my podcast. Yeah. So if it's that bad, why are you obsessed with it? This is such playground logic, right? It takes one to know one. If you pull my hair, that means you like me. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think he answered his own question. Okay, so so WATP is known for uh, roasting other shows, bad shows, <laughs> and if they find a if they find a show that is exceptionally bad, they'll go back to it and revisit it, and that's exactly what his, his is an ideal show to go back and revisit to see if they've improved or just shit all over it again. Yeah, it's fun. So to answer his question, why do you keep coming back and listening? Because it fucking sucks. It's horrible. Uh, this is him saying that, you know, if he really wanted to get down in the trenches with Carl, he would totally whoop Carl's ass. He never will, but he would. Should we do a podcast listening to their podcast about their podcast about our podcast? About, yeah, I think we should. <laughs> Just to confuse the fuck out of them? Yeah, I think we should. Because if I really had the time or, or care to listen to their bullshit, I would fucking rip them a new asshole. Like, it, it, would, it would be like, like taking a banana from Bowie. Like, so it would be so easy. But, like, I don't need, I, I ignore them. I ignore these haters. <laughs> it's like the kid that gets bullied on the playground, isn't it? Yeah, he, so he's, he's, I think he has a, a tendency to name drop. And, you know, he's bringing up right there that he has a relationship or that he used to work with uh, Gary Delabate or Baba Booey. Um, what he doesn't reference is that Gary blocked him on Twitter, doesn't want to hear from him. Oh, he so, does reference that. You know, that... You're very wrong. In fact, I have two clips that make him out to be a hypocrite. So the source first clip is him bragging about how he blocks a lot of people. Look, it's it's not that it's unlistenable. It's that people love to listen to hate. I got guys tweeting me that listen that you've blocked on Twitter. Yeah. But they just want to give you a hard time and they want your attention. But they've blocked you, so now they come to me because I'll at least respond to them. Yeah. Well, that's good. Like, you have my liaison. Yeah, because I'm like, guys, just enjoy the show, whatever. Yeah. No, no, because I do see that all the time on Twitter. I, I see you're responding to somebody, but, I, I, but, but the tweet's un, unavailable to me because it says that I've, you know, I've already blocked them. But that's like they want to listen because they want to they wanna hate. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just part of the fucking mechanism. But that's, but that's fine with me. So he says, yeah, I already blocked them, man. I, I block out everyone, you know? F fucking, fucking, I block them. They're not, they're so insignificant. I just block people I don't like, man. I, sometimes I look at a pathetic profile that's talking shit about me, and I see, oh, I wrote, already blocked that guy. What a loser. And then here's some bragging about how he gets blocked. <laughs> I, you know, I, lo <laughs> I love that. I love that people like Bowie are exhausting that much energy into blocking me and to changing their phone number because of me. Isn't that unbelievable? The, the amount of power I have over the buoy? Which is it? Are you proud of blocking people? Are you proud of being blocked? So I, I'm, I'm going to tell him, if he is listening to this, if he wants to block me on Twitter, go right ahead. My Twitter handle is at the Andrew Gerza. <laughs> uh, fuck. Like, even if he found you and he blocked you and he saw that you blocked him first, he would get salty. Right? That's the hypocrisy of this dumbass. But yeah, there you go, Carl. Um, Stuttering John will kick your ass anytime, any place. You name the time and place, but he will never show up because you're just not worth it. The, the cool thing was Stuttering John finally breaking down and calling us out by name. I'm excited <laughs> about that. Because Stuttering John... Oh, shit, there was a, a tweet that came in just this morning. Hold, give me one second here. 
Oh, it's funny th- that Stuttering John sort of says the same things that all talentless hacks say yes! about your show. Yes, is that, you know you don't have any original material. <laughs> you have to go in, and and he thinks it's interesting. He thinks it's like a Kardashian speech all over again, and I can't stand it. He said that I was punching up, yep, punching up, punching up to stuttering fucking John. <laughs> The day that that means I'm punching up is the day I fucking hang it up because that would be wildly pathetic. I'm looking through, I'm doing the thing that other podcasters do that drives me insane. I am scrolling through my Twitter feed. So John Melendez says, it seems they can't stop mentioning me, proving how great my podcast is. Please get me the names of their hosts so I can do research and annihilate them stuttering John style. FYI, I don't fight fair. I don't know what he thinks he's going to do with my full name. Either way. About? He's going to call you and pretend that he's a congressman. Oh, right. Yeah, it's going to be hilarious. Oh, oh Carl, uh, this is uh, 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 Chris Cuomo. Uh, you want to fight? Uh, you want to fight or something? I'll throw you down the stairs. It's funny that he says, they can't stop mentioning me, proving how great my podcast is. John, I want to point something out. I talk about podcasts that suck. It's all I do. I don't talk about the podcasts I like. I never bring them up. I never mention them. You don't hear me go on and on about No Agenda or Joe Rogan. I just talk about the podcasts that suck, and we talk about you a lot. (laughs) So this argument makes zero sense. So Stuttering John talked about us yet again. (laughs) He can't stop talking about us. And I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't listen to Stuttering John's podcast. Thankfully, there are people who do. Okay. And they just send me notes and let me know what time in the show he's talking about me so I can go and find it. Yeah. Because I would not know about this. Right. And John says this. Like, now, if you notice, more shows are mentioning us. Like it's just us, by the way. Right. Not <laughs> more shows. We're just just WATP. As, don't worry, John. As soon as Opie collapses, yeah. it's gonna be you. Yeah, right. It seems like now everyone's going shit. You know, we got to, you know, John's, you know, John's gaining some fame. So let's punch up and try and get him to mention us to give us some steam. So I won't mention these idiots, but, you know, I mean, they just like nonstop, like trash this show, which is only just indicative that they listen every day. Do you know what I mean? And, And it's so sad that their whole life. There's about, I would say, what do you say, about a million podcasts at this point? I, I mean, easily. There's 700,000. Uh, whatever, yeah. They're easily a million. I, I don't Why not? listen, by the way. <laughs> Why not? All right, let's keep it moving. Yeah, it's got to be like a million podcasts. Yet this fucking one show, they, 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 they trash me and Opie. So he starts off by saying, everyone's talking about me now. We got this show. It's so hot. Everyone's talking about me. And then he, he whittles down to, well, there's this one show. <laughs> That makes fun of me and Opie. <laughs> like on a regular basis. Like the only podcast is that they fucking... Why? Because they know we have a lot of listeners. No! No! <laughs> That's the opposite of why. We also make fun of Seamus McKillian. The guy has five views on YouTube. <laughs> he just happens to also suck. That's why. Uh, okay, let's get it moving. And, and, and they want to get attention from me, which I won't give them. <laughs> what? You, you talk mean, about this like, every episode now. <laughs> two weeks in a row now. So don't worry. I'm not going to fucking mention the Three Stooges. All right? That's what I'm calling them. The Three Stooges. It's one because, stooge. You know, these guys have no life. <laughs> They're in the mom's basement. They got... By the way, I just want to say, my mom lives with me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not my mom's basement. It's my basement. No money. But all they could do is listen to other podcasts. I mean, that's kind of lame. If you're a film critic, okay. You know, if you're a, if you're a book critic, okay. I mean, you deserve some kind of journalistic um, accolades. Why? If you're a podcast critic, you are a loser. A loser. <laughs> if you're a TV critic, okay. This guy's going to end up at the beginning of the well, show with this kind of fucking talk. Why? It, it, <laughs> podcast, it's an ocean of diarrhea. Why right. not critique it and say what sucks the worst? And that's you, John. Right. You know. You've made it some somehow. But if you're just commenting on another podcast, 
you're a loser. A loser. That's this is this is his huge takedown that he promised. Yeah, saying loser over and over again. Being called a loser by John Melendez, I can't even <laughs> sum it up. I don't even know how to explain how funny this is. <laughs> Stuttering John Melendez is calling me a loser. It's fucking amazing. All right. I don't. It's not even that. There's a lot of terrible podcasts out there because there are, mm-hmm. and nobody's ever heard of most of them. It's that you had some kind of like height and like pinnacle of your career. And now it's it's been reduced to being as shitty as Girl Camper. Right. This the Morning Toast has more attention. Yeah, Morning Toast is better than the Stuttering Giant show. Morning mm-hmm. Toast is probably fifty x the size of Stuttering John show. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe a hundred x. And mm-hmm. we just got no done exaggeration. Shitting all over that, and that was better than your show. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that, but it kind of is. All right. I would be bored to fuck listening to John's show. At least with Morning Toast, there's content there that yeah, you're is, like, it's all leave. clippable. It's, it's, they're, every show is clip fest. John's show right. is like, uh, yeah, I'm like, what what, what do we clip here? All right. I, nothing I just have 10 seconds left of this thing, and I, I pause it in a weird spot. He said, um, it, it, it's like the Jim Carrey movie. Pet, semi- uh, no, um, pet detective. You're a loser. And that's all I have to say about that. Like the Jim Carrey movie Nail. Pet Cemetery. Okay. Yeah, current, pet. Current we all know that. <laughs> it's Ventura <at> Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Sorry, John is stupid, unfunny, <laughs> unentertaining. <laughs> Is unentertaining a word? I, I don't think put, so. He's un- inentertaining. <laughs> inentertaining. Yeah. Just put on in front of anything, and that's him. It's unbelievable. Un- is the un. un- Unhuman. Is unpod. Unfuckable. You know what's really funny is, so Jim Norton called me last night. No. So I was on his show on Tuesday. Are you listening, John? <laughs> well, this is what's funny about this. Jim Norton called me because I was talking shit about John on his show. Yeah. And he goes, listen, man, I just want to let you know, I'm going to leave that in. I don't want to censor anyone, but I know John. I'm going to give him a call and just let him know. I'm going to give him a heads up. So this fucking guy is going to get a call from Jim Norton saying, hey, just so you know, Carl from Who Are These Podcasts was shitting on you on the chip show. And I, I, don't, I just don't want you to be upset about it. It's all in good fun. And this guy's going, you're a fucking loser. Living yeah. in your mouth. Oh, hey, Jim Norton. No, you want to be on my show? No, I just wanted to tell you that we make fun of you. Oh, Oh, Jim, Jim, can I come on the chip show? Nah, yeah. no, no, no. Well, the thing about that is you're out in L.A. and it's oh, all no, Oh, my God. That's so awesome because John is going to get the call. Yes. They're like, oh, hey, it's Jim Norton calling. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be like, oh, I wonder if he wants me to be on third Sirius chip? XM. Be a third or course. if he wants me to be on yeah, Chip Chippers and Podcast. Show. No, it's going to be like, oh, hi, I just want you to know that uh, uh, we shit all over you. Bye. <laughs> I hope you're not upset, but we talk about how shitty your podcast is. John Melendez is going to get hit with that. Just like, what the fuck is going on here? I thought it was just some asshole in his mom's basement. All right. It's too funny. So this is, I just want to show you guys how terrible Stuttering John is. I'm dying. It's unbelievable. Stuttering John, if you don't remember, used to play in a rock band. Yes. He plays guitar. He sings. And thankfully, he's bringing all of his talents back to his podcast with this song parody. Oh, no. Because you remember how this week, President Trump said he's the chosen one? <laughs> okay. You guys yeah, know yeah, about yeah, this yeah, story? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So Who st- said J- Stuttering John's the chosen one? <laughs> So, no, Trump said he <laughs> said it about himself. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, having, it, was a, it was in just having to do with the uh, trade war with China. But yeah. this is Stuttering John turning that into comedy gold. As he's known to do. <laughs> All right, so I wrote a little, a little ditty here. Um, ditty? I'm, yeah, and I'm going to sing it, okay? It's about Jack and Diane? It, it, nope. It's about Donald Trump Superstar. Okay, you guys all know Jesus Christ Superstar. Do you hear my guitar at all? Fortunately. <laughs> that is not in tune, right? Donald Trump Superstar. Do you think you're what you say you are? Donald Trump, big dickhead. You have a total dick and your ass is the size of a shed. What? <laughs> you guys aren't laughing at Sarah. <laughs> I don't want to step on this. <laughs> Twelve bar bridge. <laughs> 
Okay, I was gonna point out the same thing. When you're doing a song parody, you don't have to play the exact length of the song. It's go through the chord progression twice. That's fine, John. One time, let's keep going. Keep it with the jokes, dummy. I hear Every time I look at you, I don't understand. What? Wait, 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 wait. Every time I look at you, I don't understand. Why you have such big gas and such tiny hands? Now you are president and you don't have a plan. And now you think of the, the, the king of the Jewish land. Now you think of the chosen oh one. God. Is that all you got? <laughs> Meanwhile, your penis is the size of a blue knot. I guess <laughs> like you thought they were airports in the blush. Revolutionary like, War. I'm so embarrassed. You're boring as a fucking you're such a camera whore. Donald Trump, orange man, you know what they I'm say about to be listening to such it. tiny hands. Yeah, I know. This is tough. It's almost done. I apologize. <laughs> but listen to this fucking kiss ass he has on his show. Tell him how great this was afterwards. By the way, this is a train wreck. <laughs> no <laughs> shit. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is so terrible. It's terrible every single time. Right? Right? It's, it's uncomfortably <laughs> terrible. Even if he had executed it properly, it's not funny right. in any way. There's no jokes. Mm -mm. But he's executing it so terribly. Yeah. All right, let's, let's keep going. Donald Trump, <laughs> chosen one. Have you ever tried a hamburger without eating the bun? Thank you. Yeah. We're gonna drive it home. Thank you very much. Frank, it's radio. Nobody sees that lighter. Thank you very much. I like that. Hey, I like the li that they, last line there, too. Tune in Thank to you. TV First time performed live. Line. What the <laughs> fuck? He goes, I like that last line, too. He said, D have you ever eaten a cheeseburger without the bun? Yeah. Is that an Atkins yeah, diet yeah, joke? Yeah. What the yeah. fuck are we talking yeah, about right. here? Is Stuttering John in good shape? <laughs> He's making fun of the president for being fat? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm, I'm like sh shell-shocked by that. Is that amazing? He starts, I, he picks up a guitar. It's wildly out of tune. He starts <laughs> strumming away. Yeah. And then he doesn't know the melody of the song. He can't sing it correctly. Right. And the lyrics are all over the fucking yeah. place. I, I didn't know that, like, shame could, like, spike you, like, adrenaline. Oh, I was going to say, I feel like embar I have, like, that embarrassed yeah. feeling, like, coming through the internet mm. into my body. Oh, God. But we're the losers, yeah. guys. Yeah. We're the losers. Oh, man. All right. Stuttering John, man. We love you, buddy. Keep it going. Thank you so much. Thank Don't you. Never stop podcasting. Never stop podcasting. We need you. There was a, a big incident that occurred in this past week. Now I talked about it last week that I was on the chip Chipperson podcast and mm -hmm. being on the chip show, I was doing my usual thing of talking about how certain podcasts suck. And I mentioned stuttering John and I don't think anything of it. I'm just talking about, Oh yeah, I listen to this podcast. We've talked about it a few times. It sucks. Well, I forget cause I'm not in that world. I forget that, like Jim Norton knows John. They've, they're probably friends to some degree. And so Jim Norton called me and said, Hey, I just want to let you know, I'm going to give John a heads up that we talked about him on the show before I put it out, which is hysterical to me. And then he did call John and John tweeted about the fact that, yeah, I got a call from Jim Norton. He's a great guy, blah, 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 blah. So then, and I'm going to, I'm going to make this the, uh, cringe of the week. Cringe of the week. This is the cringe of the week segment. John gets on his show and blasts us. And Kevin, somebody posted this in our subreddit. Did you, did you see this at all? Did you hear it? No, I haven't. Oh, well, you're going to love this. Okay. This is good. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you don't know about this. So stuttering John did a whole thing about WATP and I'm just going to run through a couple of clips and I'll comment on it. I, I, I'm a little bit bummed because this should be fun. Like we're this, our show is a roast. We're roasting other shows. We're like, Oh, this sucks. You, you're not very good. And then they can roast us back. And I've oftentimes played people making fun of me on my show. Cause I think it's funny. That, that's the whole point of this. Like we're, we're all in this together. John is not having any fun with this anymore. <laughs> he does not appreciate what we're doing over here. And here's evidence of that. I also then spoke to Opie's, Opie's producer. It, you know, Opie from Opie and Anthony. Yes, I've heard of him. And, <laughs> and, and we talked about this, you know, about these certain idiots, you know, and, and, you know, how they like, 
trying to milk off of our success to like give themselves a name. But I, I, you know, I'm not going to fucking gratify them by like, you know, giving them any name. But then I just thought about it. Right. They're playing pieces of this podcast. They don't have our permission for that. So I got a lawyer who's my friend. He'll send them a cease and desist. They shouldn't be allowed to play my song that I wrote. All right. So John's not having fun with this. He wants to shut this whole thing down. And by the way, that recording that I just played where it's all lopsided on the right side, I didn't do that. His show just sucks. It sounds like garbage. <laughs> so suddenly John's on there saying, did you listen? I don't know if you listened to our show last week, but we played this parody song that John played live on his show and was, okay. was so embarrassing. There's no talent there. He can't broadcast. He can't sing. He can't write funny jokes. His guitar playing was out of tune. <laughs> so he's upset that we played his song. And he says, well, I'm going to get a, a lawyer involved in this. And then Royce, who's his sidekick on the show, thank God, is the voice of reason. I don't. That doesn't bother me. No, it bothers me. Yeah, but, I, you know, we play stuff. I think that's fair game. It's, it, I think that would also wait, be wait, wait. fair use. Wait, who? Do we play someone else's podcast? No, 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 no. We play, we'll play clips from Howard's show. But he plays clips from me. No, I get it. But That's I, different. But I, under the laws of fair use, if they're talking about this show and playing a clip, <laughs> that's okay. I don't know. That's fair use. Check out the big brain on Brad. <laughs> so <laughs> this is so funny. Because I was actually talking to Croge about this last night. We were laughing about this. He says th- they can't play clips of my show. And Royce goes, no, they can. It's under the fair use clause of the copyright act and he goes you know we play howard's show and fucking dummy says that's different that that's different and he's right it is different howard stern's show is a subscriber-based show that's owned by sirius xm and you have to subscribe to it to hear it and it's owned by somebody so there could be copyright laws actually involved in that your show is on the internet for anyone to listen to anytime they want anyone can pull clips put it up on youtube you you don't have anything that you could do about that you're putting it out there for free for everyone right right and then he's complaining yeah. about pulling clips from it like yeah dummy that's how this works <laughs> Oh, man. You always seem to find yourself in some fucking bullshit here. <laughs> I do. I piss what people the... off. Yeah. <laughs> and the craziest part is, Stuttering John is famous because he's a notorious troll. The reason why he's famous is because he would go to red carpet events or he would break into press conferences and ask questions that got him assaulted. He would say things to celebrities that pissed them off so much they would assault him. Yeah. And now he's complaining that someone's making fun of him on the internet? Does he yeah, not know what world weird, he's in? <laughs> it's a very weird weird thing cuz he would be the last guy honestly of of the like kind of legacy Stern crew like that that we grew up with, you know, mm-hmm. like Jackie and all those guys. Yeah. I feel like John would have been the last guy that would have not been able to sort of take a joke. You know, like he seemed like the one that was like down for the craziest shit. Like he would you know, do these crazy red carpet interviews and, you know, got whatever, punched by fucking Morton Downey Jr. or whatever right, it was. Right, that's why you this know, is so was, funny. Yeah, he was so, like, it, so for him to be, you know, and I don't know, maybe it's a fucking uh, an, an, an age thing. Maybe he's gotten to the age where he's like, well, fuck it, I, you know, I'm trying to, you know, preserve what I have or whatever. But I don't know, I just thought he'd be cooler than it turns out that he has been. It's an insecurity thing. He knows his show sucks. And so now he's getting mad that we're pointing it out. And he says this, which is the opposite of his essence, in my opinion. I don't know. I think we can, I think we could, I think we could stick it with a cease and desist. Well, you can stick anybody with a cease and desist. Well, then that's what I want to do. All right. That's what I want to do. Because you know what? You know, you know, I don't give a fuck. They'll have to pay for a lawyer. I got mine for free. And, and I, and I, and, 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 and that's the kind of guy I am. Because like, you know, dude, I'm telling you. Don't fuck with the eagles if you don't know how to fly. And that is my, that's, I will get you in the end. I guarantee it. I will get you in the end. All right, so a couple of things funny that are happening here. He says that's how he goes about his business is by getting lawyers involved and legal action, which really, Sonny John, that's how you go about, that's 
bizarre. And then he makes a threat right after that. He goes, and by the way, these fucking guys, wait till they see what I'm going to do. Like, whoa, 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 what's going on? Are we talking about taking legal action or are we making threats? Because there's two different things going on here. Very, very confused by this. Yeah, I don't get it, man. I, I really don't. I didn't even point out that. the first clip that I played. He says he's talking to Opie's producer. He's like trying to start this like anti WATP coalition against us. And someone in the subreddit had a great comment. They go, I, I don't think this is possibly true. There's no way that Opie's show has a producer, which I thought was very funny. <laughs> uh, shit. All right. So Jim Norton called John Melendez to apologize for having me on his show, the Chip Chipperson podcast, and talking shit about John. This is why I love Jim Norton. Jim Norton, you know, called me to essentially give me the heads up and apologize for having these idiots on because he didn't know that they were going to be on there to trash me. Do you know what, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 I I I believe Jim. I do. All right. So he called him to apologize for having these idiots on. They just came on to trash him. Now, I just want to point out that I didn't have an agenda. I was just rolling with the punches when I was on uh, Chip Chipperson. And they asked me about the show, like, what are you guys doing? What are you guys up to? Like, oh, we've been talking about how John sucks. Whatever. Whatever's going on recently is just what I brought up. I didn't. I wasn't thinking that I'm going to go on the show and trash stuttering John. That wasn't my objective right. for going on the show. But it's funny that he says... Jim Norton called me to apologize for having these idiots on. Now, I'm just going to say this, and I don't know what the ramifications are going to be, but I mentioned that Jim Norton called me up after this show. He literally said to me, you were great. We'll have you on anytime you want. Just let us know. So I don't think that it's true that he told John, I didn't know that they were going to do that. I'm so sorry. These fucking idiots came on and talked shit about you. He enjoyed me on the show and will have me back anytime. It doesn't sound like somebody who's going to call Stuttering John and be like, dude, these fucking guys are uh, unhinged and they just fucking went after you. And I apologize. I don't think John understood what that phone call was. I get the impression that I've never, well, I've, I've met God, geez, uh, Jim Norton once. I mean, yeah. if you call that a meeting, but he strikes me as the type of guy who doesn't generally want to piss off his friends. You know, like he doesn't want to get on people's bad sides. He likes to just sort of play it down the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're, um, unless you're Opie, in which case he'll just fucking crush him. But he's actually, <laughs> yeah, you're right. He's very neutral. He's not a guy who's going to talk a lot of shit. And right. he's probably just trying to play all sides, which makes sense. Yeah. He's, I mean, you know, I'd like to think that I, I try to do the same thing. I try not to be one way or the other. Maybe that's why it never really worked well for me as a co-host on this show. Cause I can't, it's hard for me to, to dump on people. Let's just but, say, I let's mean, just say what you're trying to say. You're an Epstein apologist. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all exact, know it. It's exactly it's out what there. I was trying to say. <laughs> yes. So after Jim Norton calls stuttering John, John has to verify that that actually happened. Yeah, all right. You know, Jim is a friend always Jim Florentine too. He, you know, he's a friend too. Cause I had to check with Jim Florentine. I go, is this, is this, is this Norton's, is this his number? Can you verify? Because then he goes, yeah, it's him. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't know. You know, I didn't know if it was some guy, because I guess he, some guy gets a hold of my phone number and starts pranking me. So, so I, you know, I, I, like, I never know if someone's trying to pull my leg. This is something you could have left out of your podcast, John. When you mentioned that you had to call Jim Florentine to figure out if you got pranked or not, just pretend that you have Jim Norton's number in your phone because you are a celebrity and a comedian and move on. I don't know why he decided to tell that part of the story. It's kind of embarrassing. Sometimes I get pranked by people who pretend to be famous people and they rip on me. So I just wanted to make sure with Jim that that wasn't the case. <laughs> Says the guy who <laughs> made a living can only be both right. So let's <laughs> yeah, not forget like... that. Let's not forget what this guy is known for. I know he's the announcer from the Tonight Show, and that's what he wants to be known for. But the reason why he's famous is because he fucks with people all the time. Right. Oh, this is great. So he goes back to talking about his conversation with Opie's producer, which must have been. I I, I would love to get a copy of that conversation. It must have been amazing. This is. Something that is hilarious that he says. But getting back to, I was talking to Opie's producer. I'm just like, you know, and like, and they're doing the same thing 
that we're doing, just ignoring these fucking losers because they're just losers, you know. You know, and anyone who lives in fucking Rochester is already a loser, okay? <laughs> yes, I said it. <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. But here's the thing. I don't mean all the good people in Rochester, just this certain prick in his mom's basement. But here's the thing. So Stuttering Jed literally says, and I, I can't believe he's this dumb. He literally says, I talked to Obi's producer. They're doing the same thing we're doing and ignoring him. John, <laughs> they literally are ignoring me. Opie has never talked about me. No one's ever brought it up on the show. They're doing a much better job of ignoring me than you are. You talk about me every single week. Every week you talk <laughs> about me nonstop. It's why I have to keep playing these clips. I'm, I'm, move, I'm ready to move on, but this is too funny that you're obsessed with us talking about your show. You think it means that your show is amazing. It doesn't. Is that what that means? They're just like us. Well, they're, they're just ignoring them. That he's got something going now. You know, I mean, this is like he's got some action now. You can kind of work off of this. And, Correct. you know, that's content for the show, really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, he loves it. In fact, this was a clip. This wasn't on the, the video that someone posted on the subreddit, but I was checking out the beginning of an episode from August 27th, and he starts off the show talking about how everyone's talking about him. You know, Steve Grillo is his doing a show and he's got he's got my picture on it and he's talking about me and you know i mean anthony comia chip chipperson man i you know that must that must be a good thing if 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 so many different shows are talking about this show wouldn't you say so royce i would say so so he says steve grill has got a picture of me well yeah you guys both worked on the howard stern show together that's not a big deal and then he says, you know who else is talking about me? Anthony Cumia, Chip Chipperson. No, those are both my appearances on those two shows. I was talking about you, not Anthony or Chip. That was me. And he's trying to turn this into like everyone's talking about me. No, just this one asshole in his mom's basement in Rochester. That's the only person. It's the only person who gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite literally. Uh, I like that he condemned the entire city of Rochester. That's I do cool. too. I know. I like that. <laughs> Rochester sucks because of me. I think there is yeah. some truth to that. I mean, that's the reason I moved away. I mean, shit. <laughs> that, that could be true, too. That yeah. could very well be true. God. First, you, first you quit my band, and then you're like, I got to get out of here. And then I start, you know, we start the fucking WTP, and I'm like, fuck this. I can't do this. Kevin literally, to different states. Kevin literally <laughs> moved to Seattle. It's about as far away as you could possibly move <laughs> and still live in the continental United States. Uh, oh, this is making a lot of sense. It hurts. It's very hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to Centering John, this is him threatening us some more. But here's the thing. The, you know, these guys don't know. They don't know what I'm up to. They have no idea how I'm going to get them back. But, you know, but I will. Okay. So he's going to get us back. He's ignoring us. And we're punching up. And he doesn't care about us. And he's also going to get us back. So he's saying a lot of things, pretty much everything. None of it makes sense. Speaking of not making sense, listen to how confusing this show is. Imagine, Kevin, that you're just a podcast listener. You don't know who WATP is, like most people. And you know Stuttering John because he used to be on Howard Stern. And you go, oh, let me check out his podcast. I want to see what he's up to. Listen to this conversation between him and Royce and tell me anyone can follow this or knows what the fuck is going on. If you don't know where you well, stand. I mean, if, if it's nonstop every day, there's going to be a different person on your show trashing me. Yeah, but, th okay, because now people are going to start speculating. It's not, I guarantee you, most people are going to think it's somebody who it's not. Yeah, of but, course. But the point is, is to, to bring up these people, is, yeah. again, it's giving them a free No, eye. no, it's not who, the, I, I know who you're thinking. No, it's not who. No, I know who it is, but I know who people think it yeah, is. No, yeah, no, it, it's not who they think it is. It's got very meta. <laughs> Kevin, are you following what? this? Wait a minute. Are you following no, this conversation? <laughs> so who do they think it is? Do they think it's... So John is talking about this person, but it's not who you think that he's talking about. But Royce knows who he's talking about, but maybe he doesn't because he goes, I don't know if you know who I'm talking about. No, I know. Okay. But it's not that one. No, I know. It's the other one. Right. Yeah, I get it. Holy shit. Oh my God. <laughs> my takeaway would be if I was, you know, a neophyte to the whole... WATP universe, and I, I was tuning into the 
Stuttering John podcast because I heard he was on whatever, whatever the case. And I'm listening to it, and he's going on and on about Carl from fucking WATP. The first thing I would do would go, you know what? I'm going to fucking listen to this WATP show. <laughs> like, I'm totally going to check this out. He's really riled up about this. So, I mean, he's driving traffic to you, um, and I don't think that that's obviously what he wants, but that's exactly what he's doing by drawing attention to it. So he's not. He doesn't mention us by name. He's mentioned us by name only one time. Oh, okay. All right. So you'll notice he 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 says, I don't want to give them any publicity. So if you're just listening oh, to the gotcha. show, he he says, yeah, these fucking assholes in their mom's basement. He calls us the Three Stooges. He's got nicknames for us, but he never mentions who we are. He doesn't want to give us any publicity. And obviously he's talking about me. He says Rochester. He talks about us on Chip. He talks about Jim calling him. So he's obviously talking about me. This is not up for debate, but he doesn't give us any publicity. The funny thing is, Kevin, there are way more people who listen to, and I, I feel bad saying this, but it is true. There are way more people who listen to WATP than listen to Stuttering John. He should be loving this. We have people going and listening to his show just to send me timestamps to let me know what I should pull clips from. He, it's the reason why people are downloading his show is because of this show. And maybe he's smarter than I give him credit for, and he knows that, and that's why he keeps bringing us up. I don't know. It's possible. I mean, it, it very well could be that it's a whole – it's just a work. The whole thing is – It could be. This is something for him to chew on every week and kind of showcase his quote-unquote witty – talent of being able to like yeah. you know rip on people but, like that might be his Kevin, thing I, that would be that's what he should be doing but instead he says i'm going to get lawyers involved and set up a yeah, season yeah. like that's not a roast we're not having a back and forth comedy thing going on right now like that's the well i'm just gonna shut this all down like oh okay oh. why what, what just happened i thought we were right. i thought we had a thing going like for me i will readily admit that that's what i'm doing I'm milking this for as much as I can. Anytime somebody John mentions our show, I'm going to continue to play the clips of it and talk about it. So that's obvious. I don't know what his angle is. I don't know what he's trying to accomplish. This is him talking about why everyone's talking about his podcast, which he couldn't be more off base with this. You know, people just, because they're loving this podcast. They're loving this podcast. And that's why those other idiots go after me and Opie all the time because Opie and I have successful podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's not oh, way. <laughs> Kevin, did you know that the reason why we talk about Opie and Cedric Jad every week is because their podcasts are so successful? Did you know that? I mean, clearly. Yeah, I mean, I should. I definitely knew that, that they're, you know... Uh, I'm reading the Discord right now, and everyone's like, <laughs> "Poor Carl, yeah, uh, poor poor Kevin thinks Stuttery John has listeners." <laughs> yeah, Kevin's fucking out of it, man. Yeah, I'm, I am true. very much removed <laughs> from this, but uh, I don't know. You just, I, I guess, you expect coming from you know a comedy world that that you would have thicker skin. I mm -hmm. guess is is really what my point would be. But yes. Thank you. That is the point to make. Why are you so sensitive to criticism? Is it because you know you suck? I'm guessing that's why. Because honestly, if your show is so great and you have all these great things happening for you, then you would be like, I don't know, Howard Stern or Adam Carolla or all these other shows that I've made fun of that have never once acknowledged my existence. That's how you deal with people like me. You never acknowledge my existence. As soon as you do, like if you're the host of the Vanished podcast, you, you fucking acknowledge my existence, bad things happen. That's what happens when, when you do that. Don't do that. I shouldn't be giving away the playbook right now, but all right. I just have one more clip to play. This is from a different episode. I actually couldn't find the episode where he talked about threatening us with legal action. I only saw it on the YouTube clip. So I was looking at another episode and at the very beginning. I don't know if this is after. It must be after he said all of that. I hope. Because it seems like he's come around. Well, it's kind of good they're promoting me. <laughs> you know? Yes, but don't promote yeah. them. No. No, I'm not going to. No, but, I, and then they'll stop talking about you. But they're giving me free publicity. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it's great. I mean, who gives a fuck what they say? They no, who cares? They have no credential. They've never done anything. Well, you don't know. They could have a credential. Not really. It's like Trump when Trump goes, I've got an award. I just make it up and I give myself oh, yeah. an award. Yeah, no, they're just nobodies. But it's just so funny. But, you know. Yes. 
John, yes, that's exactly right. We're giving you free publicity. We're nobodies. Yes, this is all true. Stop yeah. being so butthurt about it and play along like a fucking actual comedian would do. Who cares? Who cares what we're saying? It's so funny. <laughs> I think that that's the real problem, right? Is that his career has just passed him by and it's it's a bummer. It's got to be a bummer. Yeah, I mean shit, my career's passed me by fucking <laughs> a long time ago. Right. When you left you WATP. Know? Yeah, exactly. It, it soared to the great heights. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Yes, please. I want to talk about we have to talk about unfortunately Stuttering John because he has now Taking the next move in chess as we figure out whether or not we're allowed to play clips of his show and review it. He's talked to an attorney and he has gotten the advice to do this before every show. No, 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 no. I am. I am incredibly uh, pissed off. But let me just start the podcast, you know, by saying uh, this uh, podcast, this copywritten podcast is presented by the authority. Of the Stuttering John podcast and TV remix. It may not be reproduced without the express written consent of the Stuttering John podcast and TV remix. Thank you. Okay, so there's a disclaimer now. Where John is saying before every episode that you're not allowed to rebroadcast his podcast because it's copywritten. And he throws out there that it's copywritten by Stuttering John podcast and TV remix. I had never heard of TV remix. So I went ahead and Googled that. There's a website. It's not on a secure server. So if you're using Chrome like most people, (laughs) they tell you not to go there. You have to jump through hoops to even get to the site. But whatever, I did. So I go on this website and they have these lists of shows. And it's all these video shows that you can watch. So I started clicking in. There's like uh, Royce's Star Wars podcast, A Stern Talking To, Royce's Arcade, Bachetti's Basement. And as I click into each of these podcasts, because on the main homepage, you can click into each of these podcasts and see all the episodes. Every single one of them is one episode, one season. Season one, episode one, that's it. Yeah, there you so go. They, get, they get one episode of these shows, and then nobody wants anything to do with it anymore because it's not working. Yeah. But you do have, now in season two of Stuttering <clears throat> John's show, I thought it was interesting when... Royce, who I like a lot, Royce is the sidekick to Stuttering John on his show. Royce mentioned that we can play clips because it's fair use. It's part of the copyright, even if it's a copyright. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. You're allowed to critique and evaluate pop culture works all the time. Especially of course. Especially shit that other people put out for free on the internet, but I'm sorry. Cor- yeah. Go ahead. It's, <laughs> in- it's insane to think that I can't play Stuttering John's podcast. If I was just putting it out as my work... Yeah, and selling advertising around it. Yeah, of course, that's that would be a problem. But what we're doing is we're commenting on it and then playing clips. And Royce said, "Yeah, they can do that." And I think the reason why he did that is because Royce has a Star Wars podcast that starts like this. <laughs> Keep going. I'm texting John Williams right now. Yeah, somebody give Disney. Lucasfilms Limited, John Williams. I want all these people giving a heads up about this. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to Royce's Arcade Star Wars Podcast. Episode 1, not to be confused with The Phantom Menace. These fucking idiots are wow. putting out a disclaimer that says, "You, this is copywritten and you can't <laughs> use it. They're starting up their show with the most iconic John Williams music ever written. Yeah. You think that might be, I don't know. A copyright infringement? Well, possibly. And if you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiots. This is why Royce is like, let's not go down that road, John, <laughs> because we're trying to do the same shit they're doing, and yeah. it's not a good idea. Just like, fuck it. I'm talking to a lawyer. We're gonna put out a disclaimer. That's so retarded. It's so retarded. You know what? And there was a there was a news story about this a week or two ago. A bunch of uh, celebrities fell for this Instagram hoax, yeah. where people, you know, and uh, you've you've seen this on Facebook a million times. People will copy and paste something. I do not give Facebook my permission to use my photos, and it's all a hoax. And, right. and you know, something goes around. Hey, you need to copy and paste this, otherwise Mark Zuckerberg's going to come to your house and kidnap your dog. Right. And everybody believes it, and uh, you know this happens all the time. But yeah, it happens sorry. to idiots. Uh, yeah, idiots and an idiot with a podcast apparently. But yeah. Go ahead. All right, so with all of that said, 
I want to tell you that I'm not looking for legal trouble. That's not the point of this podcast. It's not? I, mean, I have of other not. shit to do, Croge, <laughs> than to deal with cease and desists and attorneys and all uh. this kind of nonsense. So what I've done is I've taken a clip where Stuttering John is threatening physical violence against me. There you go. While intertwining that with getting the law involved in legal matters, which is great. You yeah. always want to have both things of course, yeah. come out. And I wanted to play that clip, but I can't because of this disclaimer stops me from doing that. Oh, yeah. So what I've done Your is hands are tied. I have transcribed the conversation and then reenacted it verbatim. This is word for word. I'll be playing the role of Stuttering John. Jen from the Jingles Department will be playing the role of Royce. Word for word. And we're both frustrated. We want to, like, fucking kill somebody right now. And I'm I'm not even kidding. No. <laughs> I want to put a contract out on somebody right now. I, I swear to you. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, I'm only kidding. Um... Obviously, I would never do that. I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> so, look. All right. Right off the bat, people on Twitter are saying, oh, you're really getting in John's head because he read a disclaimer on the front of his podcast. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nah. I'm just covering this podcast ass. Why should why should anybody b- 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 be able to lift this amazing content and use it for their own benefit? There is no reason for it. And this is a copywritten podcast and no one is allowed to do that. And if they do, I'll have your legs broken. <laughs> Jesus. No. So now stop making jokes. Oh, I know. Oh, 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 oh. What's the guy's number? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, if, if they do, I'll just have my, I'll just have my, my look, look. I got lawyers in LA. I got lawyers in New York. And they uh, are very, 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 very dear friends to me. And, and they don't. Mind fucking, you know, uh, uh, you know, like going to bat, you know, for me. And I know I said a lot of you knows. Well, that was the first question I have here. Yeah. Someone wants to know how many times you think you say, you know, on a podcast. Hey, how much am I in this guy's fucking head? He starts off his show with a disclaimer, then talks about wanting to put a contract out on me, break my legs. And then as soon as he starts getting fumbled, and saying you know a bunch of times. He goes, ah, I know I'm saying you know a lot. This is what they make fun of me for. It's got to be a tough life. Like, just ignore me, John. Yeah. It's going to yeah, be so much easier for everyone. I saw he's not having a whole lot of fun in life. I had a lot of fun doing that, though, if you couldn't tell. Yeah, that's good times. And I got to say, I mean, of the of all the blatant lies in there, the idea that Stuttering John has friends, I'm not buying that. Well, oh, you know, I, I got I got friends in uh, in New York. Yeah. And, uh, no. uh, yeah. My Stuttering John impression is terrible. Yeah. It's maybe the worst thing. Just, I think he was reading lyrics to Johnny Cash. <laughs> yeah. I, I got lawyers in Reno and Chicago, Fargo, Minnesota, uh, Buffalo, yeah. Toronto. <laughs> I'll see you everywhere, Carl. I'll see you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, I do have some John clips if you're okay with it. I'm okay with that. I don't know what the attorneys will be, but let's do it. Well, we'll deal. We'll deal with that later. Um, So uh, play my number 35. All it is, is just a brief sentence that he tried spitting out. I just want to point out to John and Royce who are listening to this. This is Doug from the who's right podcast who pulled this clip and is asking me to play it. Who's what yeah. is it? who's right please, podcast.com? Please that, send all correspondence to Doug at who's right dot ru dot uk. Thank you. Right. If if you want to have direct connection with me, John, go to patreon.com slash who's right. <laughs> I will I will say I got the I I think I'm getting the uh I think I think the I think the rope is being cut. Wow. Okay, now I took the I took the liberty. If you play number 34, I will say, I think the rope is being cut. Oh, wow. yeah. That sounds normal. It sounds like how that was normal... nine seconds removed from that. Nine <laughs> seconds to get from A to B. Yeah. So you, what you're saying is with editing, you can make John sound like a broadcaster, like an actual yeah. professional. Wow. And if he'd keep his mouth shut, he wouldn't be a fucking liar. Play number 36 <laughs> okay. and you're going to hear a repeat, but it's. I didn't want to go through the trouble of finding another clip. A Mensa member will be able to figure out. This is why stutterers, b- believe it or not, there have been studies. Stutterers are on the higher end 
of the intelligence scale. No, 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 no. <laughs> so I, I did some digging, and yeah. this is this is a quote. In reality, there is no link whatsoever between stuttering and intelligence. Reality, nervousness does not cause stuttering, nor should one assume that people who stutter are prone to being nervous. At, nothing that he said is fact. It is bullshit. He says that is like, his brain is working so fast that his mouth can't keep up. That's what he said right after that. <laughs> He's so, yeah, so smart, Crows, it, you can't even spit it out quite yeah, quick enough. Yeah, that's the problem. That's it the problem. would be like me coming on here and saying it is a known fact that people that pee on their own balls are smarter than people that don't. <laughs> I haven't done the research, so I can't say one way or the other. Yeah, Trust me. Trust me. It's fact. <laughs> what about sitting at your balls from time to time? Do I get any points for that? Uh, anything yeah, else? Sure. Um, all the points. Anything else on John before we move on? Uh, nope. Yeah. Lighten up, buddy. Jesus fucking Seriously. Christ. Dude, extend your life by decades. Lighten the fuck up. Do you know, who, do you know who else went really strong on copyright issues with us and reached out to Apple to try to get us shut down and reached out to Libsyn to try to get us shut down. You know, I, I can't recall a car. It was a humorless cunt <laughs> who does a show about vanished people. Uh, That's what I expect. Not a comedian who's trolled <laughs> celebrities for his entire career. <laughs> the, what oh, is going on? What, 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 I want to be like Pat Oates. What world is this? This is the state <laughs> of the world. <laughs> That Suttering John is trying to break my legs because we make fun of him because his podcast sucks. What the fuck is going on here? Uh, I understand that if you're doing a uh, podcast and that's your whole livelihood and you're trying to find out about people who are missing and trying to help them, pretending to help them out, whatever yeah. you're doing, and I go on and say, fuck those people, then you might get upset about that. I get that. I understand why she's yeah. upset. Carl, I got a, I got a serious question for you. Yeah. Um, you, so you've been in this world long before the podcast. You were familiar with Stuttering John and, yeah. and Stern and all that shit. Crozier and I, I did mean, you, we've we've gone way back with oh, yeah. Howard Stern and back Stuttering John. Nineties. Yeah. Did did you ever think back then that you would get to a position in life where Stuttering John is threatening to break your legs? Isn't that kind of interesting? <laughs> Actually, that's Carl's dream come true. <laughs> it's my dream job. <laughs> yeah, all you other podcasters, if you don't have a job, threatening to break your legs, then what the fuck are you doing? Just quit. Just quit right now. Because that's what I do. I have a job breaking my legs. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> like for me, it would be like if 15-year-old Doug um, was to be watching Leaping Lanny Poffo in the field house somewhere in central Illinois, and now today... I think he's dead, but if he wanted to break my leg, to me, that would be an amazing accomplishment. <laughs> I've never judged my life on those standards before, but yeah. you've really, uh, I'm coming around on it. I want to give a <laughs> quick stuttering John Melendez update, because if you remember from last week, stuttering John has started doing this new thing where he has a disclaimer that he says at the beginning of his podcast that explains mm -hmm. you cannot. <laughs> pull clips from his podcast and play them on your show. And mm -hmm. I was given word. I don't listen to stuttering John, but I was given word from our listeners that he's already abandoned that technique. So he put out a show on September 10th and never made any point about that, which is funny because I think we pointed out on our show that there is the fair use clause and saying that doesn't help you in any single way. So then I listened to mm -hmm. his episode from September 11th and he starts off the show once again with this disclaimer. And then he also has some weird legal threats against me that he kind of masks a little bit. And I can tell that he reads our subreddit because one of the things that we were crushed on last week was saying copy written, which is not a word. It's a copyright and it's copyrighted. And I was, this was pointed out to me because it's not, yeah, it's not like the word right. You wouldn't say written. So mm -hmm. John Melendez in this even corrects himself. So I can tell that he's also reading the same reviews that I'm reading on our subreddit. Yeah, baby. Welcome to the Stuttering John podcast. Let me just start off by what my attorney told me to say. This podcast is copyright written under 
Co- hold on. This podcast is copyrighted under and subject to the laws of the United States. John Melendez, 2019. Thank you, Mike. And don't worry, Lenny. We're going to do what we're going to do, like we talked about. Anyway, that's my New York attorney. That's right. That's right, Royce. How are you, Royce D'Orazio? Hey, my attorney's Lenny. Yeah, I got, I, got, I got two that are very dear friends to me. Very dear friends. And they don't mind. They don't mind doing me some favors. So his attorney, Lenny, from New York is going to do him some favors. And they got to do what they got to do. So obviously this is not so much a thinly veiled threat, but just a threat against myself mm. and, and WATP, which I find extremely amusing. This is the guy who's threatened to break my legs. He's threatened to take me out. And I'm excited about this idea that there's going to be some type of lawsuit because I've talked shit about him on the internet. There's a precedent set for this. Are you aware of that, Kaya? Uh, I could imagine. Is it a show you're going on tomorrow? (laughs) Yes, it is. All right, we talked about this ahead of time. (laughs) Um, There there was this thing called the lull suit where Maddox sued Dick Masterson for talking shit about him. And it was thrown out of court with prejudice, meaning he is not allowed to ever bring that lawsuit back again. And so I did reach out to Dick about this, and I'm planning on going on his show tomorrow to talk about what could possibly be the lull suit part two, which is uh, I'm excited about. Make sure to have a Patreon ready by the time the files are all filed and delivered to you. No shit. You want to milk this one. <laughs> That's a good point. Kind I know. A bunch of assholes, man. Suing people for making fun of you. And we're yeah. a show that we've shown time and time again that if you get it and you have fun with it, you could be a part of it. Kaya is a co-host on the official podcast, a podcast that we made fun of. He was so excited. He played clips from it. He's come on the show multiple times since then. Doug from Who's Right. We've had time. Even Dick Masterson. We made fun of the Dick show. He's been a uh, co-host. We've shown examples time and time again that it's a roast. And if you take it real seriously, it doesn't help you out in any single way. I don't understand that angle. Even uh, even Pat, the show you reviewed last week, the host took it kind of gracefully on Twitter. I saw a tweet he made. Yes, Pat uh, Oates was really cool about it. He did talk about right, and you ripped, <laughs> yeah. you ripped into him more than you have into anyone recently. That was good for him. It's not even defamation or anything like that. I understand those issues, which is a completely separate thing. If you were going on here and saying, um, you know, stuttering John is actually a rapist. He molested me when I was working. Whoa, whoa, like whoa, 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 no, I'm saying that would be a separate thing. All yes. you're doing on your show is saying, look at this goofy, stuttering dumbass. That's it. What an idiot. That's can't what, sue someone for that. That's what's Or so, using your stupid podcast. That's what's so funny about this. Is the only thing I've ever said about Stuttering John is that he's an idiot and that his podcast sucks. Which I've done nothing but proven that those points time and time again. I would love for this to go to court. I'd love for us to play the audio clips in front of John and his attorney to say... All right, and what, <laughs> at what point was Carl lying about any of this? Let's let's play the evidence that he's put forth for us. But yes, you're 100% accurate on that. Some might say exactly right. That I have never done anything that would be considered slander. There's nothing that's suable that we're doing. But I do want to put this out there. And I know I'm putting myself out there with this. And I'm hoping this doesn't fail miserably. But to anyone who's listening to my voice who enjoys doing song parodies. I am asking for Stuttering John podcast song parodies. Anything that has to do with John's failing podcast that sucks balls, that nobody listens to. I'm sure Jen from the Jingles Department would love to get involved in this. And anyone else who can do that (laughs) sort of thing, um, start sending those in. WATPshow at gmail.com. Send those in to us. We'd love to play those on the show, I think we could have a lot of fun. And like you said, going on Dick Masterson tomorrow, looking forward to talking to him about this whole idea that making fun of someone on the internet is somehow a legal issue. Isn't it fucking sad? These people used to be at the top of their games. OP, this guy, uh, all on their own shows, and now you have them replying to 
no offense, but internet nobodies, right? Which is not something a famous and happy person does. You don't see Joe Rogan in the YouTube comments replying to the hate <laughs> messages, right? Like, oh, yeah, buddy, well, you know what? Let alone address individuals <laughs> on his show. Like, I'm going to sue this YouTube commenter. It's so really? pathetic. It just shows that you have nothing going on in your life, if that's what you're concerned with. And poor John, I mean, honestly, John... You're an untalented hack, and you know that. It's okay. We all know that. It's not a big deal. You don't have to pretend that you still have a career in Hollywood. You don't. It's okay. No one's upset with you about it. Do you think it's because they just are that new to the internet? Yes. So, because back in their day, I guess they would receive hate phone calls and sometimes snail mail. But now, with the internet being so ubiquitous... Under every single thing that they post, there's a hundred comments where anybody can say anything with ease. And so it's maybe they just notice it more now. Whereas before, it, everything went through their manager. They never even heard of any hate. And now it's just comment upon comment, their email inbox getting filled with people making fun of them. Maybe they're just not used to it. It's hard to get used to, I'll be honest with you. If you ever read YouTube comments, it's rough. Like people don't go on YouTube to tell you that they're enjoying what you're up to. Yeah, but they're... Oh, YouTube is a fucking... YouTube is a toilet. But it's I'm saying toilet. these people have been in the showbiz for so long. Yeah. They should be used to all this shit. Even I, a fucking Z-list e-celebrity, got used to all the hate I got on the internet. I can't... These people have been in the industry for like decades. And you're still upset that somebody called you a stuttering moron? It's surprising. It really is. So... Send in your song parodies for Stuttering John. We'll be happy to play them. All right. I want to talk about Stuttering John Melendez. I put out a feeler out there. I asked people to make parody songs for Stuttering John. And we finally need to get to that because that was a couple of weeks ago. I want to start off this segment. Artie mm -hmm. Lang was on the Grillo, Steve Grillo show. Okay. XL, what is it called? Double XL, Shock XL, Shocker Path. Cat, I don't know. Nobody knows. What yeah, I'm not familiar called. with the show. No one's ever heard of it. You know Artie Lang. Yeah, right? oh yeah. So this is Artie, the new Artie. Yeah. He's sober Def now. Deflated nose Artie. His nose is flat <laughs> yeah. against his face. He looks so bizarre. And he gets on with Steve Grillo and they start talking shit about Stuttering John, which always makes me happy. You know, again, John, and John got mad at this analogy. John is the reason we fought the Revolutionary War. Never has someone done so much with such little talent. Yeah. John is not a comedian. He's played every club in, in the country. John is not a musician. He had a record deal. John has a speech impediment. He had the single most coveted voiceover job in the history of television. Yeah. He was the announcer. I mean, he's the reason America exists. Yeah. And, you know, so so he's so the American dream. Well, he's, he's the also, American dream. He's also he's also the biggest like hustler I've ever met. He is. He's and, awesome. And he's also a conniver. But when he got a conniver, when he got that job. So Artie lays it out there, and Artie knows Stuttering John very well. Yeah. They are or were friends. And it's true. Stuttering John is a no talent hack who is landing into jobs he does not deserve. Yeah. And now he's pissed off that people think he's a talentless hack, even though he proves it three times a week on his podcast. Yeah, that's you. I mean, I dislike this person as an individual, but you've also explained like 300 comics. <laughs> However, the only one who's threatening legal action against yours truly is Suttering. He's Harry. threatening legal yes. action against you? Yes. What a fucking. He's such an guy. asshole. This guy is a troll. That's what he does for a. It's what he did for a living. Yeah. And I made fun of him on the Chip Chipperson show and Anthony Cumia and this show. And now he's like, oh, I'm going to have my attorneys. Uh, Reach out to you. I'm like, wait, what? That's when you know that you're not a hack. When someone yeah. makes fun of you and you sue them, <laughs> you the fucking douchebag. I hope you're listening to this, you fucking douchebag pussy hack, dude. Write a joke. Oh, but you can't because right. you're a hack. Right. Instead, he just gets out of his show and goes, I, I don't want to say, who, I don't want to say who this is, but that, you know, they don't, they know who they are. What? <laughs> they know who they are. I'm, I'm about to, Lenny's gonna be in touch. All right. So I asked people to write parody songs. I'm going to play them in the order of how much effort it took to make these songs. <laughs> Starting with Andy's brother, Joe, he put together a song. Now, John is famous for his, 
the Tonight Show audition tapes when he introduces Nicolas Cage. He pronounces Nicholas's name using the N word somehow. Because <laughs> he just sucks at talking. So here's what Joe put together. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. <laughs> all right. So Nicholas Cage. <laughs> so that's that's all well and good. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. All right. Here is a, another take on it. This is from Bryce Meehan who sent in this parody. And I always like when people make parody signs and they take real audio and put it on top. Stuttering John has got a podcast. Thank you. He's an alcoholic low life, obsessed with his own past. Yes. He gets a Twitter feud with friends. Gets his ass kissed by Royce. Damn right. He's a washed up loser with a phlegmy ass voice. You know, don't worry. It, you know, it, it isn't gonna, you know. He's an unfunny hack <laughs> who's just sad and bitter. Look out, boys, or he'll block you on Twitter. Because <laughs> I blocked him. Oh. Because that's what I do. I, it, it's, my, it's my way of closure. <laughs> <laughs> but then to tie it back into what we were saying earlier i think yeah. that's so much of what it is it's just like people are afraid for whatever reason to like call out hacks because they're hacks and they don't want to be called out themselves so now we have this weird culture where it's okay to be a hack <laughs> like no it's fucking not okay it's not cool <laughs> no, no one is enjoying that so anyway bryce that was an awesome job yeah, all right that was great the next one that i want to play this is a collaboration. You know, like in pop music today, there's a lot of collaborations that happen between mm-hmm. artists. I love what happened here. The Jingles Department from WATP mm-hmm. collaborated with Stuttering John Melendez. Hell yeah. To create this song. Carl tries to put me to, to, to down. Because of my comedic confidence is unfound. The, the things he says are awfully c- c- cold. I, I wish I died before I got this old. I'm, I'm, I'm John Melendez. Stuttering John Melendez, baby. Why did my career f- 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 fade away? <laughs> I, I mean, voice laughs at everything I say. <laughs> My podcast is horrendous. <laughs> I'm just, just, just talking about me, Stuttering John Melendez. I'm Stuttering John Melendez, baby. Stut, stut, stuttering John Melendez. It's the best song he's that, recorded that in his entire career. So fucking good. Nice work. <laughs> it's nice like, work, Jingles Department. It's like a combination of like Rick from Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a, a drunk, burping, barfing Rick. <laughs> All right, last um, parody song, and we really appreciate the participation from everybody. This one came in from Jackie Marlowe, who has contributed to the show before, and I'm crowning this the one that took the most effort to make. John Melendez is a talentless hack. He overachieved in life. It's wildly impressive that this stuttering buffoon (laughs) Was able to be this big character on Howard Stern's show and then uh, an announcer on The Tonight Show. It's remarkable. But the sad thing is that it's, it's left him delusional and bitter. Breaking legs, legal threats, don't have 50 subscribers yet. Got a Tony's on every post, but I can't handle a podcast roast. Such a loser, such a bore. Failed upwards till 2004. Already thinks my comedy shit, but he never saw my high school skit. And, you know, I was thinking, I wrote my first sketch in junior high and... On Channel 9, I was so wacky reading lines from Fred and Jackie, but now they're gone and so is my stutter and so is my relevance. Falling star, woe is me, fading notoriety. So I pranked Trump just in time, but didn't have a punchline. I, 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 I need more subscribers. I, I, I still think I'm famous, but, but I'm on par with Seamus. 
I, 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 I need more, more sub subscribers. When it, what we're gonna do? What, what, what we talk, talk, talk about? This dummy who stutters. That's why he's famous. And unfortunately, Jay Leno hired him for a job he wasn't qualified for, and now he's delusional. I know it's hard for some Stern fans to swallow, to think that maybe I do have talent, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. The what sharpest a- drop-off since fucking Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Jackie Marlowe. That well, was fantastic. Well done, indeed. I'm impressed with your fans' comedy IQ, to be honest. I know. that There are a lot of good references in there. Yeah. References to our show, references to his show. And I do like the listener-supported content. So thank you very much for that. that I, love, fun. I love the line where it's just like, oh, I hate to tell you, but uh, I do have talent. You know who <laughs> never says they have talent? People with <laughs> fucking talent. No it's like it's like when you fucking, you walk into the fucking bar and this dude's <laughs> pissing his pants in the fucking corner and he's yelling at you about how he's not drunk. Like, dude, nobody that's sober talks about not being drunk. You don't go to work and you're like, oh, hey, I gotta take a piss. By the way, I'm not fucking drunk. Like, no, dude, you fucking suck, man. You, Dave Chappelle doesn't have to talk about how much talent he has. No, like, I've never seen the first 20 minutes of his routine being about, guys, I'm a really funny comedian. I just want to set this up. I wrote, I spent a lot of time on these jokes. They're really funny. This is what Sonny and John devotes entire podcast episodes to of how funny and talented he is. People don't understand this, but I'm really talented. John, just fucking prove it. Yeah. Just Just show some evidence of it. Say a joke and then people will like it. Right. It's all it takes. It's not that complicated. Oh, man. I love it. I, uh, so much fun. I hope he's so mad. Right? <laughs> you're a fucking douche if you're listening, dude. <laughs> All right. I'm very excited to talk oh, about my friend Stuttering John because I, I, I almost debated playing this at the very beginning of the episode just so I made sure everybody heard it. Stuttering John is still threatening legal action. And I don't know if you saw our subreddit, Kaya, but I posted a thread in the subreddit because now he's blocked me on Twitter, but I was able to do this crazy thing where I log out and then I can see everything that he tweets. <laughs> it's amazing. So John was in this thread. Yeah, where you, he's... You've discovered incognito <laughs> mode, huh? Yeah, it's amazing, right? So John, <laughs> John was in this thread mm-hmm. where he's explaining that he's getting his lawyers involved and he says, it's not fair use. I know the law. It's my copy written work. My lawyers in New York are way smarter than those idiots. Somebody says, if they are making a commentary on it, it will fall under fair use. It is why Stern hasn't sued you for copyright infringement. And he says, whatever, you're wrong, but they'll be hearing from my lawyers soon. (laughs) So this is stuttering John's fucking logic. This guy is so stupid. It's shocking to me. Uh, I just want to play. It's it's sad and also very funny. I want to play a clip from stuttering John's episode on October 1st. And I'm hoping that John, if you're listening, Royce, if you're listening, please take this audio of me recording this on my show, using your show on my show without having any legal rights to it. And please make sure to use this as evidence in your court case. I I want you to send this segment to your attorney so they understand that this is what we're doing, that you should definitely go after me and sue me for because this is a copyright infringement. Here is the Stuttering John podcast, unedited. They told me what was said. So why don't you play what was said, Royce? Thank you. Here it is. Now, now, mind you, yeah. you called me. All right. And I was already listening to it when you called me to find out what was going on. I'm like, I got to call you back. I'm already listening. No, I know. So here, here it is. Here's the pelican and the bloated female flunky. But it'll never happen again. And by the way, like anything I've ever read about me where people try to write behind the scenes books, it's mostly from people who way over evaluated their contribution to the show, you know? Well, that was their problem in the first place. Yeah, and I'm like, really? <laughs> who even knew you were that important to the thing? <laughs> you know? While they were here, they were right. doing that. Yeah. Like, weren't you an intern? Well, that's, that's weird. What, what just happened there, <laughs> Kaya? It, it sounded like Stuttering John was playing a clip of Howard Stern on his show. Does he have the legal Whatever. rights to, Does he have the legal rights to play Whatever. Howard Stern's show on his show? Is that a <laughs> is that a copyright infringement? 
Because I think that that's owned by Sirius XM Pandora. If I'm not, I mean, what do I know? I'm just an idiot and his lawyer knows way more than I do. I'm just saying yes. that this fucking numb nuts is talking about how they're going to sue us for playing clips of his show. And then he's playing clips of the Howard Stern show when they're talking about what a fucking loser he is, how he was an intern for them. And now he's writing these tell all books. <laughs> I, I, this is a weird, bizarro world that we live in, right? Like, John, just fucking leave, ignore it. Pretend it's not happening, you idiot. Why are you this stupid that you're continuing to threaten us with legal action when you know you have no grounds? You know you have no grounds. This is So the counterpoint is whatever. You're wrong. <laughs> whatever, you're, you're wrong. hearing from his lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> he literally wrote, whatever, you're wrong. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. <laughs> You'll also get one of those lawyers just like Maddox, some drunk yes. who can't even unlock his own car to I, sue you, I Dave think Landau. That, yeah, I think we should actually send Landau a note. Let him know. Stuttering John needs representation. He could he could use some help. Landau has experience with... Stooge. He has experience with this exact type of lawsuit. It'll be awesome for it. So this is sad, man. So I went <laughs> back on YouTube to listen because I'm not of you guys' generation yeah. where you uh, folks always talk about Opie and Anthony and you know Jim Norton and the whole Howard Stern universe. Mm -hmm. And I was curious. I wanted to check it out. And when you go on YouTube and you type this sort of stuff in, the first suggestions and the most popular videos you'll get recommended are these guys just having Tiff's life. Right on the radio there's like compilations there's like nine hour videos yes. of these guys just fighting I know. life on air and, and i listened to it and i'm like holy shit i thought this was just a new you know i'm only used to youtubers doing this like 14 year old famous youtubers doing this shit i didn't know grown men would go on air spill their hearts about their private lives and bitch and moan and cry life and yell at each other about their friendships and shit and this is it's weird that these people are, you're supposed to be a grown up. What? How old is John? Yeah. He's in his 50s or something at least. And you are angry at some dude on the internet who clipped your voice for two seconds. You're trying it, to sue him. It doesn't make any sense. So Stuttering John lives out in LA and the Howard Stern show was out in LA this past week doing three shows from the new Sirius studios out there. John goes down there. With a microphone and a camera. There's a link to it on our subreddit. I recommend everybody check it out. John is trying to interview Shuli, who is a staff member and a stand-up comedian on the Howard Stern show. And Shuli tells the hotel to get security involved and to kick John out. That's how pathetic. This guy used to work on the show. <laughs> he can't even talk to people he knows personally. They they want to get security <laughs> to kick him out. That's where John is at. With his career. He's a fucking pathetic loser. I mean, he always has been, but he doesn't he doesn't even understand how pathetic he comes off. I think he's the one posting these videos. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, man. It, it it's weird. It's uh it's a radio version of teenage girls. Yes. It is. And that it, listen, that's what ridiculous. the Howard Stern. Now you got yourself roped into it. That's what the Howard Stern show was. Howard was the master at creating conflict and then watching it unfold on the air. So he would get whoever he could against each other. You know, so-and-so would do something and someone else would rat him out. And then Howard would confront him and he'd get fights going. Open Anthony was the opposite of that. So when you go to the Open Anthony fights, that happened like once every five or six years, which is why people are into that sort of thing. But Howard, it was all about just backstabbing and, and fights and shit like that. And you would think Sonoran John would be so used to that at this point. It doesn't make any sense that he's not rolling with the punches as we make fun of his shitty podcast. It's so bizarre. No, but no, but so he's involved in that mindset. It's this is, right. I feel like this is going to piss off a lot. Some of your listeners maybe, but this is the real housewives of Howard Stern. Basically is a bunch of catty bitches who have microphones in front of them. And so now this guy thinks, okay, I got to keep this up. Uh, Carl dragged me on TV, so I got to drag him now like a real housewife would. The reality, Jesus. I guess. Get over it. Be a man. I guess, but you Be, would think that in that world, you fight back. You don't get lawyers involved and talk about serving someone papers. It's so weird, the tact that he's taking. So 
The other thing that I wanted to point out that I'm very excited about is his co-host, his, uh, his sidekick there is Royce Durazio. And somebody purchased RoyceDurazio.com and it redirects to whoarethese.com. So uh, <laughs> Spinston on our subreddit, thank you for doing that. It's fucking hilarious. And I couldn't be happier about it. So I, ha- I have an idea. I-, I came up with an idea, Kaya. This might fall flat. I'm hoping it doesn't, but... Here's the idea. So John thinks that he can sue us because we played clips of his show on our show. He thinks that for some reason, we don't have the right to play a clip of his show and then comment on it. And I know for a fact that we do. It is the fair use section of the copyright law. And what I'm going to ask now is that I know we have other podcasters who listen to WATP. Anyone who has a podcast Pull a clip of John's show, make fun of him, or just comment on it. You can say he's great. Whatever you do, pull a clip of his show, play it on your show, and then please tweet that to him, tweet that to us. I want him to get barraged with everybody clipping his show because this is the Streisand effect. When you make a stink about something you don't want to happen, it's going to happen tenfold. So I'm, I'm calling out Good Times, Great Movies, Planet Maynard, Live from the 405, Dick Show, Comedy at the Carlson Cast, Who's Right, Retro Cinema, Thought Cops, Ginger Snap, Hate This Podcast, Everybody is Awful, Cripple Cast, Two Chewed Gum, f- Chewed Gum, Two Woke Gum. Seamus alone can account Shame for all 20 of, of your episodes. podcasts. I will applaud you <laughs> if you do this. Two Woke to Fuck, Po Boys, <laughs> Afterburn 739, we only do one take. I, I'm probably missing a bunch. Official podcast. Everyone who listens to this show, if you have a podcast, I want you to pull clips from John. If you don't know how to do that, I'll send you clips of John. Just reach out to me. I'll give you the clips. <laughs> Play them on your show. I want to fucking barrage this guy with everyone pulling clips of his podcast. And I'll tell you something, too. I could dedicate WATP to Just Centering John. Anytime I listen to any segment of his show, it's terrible. And it's so easy to make fun of. So I encourage everyone to go ahead and take advantage of this offer. Uh, act now and buy one get one free and uh, all that fun stuff so please uh, play clips with john it'll be fun <laughs> all right this is gonna be your new pets project in it's my new it's my OP. new project i want everyone to fuck with stuttering john because he's <laughs> he really doesn't handle it well at all so that should be fun <laughs> all right doug i noticed that you also sent me over some other clips of another famous podcaster that we might want to talk about Anthony, you yeah, still there, buddy? Are we are we keeping your interest on this? Oh yeah, I'm 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 here. I'm engaged. I'm just trying not to interrupt. I appreciate it. All right, cool. <laughs> I appreciate you not trying to interrupt uh, your guest spot. Right. Um, yeah, that so cough the... that cough button is killing it on this episode. I got to tell you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, did you listen to the newest episode of the Stuttering John podcast? No, I don't hate myself. <laughs> the fuck? Why the fuck did I? I don't know. I didn't tell you to. So let me tell you what you missed. You missed Stuttering John having a guest comedian on who is also a stutterer. Oh, interesting. Oh, um, yeah, so I, I think I've got quite a few clips here. I'm just going to plow through them real quick. But uh, the, my first clip, the number one, if, if you can try to, like, cinema of the mind this, I assume that when it's done, there's just a puddle of saliva coating everything. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I don't even want to hit play on this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Although, although, let me just say this, Royce. When we had our little tiff, you texted me that you could drop people real quick and not care, not give a, give a shit about it. <laughs> Try me. Yeah, and then I texted back, well, that sucks. I thought we had a good friendship here. As I heard that, I was thinking about, I think maybe it was Airplane or something. I don't remember the movie, but when the guy's drinking water and it's just pouring out of his mouth. Yeah, right. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> uh, so his guest is Nina G. Like I said, she's a stuttering comedian. Great. I don't know why she attaches the word comedian to her because through the whole interview, she never once said anything funny. <laughs> and when he would try to make a joke, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. But uh, number two is him introducing his guest and how good he is. All the time he spent with Howard Stern, how much he learned as a host on how to transition into bringing your guest on. Certain fights. We are getting surrounded <laughs> with fires here. And now we just found out there's one in Northridge, which is close to you. Yeah. And uh, But uh, our guest today is Nina G. She's a stuttering comedian. <laughs> <that has a, laughs> the world is burning around us. It's Armageddon. Hey, our guest today is... What the fuck? <laughs> that was fucking smooth. <laughs> 
Um, so he he's he's just bringing her on, and she's talking. He's trying to lighten up the mood a little bit, and he drops a joke on her. Completely misses number three. Okay, I'm good. How are you doing? I hear you're in the midst of the fires. Jesus. Um, I'm not really in the midst of them. I'm more in the midst of the blackout. Okay. Well, so, I was. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I experienced blackout last night. But okay, go ahead. Mm, yeah, no, um, I didn't have power from... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. He, that, he, that hurt. <laughs> it's the lowest hanging fruit possible. It's like, John, if you think that in your head quickly, it's because everybody already beat you to it. Don't say it out loud, you fucking idiot. You're not funny. But it, at shit. least he knew where... He was supposed to tell her where to laugh when he said, okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I got to see John stand up. Dude, someone's got to film John stand up comedy. I want to know what kind of jokes he's got going on. Uh, this is uh, uh, him doing, again, more of his great interviewing skills, figuring out, like, how to keep the conversation going, number four. Uh, so, okay, but so you have your power back now. Yes. How were you charging? Yes, your, I've been doing watch. How were you charging your phone if you didn't have power? Um, I would do it somewhere else. And also in the car. Okay. Okay, Nina. Now, how old are you? I am 46. What the fuck kind of questioning is this? (laughs) (laughs) Was she brought into a police station somewhere? Tell us how you were charging your phone. Okay, how old are you? Social security number, please. I wasn't even looking at it from that angle. It's like he is stumped. If his power goes out and his battery dies, he's just going to sit there and watch it die, not think through like... (laughs) I have a car and I can charge it there or I can just get in my car, go somewhere else and charge it. You know, there's power other I, places than just your house. I dated a girl once and her, she went somewhere and her phone uh, drained. And I said, well, why don't you turn it off when you went to bed? She's oh, would that have helped? Yes. <laughs> yes. If you turn off your and phone, it doesn't drain the charge on it. You fucking moron. <laughs> It, 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 I'm glad to hear that she's better at making jingles than she is at charging uh, electronics. <laughs> yeah, well, this, this wasn't uh, Jen from the jingles department, but uh, uh, do understand. So you know, you were you were talking about Opie and and you know how his conversation is pretty much just no matter who he's talking to, it's really just how do you feel about me? Yes, um, right. N- number five is John doing something similar. And by the way, that that is a trait of someone who is just interested in life. They want to learn as much as they can about <laughs> what people think about them. Before we get started, I need my ego massage. I hear that there's a page in your book, Sutter Interrupted, the comedian almost didn't happen. There's a page in there yeah. uh, honoring moi. Please, please, please wax yeah. poetic about this page. Thank you. Oh, my God. Jesus <laughs> That's Christ. uncomfortable. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with this wait hold on a second i know that people call me out because they're like this guy seamus might not have all of his faculties and it's probably not cool that you're making fun of him should i feel this way about john too? is he retarded is this a retarded man does it matter I... no it doesn't I, I don't care either way it's on the internet <laughs> makes it free game so if he's not retarded he is oblivious that number 11 is is more of that i think Thank you very much, Nina. This is a uh, this is a very touching moment, and I am very happy that I was able to uh, do that for my fellow stutterers. And just so you know, Nina, I was the keynote speaker at the National Stuttering Association convention in Chicago because yeah. because I mentor um, stuttering children and adults all across this wonderful country of ours. Thank you. Oh, this 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 guy's fucking humble brags are the worst I've ever heard in my life. Um. I was so the, the keynote speaker at Retarded Podcaster Convention. <laughs> uh, there's this convention called uh, Zero Downloads. They brought me in as the keynote on it. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, Here, let's you... go through. I've got some slides for you to look at. <laughs> so what was really the meat and potatoes of this is the, is the rest of my clips is... So it started out, it's not really going to make any sense, but if you play my number six, is it's... I, I picked up that it seemed like she only stuttered when she said the word stutter. Me or uh, are we on the air now? Or yes. do you want like a preview of what I'm okay. Okay, no. 
So you you are a stuttering icon, right? Like thank, thank you. Like you are OG stuttering openly because there is this thing that this is so okay. I, I mean, there's a lot. So she she can put together several sentences, yeah. and then she only stutters when she says the word stutter. So my thought was like, just just quit fucking saying that word, and you don't have that affliction anymore. <laughs> right. And you want the reason to say it either, so it all works out. But she later proved me wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so num- go to number seven. Like, also, like I was thinking about this last night. You know, I'm, I'm a very sensitive person. And um, and I was thinking about this last night. I was like, I started to like tear up because like this is a a, a, a a special thing for me to talk to you and to imagine. Okay, so there, there's so many things to unpack in this one. Yeah. The the fact is, this is three minutes into the interview, and this comedian is crying. Yep, the, the... <laughs> it's always good. It's always a good appearance. <laughs> The second thing is, can you imagine being married to this person where it's not just you have to deal with her crying, you have to try to not laugh when she's crying. <laughs> because of the stutter, and you know that you know the cry is going to last three times as long as a normal person because it, it's repeating. I've seen Bill Burr on Joe Rogan. Never once does he start to cry. If you're a comedian... Your only job is to be funny. That's the only thing you should be doing on a show. Especially to get teary-eyed over talking to John Melendez. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, number eight is, it's just because it's funny. Or they killed themselves. Um, and, uh, and, you know, p- 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 Porky Pig was the best thing we had. Oh, that my God. <laughs> <laughs> she did not just set her at Porky Pig. <laughs> that was fucking classic. <laughs> so oh, does man. does Howard Stern know about this woman? Uh, she could have a career. So that, that was one of the clips that I pulled, and I'm like, how am I going to get this into the conversation? You know what? It doesn't matter. It I'll doesn't just matter. It, and it'll, be, it'll be funny. <laughs> That's great. Um, Holy shit! I, I think the the last of them are, are along the same lines. Number nine. It, so my for, my note is just I couldn't not clip this. So for me, like that was the first time I saw someone really so stutter for so stutter for reels on TV, and it made this big impression on me. I- oh my god! Sound like a can you imagine banging somebody that sounds like a car with a bad battery. <laughs> can I, can I point rawr, something rawr. out real quick? This is hilarious. And this is why Suttering John has a career because he talks like this. And Howard said, I'm going to put that guy on the radio. That's fucking funny. So John is not understanding how any of this works. He has this woman on who's hilarious, but they're talking about serious issues and they're trying to work through it together. We should all just be goofing on this woman. This is great. This is gold. <laughs> What you need to try to do is connect her to Opie, and that's the next, uh, his yes. next. Yes, that's perfect. Although, <laughs> this woman is funny on her own. Opie would ruin it for sure. All right, let's keep uh, hitting these tracks. Yeah, uh, number 10 is, like I said, she only stutters. I thought she only stuttered on the word stuttering. And then, uh, of course, she has to join the National Stuttering Association. In addition to finding the National Stuttering Project, which eventually turned into the National Stuttering Association. So I I can imagine that conversation if it was me and I had that affliction where I only stutter on the word stutter. Somebody said, Doug, we'd like you to join this. What's the name of it? National Stuttering (laughs) Association. I'll pass. (laughs) (laughs) We just need you to promote our association wherever you go. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. There's only so many hours of a day. Just speak naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, how, uh, long, it, how long was this episode? It had to be five hours. So one, once it got into the uh, uh, the stuttering, I just felt like I had to clip every time she talked. I can't help it. <laughs> I, I agree. You're doing the right thing here. Um, and then this, this wraps it up for me. My number 12 is the before. So if you take a sentence of a stutter uh, and just play it. And I wanted to ask you, could you do did- differentiate when someone was looking at you weird because of the stutter or because of the question. And then if, if you were to just take the time in post and 
want to make it a consistent show or a show that made some sense is my number 13 is taking out a little bit of her stutter and just putting together a sentence. And I wanted to ask you, could you differentiate when someone was looking at you weird because of the stutter or because of the question? See, you can make her sound bangable. Doug, what you just did there is what I have to do with Croge on every single episode. That he's, <laughs> I know how much work that takes. That's well done, buddy. That's fucking spot on. Okay. Well, that's fun. Thank you for doing that, Doug. That's Andy, that's I have guy. to give you a little bit of credit real quick. Oh. We played it on the show. Happens. I know. You've done some bits for us in the past, some pre-produced bits. That die, yeah. But nothing that you've ever done has been as impressive as the Stuttering John cameo. And I just have a quick condensed version Ooh. that hits all the important points. Hey, Carl. How you doing? It's Stuttering John Melendez. Seamus asked me to do this for you, so I'm going to do it. I know you want to do a good po podcast about pop music. And you're deciding between band, practice pod, or Kuzaru cast. Anyway, you guys have a great time. I know you're in Gary, Indiana. If I'm ever there, come see me do stand-up. Seamus, Carl, see you later, cuz. So I played that because I've yeah. learned that that's how he signs off from his show with the yeah. g -g Okay, yeah. I never got to the end of his show before. I, right. I know. Oh, would anyone that. know that? So like, that's how he signs off. I didn't know what that was either. Andy, because you were able to pull this off and this was awesome, I think it's time for you to do a victory lap. Ooh. Andy. Take it off and relax. Listen to all the shows. Then he'll tell you why it goes. Sit back. Andy. Taking a victory lap. Uh, you didn't think we were going to go through an entire episode without playing Come Town, did you? <laughs> I was surprised. All right. But yeah, that, I wasn't sure how inside baseball that was. That was uh, special for Carl. And um, I hope everybody enjoyed it. But. Um, all right, except, John, except your award, get on the fucking podium. <laughs> Jesus sorry. Christ. This is going to be too long. long. We're getting too, <laughs> too uh, optimistic here. All right, but. you're the best. Um, did you want to transition? I noticed you took some stuttering John. Well, yes, yeah. Uh, we got a few things to talk about. Okay. And uh, one was uh, we talked about trying to listen to Opie, and I put it on, and I was just like, I can't. It, it, it's gone from. We, maybe we'll get into it. But yeah, we will. I got. Open it's clips. just b so boring now. I put yeah. it on and I, I just decided that I wanted to go see. Oh, now Opie <laughs> show is boring. <laughs> now it is, Andy. <laughs> Fuck you. I've listened yeah. to eighty fucking hours of that shit. Now I'm gonna lean into my stuttering John bashing. <laughs> okay. Good. And I saw it on his feed. One of them said John has a big announcement. Oh, okay. So I'm I kind of just super cut the big announcement down into about a minute uh, update about what's going on on the Stuttering John podcast. Let's hear that. So this is from a recent episode. I think it's maybe the second newest. Okay. Yeah. And he's got this big new announcement. I don't yeah. know anything about this. So okay. This, I'm excited to hear this. Cool. Here's the thing, Royce. We have a big announcement. So can you... What? Oh, yeah. Give us a little... Good enough. Here it is, Royce. We will start our radio show this Sunday. We will be on the... Allegedly... <laughs> <laughs> we will be on the FM airwaves, but we will be on the airwaves starting on Sunday. The Stuttering John podcast will go down to one show. One show. While the radio show ramps up. And then what we have to figure out is for the... Well, you're licensing. the mastermind. I'm going to let you finish. No, no. I'm going to let you figure all this in. So you have a lot going on. Well, so that's so, what gonna, Yeah. So on this, we're probably going to have Frankie B., I produce think, the show. I, well, yeah. So Frank's going to, I think what I'll do is we're obviously going to do the radio show together. Yeah. And then I think Frank is going to come in and help with the other two shows. This is boring for everybody. So, but I'm going to step back in a, in a producer role. So, a terrestrial radio now. Okay. They're going over, co-hosting, Sunday nights. Oh, shit. Just playing Are music. Are you kidding me? Sunday nights, oh, playing no. music, John and Royce on, introing. On one FM station. Yeah. They're going what in the, the wrong direction. Exactly. What the fuck are they doing? Exactly. They're so excited to start playing eight tracks on Sunday nights in L.A. Where oh, no. fucking no one is listening. And 
Royce is distancing himself from So the he's podcast. not going to produce the Center John he's podcast He's not going to be involved anymore. in the podcast at all anymore. Because he's too busy with a Sunday night radio show that's probably 20 minutes of talking yeah. over four hours hey, because you're just it's just commercials and songs. Let's minimize the amount of talking that John has to do. Dude, this is John had this gig in New York City back in the nineties. <laughs> from noon to one. Let's he was on K-Rock as the disc yeah, jockey. Let's cower in the shadow of what we used to be. Oh my god. And do even less than what you used to do, which was be on talk radio for four hours at a time. Now you're just gonna say, here's uh, round and round by rat. On Sunday night. Uh, no, Andy. You know, <laughs> the first time I heard the song, Andy, t- t- I'm talking about the the round and round, the round, the song. <laughs> All right, just just play the song, Royce. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I guess Royce is running for some kind of political office. Yeah. In fact, if you Google his name or if you put in the URL of his name, RoyceDorazio.com. Yeah. I, I recommend everybody do that right now. Yeah. It redirects to whoarethese.com. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Royce, we wish you luck, buddy. Hope you get a lot of support. Don't forget to donate to Royce's Patreon. It's patreon.com slash whoarethesepodcasts so that he can succeed in whatever endeavor he's got going yeah. on. We but, love Royce. I, I do. Royce is the best part. Royce is the best part. But nope. they get into, like, this was almost two-hour podcast. That we, and it was a lot of garbage. You think? Um, a lot of uh, the end deteriorates into John's favorite and least favorite guests on The Tonight Show and The Stern Show. Okay. But they did some heavy political talk, and uh, I, I summed up the contents of that show, too. Gorillas, yeah, they fling that shit, but they don't fucking lie on a public bathroom floor and stick a fucking enema up their ass and, and like the, the whole thing spill out on the floor. What's it called? Enema? No, you said enema. Enema. What? Get the fuck over here, Chelsea. I don't, f- I don't give a fuck. Get the fuck over here. I'll smack your ass around. Come here, Corolla. I'll fuck your fucking big teeth face up. You fucking cocksucker. But I don't give a shit because if they can't deal with... How are you? You know, intellectual conversations, you know, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good kicker right there, Andy. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. Uh, that's two hours. So this is what we've seen now. Yep. The Stuttering John was doing this podcast as an audition, a three-year-long audition, mm-hmm. to get a shitty radio. By the way, Sunday nights, and you know this, you used to work in radio. <laughs> Sunday nights are the lowest listenership yeah. of any time. Right. Everybody's if, going to bed early. So no one listens to the radio on Sunday. They're not driving. No yeah. one's out driving. And... What they'll do on Sunday nights is they'll do the local music shows. Yeah. That's yep. always Sunday nights because mm-hmm. no one's listening anyway. Who gives a shit? If we can get these guys in these bands to tune in, hoping that they, their song gets played, that'll be more listeners we could possibly get playing Bon Jovi for the 18th time that day. Yep. So Sunday nights, if that's true, that's really what's going on because I'm just learning it, about this. No, it's 100%. Well, that's unbelievable. Yeah. He has a three this tier. This is fascinating. He has a three tier plan. One is to have the worst radio show on yeah. terrestrial radio. Okay. The other is to scale back his terrible podcast yeah. and his shining light of a only talent on his podcast go away yeah. and have somebody else come in. And then the third tier is to mimic shit that people liked about Howard that we already discussed in the Patreon that will never work. Right. Because. John has no credentials. John has no connections. John has no talent. It's never going to work to try and do what right. he used to do for Howard. You're referring to our bonus episode where we discussed John quite a bit, and we talked about the fact that John is saying he's going to do a new show where he's got writers, and he's going to go on red carpets, yeah. and he's going to start talking to celebrities again, Right. which is what made him famous in the first place when he was an intern for Howard Stern. Yeah. This is never going to happen. No. It's not happening. Yeah. John, it's not, you have to make shit happen in life. You're not making anything happen. Yeah. You got a <laughs> shitty radio gig. What do you think he's getting paid for that? So this is an FM station in LA mm-hmm. that we're talking about. And he's got a Sunday night shift once a week. If Pat Oates is listening, how much how much is he getting paid for that? Um, you would know. I, I It's hard for me to imagine what slightly above minimum wage is. Right. So let's say $17 an hour for yeah. four hours. And most of that time, I mean, it's not it's not a hard job. But if you're a named celebrity, I'll, I'll give you 20. All right. 
Twenty dollars an hour. Good on one day a week. <laughs> See, the only problem with this though, Andy, is this guy wants to sue me, and I I'm not a guy making a shit ton of money. Look at our Patreon. How much money are you gonna get from me? But if he's that desperate, maybe I should be worried. Oh, if he's Taking my money on cameo. Yeah, so oh, that's a good point. All the, all, the le- all the legal uh, suit money that he can Fuck. get. <laughs> Fuck me. All right, well, that's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that to the show. But the other person who talked about it is my buddy Stuttering John. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And Since I, I mean, I, this is what I brought. Okay. It's probably... Is it the same thing? So let me uh, probably okay. have you gotten any letters in the mail recently, Carl? I have not. Oh, I have not been served. No legal documents were presented to you. I'm waiting in a formal way where you had to. I'm accept still them. waiting. Okay. Hmm. So that's interesting to me. Why is that? Well, let's hear what clip do you have? All right. Well, this is John talking about Jim Norton. And what a great guy he is. Ah. And then I come up in this conversation. Okay. Jim Norton is by far one of the best stand-up comics I've ever seen, which is why I put him on the road with me. He, oh, was, nice. he was the first guy I put on the road with me. Really? Jim Norton and Modi. Dude, Jim and, Norton didn't need a you know, job uh, well, and Mel to Rose watch for fucking, his career. You know, uh, fucking moron. <laughs> you know, for the comedy uh, <laughs> I of, put him you on, know, on the, of on the road all. with but, me. He was the headliner, I mean, Jim Norton, I him on the road. I mean, he could tear me to shreds. I'm, I don't. I don't doubt it in a minute. <laughs> I mean, he's he's that sharp. I mean, Jim Norton is like really that quick and sharp, but like he doesn't. You, you know, like I mean, he was nice enough. He had some idiot on who who loves to trash me, and he was nice enough to call me. And oh, after a, after and go look. I didn't know that this guy was going to trash you, so I hope you're not. Mad. I go, no, Jim. Thanks so much. I mean, that's actually really cool. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's see, he's a mensch. I mean, that's a. You know, he's he's a really, really good dude. Keep in mind, <laughs> what he's talking about here is when I went on the Chip Show and made fun of Stuttering John, Jim didn't take that out. Yeah. He just called John and said, I'm going to put out this show <laughs> where Carl trashes you. And John's going, what a great guy. Thank you. I mean, it's all still on YouTube with 45,000 views. But, hey, it was really nice of you to give me a heads up on that. Maybe what? we should email John every time we talk about him and say, hey, you know, we're going to talk hey, about it. Hey, just so you know, WATP this week trashes you for sucking. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for the heads up. All right. What, show no was that? what was that from? That was the Stuttering John show. Oh. Is that Royce he's talking to? No, he's got a new co-host, I think. Or oh. maybe that was a guest. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't, I'm not keeping up. You were the one who played to me that he's changing formats and everything. Yeah, okay. Well, this is this one is from a couple of uh, episodes ago. Royce is still the co-host. Okay. And he talks about the fact that he is turning over a new leaf. He's not holding grudges anymore. Oh, okay. So the stuttering John waves the white flag clip. That's what I mean. People try and create and star fights with me anymore, which which I know that's why you're not on Twitter. But for me, like I like I enjoy it, but now I'm kinda like getting old. I'm like I'm over it. I'm just like I know what you're trying to do. Like some guy said, you know, Jim Florentine was talking shit about you on this other show. Oh, I know shit. he wasn't because you know, you know, one of the Melenders told me he was fu- he, like he wouldn't touch it. And you know, but they try and get me to fucking fight. You know, because, because yes, it's very entertaining to watch me fight. I mean, when when Anthony Kumi and I were having a Twitter war, I mean, people were fucking, I, you know, it was, we get two to three million impressions, oh, I mean, Jesus just from that. Like when me and Artie Lang had, had our Twitter war. But see, now I'm just like, laser. like I'm, I'm like what Bill Maher said to Howard when, you know, when Howard was on there. I'm getting to the point where I'm just like, you know what? I, I'm done with grudges, man. Artie, I hope you stay healthy. If you want to trash me, fine. Oh. So I guess maybe he's just going to let it go. So someone told him. There's so many tattletales out there. Someone told him <laughs> Florentine was on our show. We were talking about him. Well, that right after this episode, yeah. they're, stu- they're doing their phase three bullshit, whatever plan they have. Phase one, go to terrestrial radio and do a lot less. <laughs> yeah, phase two, right. Royce bails on the podcast and they cut it down to one instead of two a week. Yeah. Phase three. Glory Days interviews right. with people. So they had Florentine on right after this. Oh, he, Florentine finally went on his show? You got to email Florentine and ask him how that went, I feel like. Yeah. We need an update from uh, Florentine Definitely. about what's going on. Have you but, listened to it yet? No, I don't know. I think they're just producing it Oh, now. Has it hasn't come out yet? I don't think it's dropped yet. Yeah. That's hilarious because yeah. someone pointed out to me, I think I've talked about it on the show, 
that Jim Forte, when he was on our show, said, oh, yeah, John's asked me to come on his show. And right. I'm like, well, so you came on my show before you went on John's <laughs> yes, show. Yeah, yep, yep. And he That's just pretty went, fucking he went on it like the very next week. Good. I can't wait to hear that. But stuttering John, he's going to let it all he's go. He's going to let it all he go. He doesn't care if we make fun of him anymore. So even that attorney that he has in New York who <laughs> so wants to do him a favor really yep. bad. Yeah. He's not going to come after me anymore? I not. So we're free to make fun of him. So but, let's hear that last clip. All right. Okay, I'm hung like a fucking jalapeno, and this guy's got kielbasa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stuttering John. I mean, not for nothing, Andy. We were always free to make fun of Stuttering John. Oh, I know. <laughs> we live in America. Yeah, we're still going to do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think in most countries, you're allowed to make fun of Stuttering John Melendez. <laughs> it's what you're supposed to do. It's what you're supposed to do. It's why he exists. All right. Well, that's fun. That's yep. a fun update. I feel like you bring a lot of fun Centering John updates to the show when you come out. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. It's fun to rip on him. Thanks, Andy. All right. So you talk, you asked me what's going on with this stuttering idiot. He yeah. has a show with this woman named Monique. And Monique is the host of a podcast called Radio Gunk. Now, Radio Gunk is a show that we reviewed on WATP. What they do is they only review Howard Stern. They talk about how shitty Howard Stern has become. And we did a review of their show. Royce, who was Stuttering John's co-host, has left the show. He was going to run for office. That didn't work because he didn't submit the paperwork correctly. He didn't get enough signatures. So now he's just working on some other business that he's got going on, which is hilarious. Because at first he's like, I'm not going to be doing the, the show anymore because I'm, I'm running for office. And he's like, oh, I'm not running for office, but I'm still not doing the show anymore. So nobody wants to be on a show with Stuttering John. And he has Monique on as a co-host. And this is amazing because John asks Monique if she will now be his co-host. And this is 30 minutes into the episode. Even though I, you know, he, you know, he's like, he was really upset. And he just said, I I learned the $1,700 lesson. This whole system is fucked. And and it is so I uh, you know I can't even imagine that they could keep that though I, like really I'm like upset for him how do they do that I know it's awful and and they should be ashamed and you know he he was going to run as an independent and and I was going to be his campaign manager if you will and but, <laughs> I, I, listen I, I even though I I made the joke and said that I, that I, you know I'm running to be uh, a senator of the great state of California I do have a passion for politics so. I mean, it would be nice to even be in like, you know, be like his, you know, whatever and try and get him elected. But it's a shame, but it's OK, you know, because he has to focus on the arcade. But anyway, getting back to my point, I was saying, can you do this at least once a week with me? You know, I don't like commitments. I got to be honest with you. I'm, oh. I I don't even commit to my own. I don't <laughs> even commit to my own. I don't even commit to my own podcast once I'm a week. I'm spanking you, baby. I'm spanking you, baby. How embarrassing is that to get rejected yeah. during your show? Like, why would so, you ask her that before the show starts or after? What are you doing? So that's his show. To be sure, that's his show. Which what this is what's funny about it is that that is the Stuttering John podcast. But you could tell that she had to record it. He's the one coming through. Yeah. What the? F- he said that's like what shit. I was gonna say. Like, is he calling into his own show? Yes. What the fuck? How are you this bad at this? Yes. He doesn't know how to do the show without Royce. So they used to be in a studio. He's now in a bedroom in his house. And he talks about that in this clip. Oh, Christ. The, the way it has to work is that if I'm available, stop it. You're disgusting. If, I, if I'm available, then I can do it. I mean, that's just the way I am. All I, right. All right. I, I can't, I can never commit. And I really want to teach you how to do this yourself. And I know, <laughs> I, believe me, I get Bouncing shit off of somebody is so key to, like, having this be fun. So I will try. I will endeavor to do it as often as I can. How about that? Because, you know, if not, I got to get it. Like, you know, I got to get like a, um, you know, like a circle of co-hosts. You know what I mean? I got to like, you know, Uh, Royce is going to help me get. Now he's ripping me off. I mean, set up better so I can have guests, (laughs) you know, in studio, if you will. (laughs) <laughs> in the, bedroom yeah yeah in bedroom this is my new studio I mean, I'm the stuttering john podcast studio but it listen it the, i'll give professional headphones i know people give me shit over my dollar store headphones real this is like tj maxx headphones well it, well <laughs> listen they're like 4.99 4.99 <laughs> they look it 
which, <laughs> which, by the way, is the cost of uh, of uh, t- to become a subscriber to TV Remix, which you really should do. Oh my God, he's so fucking pathetic at this point. I can't even believe that he's trying to act like we're unimportant. This guy has five dollar headphones. He doesn't know how to record his own show. <laughs> he has to Skype into Monique from Radio Gunk and ask her to be a co-host, which she refuses to do. This is as pathetic as it could possibly get. Yeah. At this point. I was gonna say, you know, we thought these guys, all of them, OP, yeah. him, we we always say they really fell far, you know. Holy shit, look at them now. And somehow they find ways to keep falling yes! and falling. So you used to be on huge shows, then you got you know, you fell to do your own shitty little show, and now he's somehow gone to being a bedroom artist. It's even worse <laughs> bed, than it be, was. Literal bedroom podcaster. <laughs> And now I understand why all he does is talk about what he used to do. Uh, you know, I, I was on I was on the Tonight Show, uh, the Jay Leno, and uh, 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 uh. yeah, we know, John. It's the only reason why anyone would even know who you are. Your podcast is unlistenable. He does talk about, for some reason, he brings up that he's talking to his attorney in New York, and he says this, and maybe I'm paranoid, but I just get the sense he's talking to me. You know, but then I'm I'm about I'm about to go on a date like a couple of months, well, like three or four hours before, and uh, you know I'm texting with my lawyer, who has got to talk to me. We have some things going on. Some people may know about, some people don't. So I'm like, all right, I I got to meet my attorney. Why does he say that? Some people may know about it. Some people don't. What what are you trying to say there? Why would you say that? I think you're just talking to talk. Yeah, you're probably really. Correct. I mean, at this point, it can't even I be think, true. There's I, no attorney who would tell you. To, actually, you know what? I was gonna say there's no attorney who would tell you to go through with this, but then again, Maddox is an example of why <laughs> That's somebody a good point. will get goaded into frivolous mm. lawsuits. I have more on this clip. Let me just see what else I clipped here. She go and she kept texting me back a telephone like, "Can't you just call your attorney?" And I'm like, "My attorney does this shit for free for me. I'm not gonna fucking just." call him i'm gonna fucking meet him if he wants to meet with me i'm actually supposed to meet him again today so i mean then i'm and then she's like so then i'm just and i haven't heard from him since so it's oh okay i just left that in because he was getting rejected by a girl in the same clip that he's talking about suing someone for something it just never ends with this fucking and guy. getting rejected yes it just by never his ends attorney with this too guy. you hear that there like yep. oh, he hasn't gotten back to me yet <laughs> well he probably has real clients what a has been what a set fucker so you're probably wondering why would monique who's obsessed with the howard stern show so much so that her only claim to fame is talking about the howard stern show why would she reject an opportunity to be a co-host with stuttering john melendez from the howard stern show the way this podcast opens is John is so excited to talk to Monique. He's got so much catching up to do with her. Let me just, oh, I got so much to tell you, Monique. I had the busiest day, but I'll just get to this end. So here, there I am. I did two loads of laundry yesterday, you know, hung up one load. Then the other load, I had, you know, I, I, I had to go. So I put the laundry in the closet that I just cleaned, shampooed the rug, because the fucking cats, whenever I go on the road, they like to fucking take it out of me and shit in the, in the closet. Where the fuck are you going with this story? Okay. Where are we? So even Monique is like, Chad, <laughs> this isn't a podcast. This isn't a show. You did laundry yesterday and your cats poop. What the fuck are we talking about? Yeah, I'm, I'm liking worst. Monique more Jesus. and more. I, I'm, I'm liking this girl. And then... Because they're talking about cats, John has to remember that he's got this hack joke in his act that he's now going to tell us. And by the way, you ever hear comedians when they are on podcasts, they never go into their act. They just don't do it. It's just a hack thing to do. But John can't wait to try to get out this joke. Well, I'm telling you, cats, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I do this joke, you know, uh, I, I was at my psychologist's office and she said that I suffer from too much, uh, um, uh, high self-esteem, so she prescribed me cats. This guy, that's not a funny joke. Ooh. But he also cannot fucking yeah. deliver a joke to save his life. And yeah, I have no shit. So what comedians don't like is if, you know, somebody, there's a reason they have uh, the audience lock up their phones, right? Because you don't, they don't want their bits 
either stolen or recorded before they're really polished and ready to put out on a Netflix special or some shit. Right. That's why they don't just do their jokes anywhere. Because they, they're only funny in context, in the right environment with a whole audience of people laughing. This guy not only goes against the grain and just dumps his joke on the yeah. first opportunity to the first poor soul willing to listen. Yeah. He's not even good at it. <laughs> What a fucking sad retard. He can't even deliver the joke that should be polished in his act. I got a joke about that. So I'm talking to my psychologist. Uh. He sounds like, you know, when you're trying to tell somebody a joke from a comedian, but obviously you're not the comedian, so you suck at it. He sounds like he's reciting somebody else's joke. Like, oh, you you know, so then Bill Burr said, uh, um, uh, like... (laughs) He made a joke about his black girlfriend being black. Oh, Jesus, shut the fuck up. I'll watch it myself. This is another example of John. Now, this time, he's talking about a tweet that he put out. And he's all excited about how funny this tweet is. And they're, they're getting into this political talk, him and Monique. And it's very compelling, let me tell you. Jesus fucking Christ. So mm-hmm. he, he's bitching about Trump, as he always does. And this is... See if you can pick up on how stupid this idiot is. It's mind-boggling i don't want to pay for you oh, to and, and, survive yeah, yeah and you know first of all maga I, I don't know if you saw my tweet stands for um moronic assholes mutilating america but i will tell you this okay did you catch did you catch that guy yeah i know that english isn't so, your first okay. language but do you see what's wrong with that yeah so i know <laughs> look i get stuttering but spelling does it is it that affected too? Is he misspelling John now? <laughs> That's fucking what awesome. A fucking moron! And it wasn't even off the top of his head. It was a tweet. You should see this tweet that I put out. <laughs> he fucking moron. Monique just lets it go. She doesn't even say anything. I think it's probably the right thing to do. Like this guy thinks he's funny. All right, just moving on. Whatever. Yeah, what a Monique is done idiot. with this shit. What an idiot! All right, there's this last thing I want to play about this podcast. John gets into this thing where he talks about these pieces of art that he's created. And I I just couldn't clip it all. It's crazy. It, I was shaking my head in my car. I'm like, I can't believe this guy is this stupid. He's so untalented in every single way. He's, he's explaining this art that he's created and all of it has like a message to it. So for example, he takes coins and paper money and he puts it on this canvas with all of this other shit. And he spells the word happiness in with the money, but it's hard to see. And his whole point is you can't find happiness in money. It's like, that was uh, like his profound fucking statement. So he's talking about all these different pieces of art that are similar to that. And he brings up this one piece that he created and listen to what Monique says to him. I can't believe he left this. Well, I guess he doesn't add it, but Why would you leave this in your own podcast? (laughs) This this is hilarious. Looks like studs or rhinestones or something. No, no. It's pieces of the Bible, the Koran, the Torah, and the Hindu uh, Bible. It's pieces of all, strips of all those pieces. And then it even makes, drives the point home. Religion equals love, bad religion equals hate. No religion equals peace. Thank you. Oh, you're so deep. Thank you. Wait, so how old were you when you did these? Okay, I know that you know this. You know, it, I, it looks like a kid could do it, but the concepts. I, I, I'm. It's about. I started them about like ten years ago. Oh, so it's not like you were, you know, seventeen and trying your hand at some art. <laughs> no, I just, I just got the idea. So now here's the third one. I love this. One. <laughs> he was in his forties when he made this art. Yeah. When he's like, oh, that's cute. What were you like, a teenager when he did that? He's like. Oh, I, I mean, maybe it seems like a teenager could do this, but this is this is really good stuff. That I, why does he keep that <laughs> edgy fourteen-year-old atheist shit? It's right. like, oh, I have a coexist sticker. It's made up of all the symbols <laughs> of all the religions. What okay, fucking, yeah. What a loser! So then he goes on, and there's a bunch of examples of this. And, and Monique, I don't know how she st- stood with this because she's just like, okay, wait, what? Okay, okay, I guess that's all right. So finally, John has his masterpiece. That he created just to let you know what a great comedian slash artist he is zoom in on that this is me kind of <laughs> having some fun here after the kim kardashian thing the paris hilton sex tape that's my sex tape you see that's gaffer tape on there i write sex out of my t- out of tape that's my sex tape what do you uh, think jesus <laughs> fucking literal <laughs> <laughs> that's my sex uh. tape come on <laughs> 
Well, that's retarded. Fuck. You know what I... I think what I realized here is that, you know those really sad old people? Like, somehow they will find a way to accost you. Maybe you're standing in line, yeah. or they're in a coffee shop or some shit. Maybe they're in a retirement home. They see you, and they will just talk to you for like 20 minutes because they're so fucking desperate to talk to somebody because their own children don't talk yes. to them anymore and you feel bad for them you're annoyed but you feel bad for them that is this except he just has a five dollar headset that he can use to call people and annoy them that way this is sad monique is just humoring this old decrepit man who i guess doesn't have anyone else well what i've learned from listening to this podcast is that i'm making fun of a retarded person which is typically frowned upon. Speaking of being the worst at everything, we have to talk about this Stuttering John episode where he had Jason Ellis on. There's a YouTube video for it. It's must-watch Stuttering John. This boob cannot do a show. He has no one helping him now. So he's trying to do an interview over Skype with Jason Ellis. He fumbles through the whole thing. Jason's embarrassed that he's even on the show. He's rolling his eyes out of his head. He can't believe how much of a fucking dolt this guy is. And I just want to start off by the way John introduces Jason Ellis. He has no idea who he is. He read his Wikipedia page. That's all he knows about him. So he starts off by, he reads the Wikipedia page. And, you know, John fancies himself a Renaissance man. He does it all. And he's reading all these things that Jason Ellis has done with professional skateboarder, radio show, MMA fighter, all of these different things, author. And of course, John goes, oh, that's just like me. I'm all those things too. So the way to be a terrible interviewer is to make it about you. And of course, that's what John does throughout this entire podcast, starting with the very beginning. Jason Ellis, he has his own serious XM show. But what I noticed about you, you're a much more famous version of me. Oh, wow. Because I'm a loser from the Howard Stone show? What? Because I'm a loser on the Howard Stern show. <laughs> well, you are on his same network. No, but it's because you like have done a lot of different things. Like I had a record deal. I fought a boxing match, which I won. All right, we know, <laughs> John. We know. So, Jason Ellis, right off the bat, has no respect for stuttering John Melendez. Jason Ellis doesn't have a lot of respect for anybody. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably true. It's a good point. It, it was um, you know, the way he learned how to do radio, and he, he talks about it all the time. This isn't anything out of school. Was that he would hear Howard when he came to America, and he thought the way to do radio is that you have to hate everybody else in this business. So he developed that kind of mindset where no matter who it was he was talking to, he was just like, oh, I have to entertain these people because he's got to promote his wares, sell his goods, or whatever. But John, and I like John. John has always been very cool to me. Uh, John does have that where a lot of hosts do try to, it's almost like a competition. It's like, oh, you got all this going on. Let me tell you about everything that I'm doing. The guest doesn't care. It's not about, at that point, the show's not about you. It's about the guest and you making the guest sound good and, and entertaining and, and, and the conversation people want to listen to. But when you're constantly peddling, it's like, oh, I had a book. I had an uh, album. I had a record deal. I had all these things. He, he was just in there. He's like, yeah. And and if you look in the video, he just starts rolling a joint. Yes. Like, so bored. He's just picking up stuff. He's grinding. He's rolling. And he starts lighting up. He's looking all around the room. You know he, he doesn't want to be doing this. Well, he mentions, and you pulled a few clips on here, but he asked John if he likes podcasting because Jason Ellis has a very big radio show on Sirius XM. Right. So this is a few steps below him getting, I don't know, 1,200 views on a, a YouTube page is not reaching a very large audience for him. And he makes that very clear early on when he asks him this. So anyway. You like so, doing this shit? What? You like doing this? D doing um, in podcasts? Yeah, of course. Do you? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> Why don't you like it? Because uh, I got a radio show, and now I do a podcast because everybody's doing a podcast. It's kind of annoying. That is the that. correct answer. <laughs> I that love that. Correct answer. If you're a radio guy and can do radio well, if you're a talk personality, doing a podcast 
if if it needs to fill some other void that you have going on, then fine. If it's the only way to do what you want to do, okay, fine too. But if you're doing a radio show and then they want you to do a podcast, there's no need to do the podcast because you're speaking for a living doing this show. Take the show and repurpose it for the podcast. You shouldn't want to like doing podcasts if you're still on the radio. I don't think that John even realized that Jason Ellis has a big show. I, I don't know what he thought it was, but he goes back into the whole thing about how much money he made on Howard Stern. He's talked about this many times. He made $80,000 a year on Howard Stern. Jay Leno hired him for The Tonight Show. His salary was on $500,000 a year. He had to take the job. So he's telling this to Jason Ellis, and Jason's sympathizing with him. He goes... Yeah, I know. Most of the people who work at SiriusXM don't make a lot of money, except for unless, unless you're a big name. And, of course, John, being the boob that he is, goes, well, do you make a lot of money? And then he's surprised by the answer. I mean, I've never worked for Howard, but I work at Sirius. And if you're not, like, king shit, you're not getting paid anything. And, and as far as I can tell, everybody in the Stern Show is miserable except Howard. Actually, he seems kind of miserable, too. But- oh, no, he's miserable. But, uh do you get paid a lot from uh, Sirius? Yeah. Oh, oh, good for you. Yeah, I wish I could get a uh, a show on there, but they won't have me. Howard would never let that happen. That's amazing. He was not ready for that answer. Do you make a lot of money on Sirius? Like, yeah. I'm, it's the Jason Ellis show. Of course I make a lot of money on Sirius. And Sonny John goes, oh, shit. All right. Um, yeah, he had, he had the, the Faction <laughs> Music Channel right. was built around Jason Ellis and Tony Hawk. Right. Right. Then they moved him um, over to what was the Opie and Anthony channel, uh, then became Faction Talk, took the elements of Jason's show and redid the channel around Jason again. So yeah, Jason's kind of a big deal with the company, whether you like his show or not, or you like him or not, it doesn't matter. He's kind of a big deal with the company. The heads of the company love him. Yeah, he's going to be making a lot of money. He's a marquee person for the company. And Stuttering John is so delusional. That he thinks the reason why he doesn't have a job at Sirius XM and why he's not doing the Jason Ellis show, the Stuttering John show, is because Howard's blocking it. That's not the reason. Howard's in no meetings talking to any executives at Sirius XM about whether or not they should give Stuttering John his own radio show. Your podcast is hot garbage, John. And I know you just said that you like John. You probably don't want to shit on him. So I, I might be putting you in a tough spot here. But you watch this show. It's the worst thing anyone could do. Well, look, John's intentions are like, I don't. This is he's crazy. I love him. <laughs> and he's crazy, but he's crazy. He just goes, he's the guy that goes about things the wrong way. And you go, well, you know, how, what would be the worst case scenario? It would be this. Okay. I won't do that. I'll try to do something different. And he just gravitates to the worst case scenario. Um, Howard was out in Los Angeles, not, I think, either at the, during the summer or the beginning of the fall. Beginning of the they fall. They just yeah. opened up the new Sirius XM Hollywood facility. And yeah. Howard was going to go out there and do a week of shows. John went outside the studio uh, the, outside the building the back entrance to the building and was trying to get any of the stern show personalities uh, um, uh staff even trying to get howard to do the bit that john used to do for the stern show where he would interview people on the red carpet and ask them horrific things eric he was badgering Shuli to the yeah, point where Shuli had to tell the security guy to get him out of here he's like can you please have this person removed like john what are you doing? It's not the right way to go about You're somebody. embarrassing yourself. Not at all. So John is so delusional that he's not sure why he hasn't been asked to be on the Joe Rogan show. And he wasn't sure if maybe it was a Howard connection thing, but Joe had Artie on, so that must not be it. Joe Rogan had Artie on, so I don't think it's anything to do with Howard. I, I, I mean... But, uh, you know, Joe Rogan wouldn't have me on, but, it's, I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I'd fucking... Well, Adi's a comedian, and Joe Rogan's a comedian first. But Yeah, so am I. <laughs> That's hilarious. Jason Ellis just totally disrespects him right there. No, he wanted to say, you are? Yeah. But he kind of let it sit there. Jason's very low-key with some of that stuff. He just, yeah. if you say something dumb, most of the time, he's not even going to respond to it. He'll just let it sit there and make you look ridiculous. Yeah. Um. That was that was a great realize. moment though. He goes, I don't know why Joe Rogan wouldn't have me on his show. Have you seen the guests that Joe Rogan has on his show? They're like celebrities. You're stuttering, John. You're a joke. <laughs> I, a I think 
if if it came into his you know like i don't think it's in his peripheral vision for joe thinking about getting john on the show i think if somebody was pushing if Artie was on there and said you really need to get john on or somebody else said you need to get john i think he would have john on if there was a reason to do so i don't think it was a howard it, just imagine thinking the power howard has to have other places not do business with you and you and howard doesn't even work there you know, Howard can't tell Joe Rogan to not have John on. Joe doesn't even really like Howard that much anymore. So they're not talking. They don't talk at all. Yeah. Howard, like you said, was just out in L.A. He did the Ellen show. He did, um, what's his name, Bill Maher. And he went on Jimmy Kimmel. Right. The one thing he should have gone on, which would have reached more people than all three of those things combined, is the Joe Rogan show. Right. But So they Howard's not controlling the guest list at all. Exactly. John, sense. John needs to focus on himself, not worry about what everyone else has and what everybody else is doing. So I think that's that's part of the problem here. Why people take John the wrong way. It's like he's more worried about, well, why do they have this? Why am I not on there? Why am I doing, instead of this is what I'm doing on my own and somebody noticing and go, hey, we'd like to have you on to talk about what you're doing. Yes. You've summed this up perfectly, Eric. Thank you for that. This is the problem with John is he's consistently jealous of what everybody else has all the time because he doesn't he, need to be he sh- he shouldn't be those people deserve it that's just how this works like he thinks he's as talented as anyone else in entertainment and he's wildly incorrect about that he couldn't be further off so here's an example anytime someone even pays him a compliment he has to reiterate it as if it's an achievement And I want to just point this out. I've done it before with Stuttering John. People are relatively polite and they'll say nice things to you to make you feel good. It doesn't mean it's true or that you've accomplished anything. To be fair, isn't that the same for you? Because you have all those clips at the beginning of your show. Oh, yeah. And you just put it up there like it's an achievement. Of course. Why why would that? It's my show. So this um, this is him explaining that a headliner that he was doing comedy with told him that he could also be a headliner and all i could say to you is when i was working with carlos not carlos mencia a willie barcena who was like a known headliner and i was working with him at the improv in vegas and i was the middler he was the headliner and and he came up to me he said it's rare they have two headliners on the same show and i said well willie i'm not a headliner he goes john you're a headliner So to me, that was the best compliment I can get. So that's something he has to reiterate, not on a show where he's being interviewed, a show where he's interviewing a guest. And then this was the best part right here because Jason Ellis calls him out for being the hack that he is. This is, this is what headline, these are the type of jokes that headliners come up with off the cuff. I once had the best blowjob in a fat chick. I figured she was hungry or something, but I'll take, oh my God, dude. (laughs) Yep, you're a headliner, all right. So, Jason, yeah. I was just like, dude, that's the easiest joke. No one's laughing at that. Or it's too easy a joke. It's just too easy. And then what does Stuttering John do? He doubles down with this next joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story, though. Jason, I was Missy. I brought her back to my house. She blew me again, and she's like, John, now what are you going to do for me? So I baked the lasagna. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just doing a couple of jokes. These are like old Jackie jokes. It's, and he was delivering them like Jackie too. Yeah. He's cracking you, you, up laughing as if he just you came get up the punchline and you laugh and clap to let everybody know that's where you laugh and clap. Right. That's that's really bad, even by Suttering John standards. And I want to, but it's a, it's such an old time, old school mentality. Yes. Of doing this stuff because it look look at where they came from where it was you know john and jackie and even the early days of when howard was having comics come on the show before gilbert and before uh florentine you were getting like joe franklin on you know you were getting and and bob levy who i who i love but you had these guys that were doing older acts Mm -hmm. and never progressed past that which i didn't understand it seems to be where john's kind of stuck like he's like well this worked for me back then I'll still keep doing it instead of changing with the times and, and updating some things. I don't think he's capable of coming up with funny material though. You're giving him too much credit as if he's just like, he, he honed an act and he's keeping with it. He's like, I don't even think he has an act. 
I don't, I don't know. I've never seen John stand up. Um, no one has. I, I didn't realize he was doing. I knew he dabbled in it. Like he would go and do um, when he was invited on people's uh, sets and shows to to do some stand up. I didn't know he, he said he was doing it for 20 years. I wasn't aware that he was doing stand up for 20 years. Let's talk about the technical issues that he has trying to do this show. And this was one of the time stamps that you pointed out. You know, I'm trying to fix my screen. Is your screen getting screwed up like that? No, I'm fine. All right. All right. So you see me okay? Yeah. I don't know what the hell I did, but I did something wrong. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Hold on a second. This is my yeah. incompetency. Hold on. I bet I had to hit something that changed this Jeez, whole no, thing. Jason just me. laughing Hold at Hold on a second. Bear man. with me. All in his right. eyes. You're not this incompetent. All right. I got oh, there. I hope this is still recording now. Hold on. So, so now, okay, so, okay, now we're going to get, I, all these things on my screen are driving me fucking nuts and I can't turn them off. I don't know why, but, but, uh, you know, I'm, it's driving me fucking crazy. It's, it's so awesome to watch uh, dad on the internet right now. Exactly. <laughs> I am. I'm dad on the fucking internet and I, I don't know how to turn this, I don't know how to move this fucking thing off my screen. <laughs> The fuck, it's driving me crazy, this fucking thing. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, All right, dude, I'm sorry. This is, okay, let me try one other thing here. Like I said, this is one of the worst things I've ever seen. This should oh. not be a podcast or a YouTube video. Right, well, the old the old cliche of uh, if you can't think of something funny and you're going to be more uh, emotional about it is to start dropping the f bomb like hey, the fucking this and fucking that, fucking right. it's like it's not funny. It's it's you're you're trying to kill time while he's fixing this. But then also, you need to edit this out. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's the doing, point I wanted to make. Doing, if it's a live stream is one thing. It happens. But when you go to present this out, so you do some kind of jump cuts or you do some kind of uh, like graphic transitions for his thing or even for the audio, you can cut it and make it sound like nothing ever happened. But they leave it in there. Yeah. And it's not even interesting. So This went on, I think, I, I time-coded. It's like... That was a shorter version. I think it was like two minutes fully of him trying to move the monitor around and stuff. And then a little later, he turns his microphone off and goes right to the webcam mic because he says, I'm going to go raw without the mic. I know the podcast people are going to hate it, but uh, who cares? We're going to go raw. It's like they're the people listening to you. And you're just telling them we don't care if they don't like what they're hearing, uh, not from content wise, but I mean, obviously, but also from the technical standpoint. It's like, I don't care if they get to hear it or not. This is between me and you. It's like, why are you even bothering with this? I have that clip, too, real quick. Right, yep. Fuck this microphone, all right? Hold on. Fucking sorry, man. So, you know, so basically we're just doing our computer mics. I'm going to get a load of shit from all my fucking podcasting people. Yeah, I know. And, you know, but that's going to happen. Fuck it. I don't care anymore. He doesn't care anymore. John, what have you ever cared? You've never put out a professional show. This is another example of him explaining how unprofessional the show is. Yeah, because I'm not going to be doing another podcast, at least not before Christmas, and maybe not for the you know for the rest of the year until I get my shit together. Because I mean, you know, this is the most unprofessional as far as recording devices <laughs> I've ever done in my life. But I have to, <laughs> I have to get an engineer, and I got an honor. Get a, what's that? It's an honor to be on your broke ass podcast. Yes, yeah, but don't worry. I, you know, listen, I, I have a, the next one. I'm, I'll have three computers. I'm gonna have uh, the whole thing all set up. It's just now. So, all right. Well, it's good to know that Eric. Well, right now it's very unprofessional. Soon he'll have three computers. Right. So that'll because take care of it. One's having a problem. Add more things to complicate <laughs> the process, and then start screaming about why none of this is working. You're a, um, you're a professional radio producer. How many computers do you need to create a podcast? Uh, usually one. One. The answer it's, is one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiot. So is, is this what he's doing? Now? Like, didn't he have a, a whole, like he had a producer and, and a whole team of people where he was doing an audio podcast. Now he's doing it through Skype on YouTube. Yeah. So Royce was his co-host. And then he had another guy who was helping produce it. And Royce left to go run for... Some, I think it was a California legislator. I don't know. He didn't even qualify to run. So Royce is no longer running for government. Instead, he's just doing a different thing. He was looking for any excuse to stop podcasting with John. Uh, that's what it was. <laughs> Basically, because it's like, I, I can't because I'm running for uh, office. 
Oh, well, that fell through. I know, but I'm also doing this other thing now, too. So, all right. So he has nobody to do the podcast with. So he's recording it on his own. Oh, yeah. And that's, so now, okay, that's what he's doing. All right. Oh, it's gotten bad. It, it's OP level bad. Here's how he wraps things up with Jason. And Jason's really excited to have spent the last hour and 20 minutes with this nonsense. It, I, it's been a pleasure. And, uh, you know, the. You know, you know um, <laughs> I'm stumbling here, but, uh, well, fuck it. I, look. Thanks it, for having me on your really unprofessional, shitty podcast. Yeah. And thanks a lot for wasting my fucking time, asshole. Yeah. that the, the whole thing was, he was trying. You could see that he was trying, but none of this was working out. And uh, look, props to Jason for, for sitting through all of that. I, I'm amazed that he did. I was surprised. I wouldn't have. I would have, I would have called it. And just one more thing I wanted to play on here is he does an ad read and good on John for having sponsors, but there's no way they're going to pay for this ad read because he didn't even have the copy in front of him and was completely ill-prepared to do this. Yeah. Betonline.ag. And if you, if you punch in the code, Jason, CLNS 50, you get, uh, a bonus. You get cash. I think it's fifty dollars. I could be wrong. I don't have the copy in front of me. But you will get a bonus. So the way that this works in podcasting is, every time you do a live read, you have to then send a clip of that or at least a timestamp right. to the advertiser so that they can check and do a little quality control. And, and the promo code usually involves you or your show. Yes. So you know that the uh, the audience or the customers coming in are from your particular program and they say oh look they have a lot of people coming in from this show we need to advertise more on this show right so there's two problems with this one is the promo code is clns50 what that's the not f- even his yeah what yeah. the fuck is that i mean, i can't i tried to find it i was like what show is this attached to it's not the stuttering john podcast but then the other thing is he didn't even know what the offer was yeah if you put in this code you get something i don't know maybe 50 bucks like that's unacceptable as from an advertiser standpoint, they are not going to accept that and pay for that ad read. Yeah, there's nothing advertisers love more that, you know, it's it was difficult to get them to advertise on radio, but it's even more impossible to get anybody of substance to advertise on podcasts unless you're, you know, uh, a superstar in the, in the podcast world. But they love nothing more than when you get their ad read wrong or don't know anything about their product or it's like, I don't have the copy in front of me. I think this is the code then they're not going to be back the next week. They just wasted all their money on you and you didn't even take it seriously. Definitely. Definitely not. I mean, not to mention the fact that even if he had read it correctly and given a promo code that was based on his show, no one's going to that anyway. No one listens to Suttering John's podcast. Does it not do well? No. No. Have you listened to this product? It's, I listened to this episode. I have not heard his podcast. I, I, I heard clips from you uh, time to time but I have not uh, heard his podcast. I can't stress this enough. There are 700,000 podcasts. It's not easy to get people to listen to your show. There's a lot of options out there. Oh, not at all. Stuttering John. And he should have some clout that brings people in because of the tonight show and because of Howard. Yep. And I don't know how you messed that up. He fucking prank called the the president, right? He, He hasn't been able to capitalize on that at all. No, most of the news talked about a, a prank phone call, if they talked about it at all. They didn't even mention him. 